The following program contains swearing, insults, progressive political ideologies, dad humor, pop culture coverage, memes, artificial intelligence gooning, and frequent references to the amount of semen an elephant can and will ejaculate. Viewer discretion is advised. And don't forget to turn off that pesky ad block. Good morning! tubes i bet you thought i was gonna say vietnam that would just be considered culturally insensitive wouldn't it to come out there and be like good morning vietnam wow i mean considering we haven't been there in like 50 years you know it'd be a little bit weird <laughs> it'll be a little wild a little wtf but of course that's kind of the whole uh game tonight here on the on the boulder talk radio you know what i mean i decided to do a little bit of fun tonight uh, a little bit of weird, a little bit of wild, a little bit of WTF. Uh, thank you to Ideogram for coming up with the AI uh, thumbnail. We have since uh, uh, sadly had to fire Brandon as our AI guy. Um, we just, we had to do it. Uh, unfortunately, he uh, he moved on to uh, to Greener Pastures. Uh, <laughs> Parallax rip Brandon. We need a new thumbnail artist now, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, let me just quickly talk about that. I, Brandon, I, you don't need to apologize. You don't follow me on Twitter, yet you respond to a ton of things I post. It's the same thing. If I post something about AI, I know you didn't make it. You don't make AI. I'm just not in the mood to hear it anymore. So it's not anything against you. It's just, I'm just kind of tired of it. It's really what it is. Garrick Groover with a $5 super chat. Is X-Men 97 worth watching? Melanie Mack says it's bad. You know what's funny about that? I thought about it. I've, I've been really heavily thinking about it. Well, first, let me answer your question. I've only seen the first episode. Didn't have time today. I was just doing other stuff to watch episode two. But episode one was really good. Like, episode one was fantastic. I loved it. It's absolutely worth watching. And I've thought about it for a little while. You know what I mean? And it's uh, So what I'm talking about is... You know, when I when I think back, we're coming up on, you know, 10 years since GG and tomorrow's my birthday. I turned 42 in like two and a half hours. And, you know, I'm thinking about it. And it's just kind of like me, you know, a little bit of that midlife crisis thing going on. Uh, maybe a little bit of lament, a little little regret for not uh, 
doing what, you know, not having hindsight at the time and uh, standing up to these, you know, you can almost argue authoritarian type, fascist type commentators in this space, in, in, in the entertainment space, uh, who do it for money, not because they believe in it, which is even worse. If they were true believers of the authoritarian bullshit they push out, uh, of the uh, of all that fascistic stuff, then it would be different, but they're grifters. So I thought to myself, maybe, just maybe, maybe it would be time. Maybe it is time. You know, maybe it is time to just kind of start taking the fight to them. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to fight. I'd rather do other things than fight, but they really make me mad. People like Melanie Mack, complete idiotic, clout-chasing, bigoted grifter, makes me mad. Nerdrotic makes me mad. Geeks and Gamers makes me mad. And it's not that they have success. I don't care about that. People are going to be like, I use No, it's because they proliferate in bullshit. They peddle nonsense. They're fucking snake oil salesmen. That's what I don't like. I don't care what opinion you hold. If you believe it, it's at least a place to start a conversation. But we know goddamn well that they do not believe what they say. So how do you change that? How do you challenge that? I told this to Dane, actual fandom a while back. I kind of criticized him like on a stream and he wasn't too happy about it. I haven't talked to him since then, but anyway. But the idea there though is that those guys will just complain from a distance, right? Anyone who goes after fucking Eric July complains because it's safe for them to complain from a distance, right? It's absolutely safe for them to just love, lob their boulders, if you will, right? Bring out their trebuchets, fire off those uh those those you know big old rocks from a distance rather than get up close to the actual problem right these these are the people who don't actually engage in the fight you have to understand that they think they do they 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 tell their audience that they do but they don't actually engage in the fight because what they do is they just talk about it from like you know a week after something has happened they don't offer a rebuttal in in a way that any of that person's audience is going to see and I've told them how to fix this. I've told them how to challenge this, how to go into the fucking trenches and to fight the goddamn war. And I say this as a veteran, you know what I mean? Like a me more veteran jokingly. But I say this as a person who's been around for a long time and engaged in the culture war for a long time. I have experience. I have expertise. I have knowledge and know-how. But what we're talking about here are pussies legitimate legitimately pussies not that they're bad people or that they lack good character because they don't they are they're they're good people they do have fine character but they're pussies they're cowards they don't actually want to get into the fight they don't want to roll up their sleeves and get into the muck they don't want to do what is necessarily required in order to get the job done and i'm and i know i'm i'm, I'm blowing it up here into something more than what it is but what it really boils down to if you want to get into the fucking mud then you've got to get into the fucking mud. All right. You've got to take the fight to where their audience is going to fucking see it. If you're just like, well, I'm just going to sit back over here with my little echo chamber of people and not, no, fuck you. Put on your big boy pants. Take off the pull up. Put on the big boy pants. Okay. Fucking strap in. Right. Buckle up and fucking go. It's not that hard. If any one of these fucking, you know, low T monosyllabic loving chuckle fucks has a take you don't like because all these assholes do is watch them anyway. I don't watch any of these guys on occasion. I do. But all those other people, they watch every one of their videos and they get super mad over it and they want to do a, a response video on a live stream once a week and they think that's going to fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter one goddamn bit. It doesn't matter. What matters is is taking the fight to the algorithm because that's really who and what you're up against. An algorithm that is emotionally driven and very emotionally charged. And so what do you have to do? If you want to call out Ryan Kinnell, respond to Ryan Kinnell that video that day, not 24 hours later, not a week later, that fucking day. Be up on that shit Take the title, the description, the fucking thumbnail design. Put, put the thumbnail in, the, in your thumbnail, right? Make a React image and put that thumbnail in there. And copy every bit of meta, metadata that you can. If you can make your video uh, response 
roughly about as long as their video, it will confuse his audience because it will be shown next to that. And then they might click on it and then they might learn something or see, see an alternative, alternative viewpoint that they're not used to seeing. Because why is YouTube recommending this to me? Why, why am I being told things outside of my purview? Why am I being told things outside of my echo chamber? Because it's by design. That's how you win. But it requires a lot of people and a lot of organization. And I've talked about this before, but it is absolutely true. And so if you just want to fucking lob boulders from the side, if you just want to fucking, you know, just, just needle, just peck a little bit, you know, dip your toe in. Then at least understand that's where you're always going to be. And your effectiveness is, is, is the same. Very little means nothing, right? But you get to stay safe. You get to stay in your little echo chamber. You don't have to fucking go into the battlefield. You don't got to deal with it as much as you think you have to. And you don't actually want to see any real fucking change. Because that's the truth of it. That's just the fucking truth of it. You don't see change by doing that. Mark, you know, I, what I mean by like meaningful change. Sure, you might be able to scrape off one every once in a great while, and that's good. Don't get me wrong, that's good. But we're coming up on an election year. We're in an election year. We've got six months to go, right? Seven, no, we have eight months to go until the election, which means there's going to be a whole spring, summer, and fall of bullshit. And there's going to be a whole lot of fucking lies and a whole lot of shit because Andrew Breitbart said it, and this is the only thing he's ever said that was worth a goddamn. Politics is downstream from culture. And if you love entertainment, and if you love pop culture, and you've seen the chuds do what they do, then fight them in the way where it will fucking matter. Otherwise, you're just fucking dragging your feet. You're spinning your tires. It doesn't mean a goddamn fucking thing. At all. Period. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's the way I see it. That's the way I see it. Poli is right is what? Poli is writing in Hitler. What are you talking about? Shut up. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see here. Worldwide Web Wizard, thank you, says uh, Matt is still hyped up over his based ADL retweet. All I said was no one believes you. And that's because the ADL is fucking full of shit in this case. All right. The Anti-Defamation League is basically fucking co-signing a genocide, which is just kind of funny. Right. Oh, we're going to co-sign a genocide, but you just can't say mean things that are, you know, online. Uh, it's crazy shit. It's absolutely crazy shit. Uh, no, I, I'm I again, I'm. I have, you know, I am perfectly cool with the Israeli people. I have nothing against Israeli people. Not a fan of the government, right? Palestinians, same thing. Palestinians are fine people. Not a fan of the government, all right? And I don't like to see innocents die. I just don't like to see it. But at this particular point, when you've got like now, here it is, six months into this motherfucker, and you've got people going like, mm, I'm Minuten bitter. Perhaps let's not, perhaps let's, let's, let's like slow down on the slaughter. Maybe for a hot moment, let's just fucking pump the goddamn brakes and stop murdering children by the thousands. Maybe let's, maybe let's not do that, you know? Uh, but of course, Chuck Schumer comes out with like some criticism. Everyone's all anti-Semite. He's like, but I'm Jewish. And they're like, you're an uncle Tom. Or what, what would be an Uncle Torah? I don't know. What, what whatever the joke would be. I don't know. I don't, I don't speak Hebrew. <laughs> I don't know what it might be. Either way, uh, I think the ADL is wrong for their take. Garrick here for five. Thank you. Uh, saying Melanie only gets attention because she's hot. That's because she's hot. Jesus Christ, man. Cope. No, Melanie Mack. Look, I'm just going to be honest with you. Melanie Mack. Yeah, she's attractive. Is she hot? No. She cute? Sure. Then she opens her mouth and she talks and you realize, oh my God, there's nothing there but hot air. And even that hot air might be methane infused, right? That's where her farts go. She probably doesn't actually fart anymore. She probably just like has been rewired to where her sphincter just deposits that methane right into her brain. That's the only, the only biological conclusion I can come to as to why she's so fucking stupid. 
but she is. She's just, she's very dumb. They're all very dumb, but they also know how to grift, right? And Melanie's all like, I love Jesus. I hate the F slurs, but I love Jesus. And Jesus loves all of you, except them gays. But he loves you so much, he died for your sins, except the, <laughs> zip the fudge packers. I can't stand them gays. But Jesus died for you, and I love you regardless. Never mind the fact that I find your entire existence abhorrent. I kind of sound like Gideon, don't I, a little bit, right? From, uh, from fucking <laughs> Gravity Falls. Either way, man, there's this ridiculous shit there. Uh, Saulo here says, Geeks and Gamers and Mr. H Reviews is not very happy about George Lucas' return to Star Wars movie by Disney. They called him a clown loser. Well, they both have tiny penises, as from my understanding. And by that, it's just speculation that I have. Uh, no, fuck them. Who cares, man? Who gives a shit? Uh, let's see. Worldwide Web Wizards also asked here, does Melanie have an OnlyFans? I should know. I don't know if she does. I do know that if you go to her Reddit, you will find that um, she has people make AI of her uh, using stable diffusion. It's it's not like not safe for work, but I mean, if you're looking to fap, I guess that's there you go. Rational here says Diddy's home got raided. In my opinion, we're going to get to that. Rational, we are going to get to that. Uh, also, bringing up Mecha Random. When when was the last time Mecha Random forty two? Mecha Random forty two though has never been attractive. That's the difference though, right? Like people will put up with your bullshit the more attractive you are, the more funny you are, the more intelligent you are. Like there's a bunch of different like reasons and they don't have to overlap. Look at celebrities, right? Like look at the asshole celebrities out there, but people put up with them because, oh, they're influencers, they, they, but they're vapid, right? They're just imbeciles. They, they don't have two brain cells to rub together, but they've got two big old titties and people just fucking lose their shit over that. So apparently they have value. Because in an intellectual space, you know, so they get brought into all this shit. That's kind of the whole point. Same thing. Mecca Random was just a woman that backed them up, but said the same things that they said, right? Parroted everything that they said was a token woman when they needed a token woman on the set. That's all it was. And then her head got too big for her britches. Um, you know, and, and she just ended up fucking having a fallout, right? It's like I said about, uh, she. what was it? Did she defend? I think she defended like Jesse Milestone or some shit, you know? And that didn't help her either. It's like the whole thing with Tipster and Vouch, right? And Keffels. Vouch has, has his his thing. Uh, Tipster defends him. Keffels defends Vouch because of Tipster. It goes bad for both of them. Vouch doesn't even like, I don't know, fucking acknowledge either of them's existence. Tipster gets BTFO'd by the entire commentary community. Keffels throws him under the bus. That is until I think yesterday when uh, when Tipster like threw a hundred dollar super chat at Keffels like, please don't leave me, bestie. I thought that was weird. I, I don't know if Tipster is here. I got nothing against him, but that was odd. You know, if you're going to throw any one hundred dollars, maybe, you know, hook a brother up. How much did you make off me back during back during 2018? I'm just saying fucking reparations are due, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, that being said, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But that being said, uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just, they did all that shit and Vosh has 6,000 people watching him live today. You know what I mean? Because Vosh doesn't, he didn't care. He didn't have to care is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, uh, thank you for that one. Also, Garrick for five. Thank you. How come these chuds are successful at grifting, but not someone like Anita Sarkeesian? That's the thing though. Anita was, Anita was more successful than any of these people combined, right? These guys look, these guys the grift the grift for anita was beyond youtube the grift for anita was so far beyond this space you have to understand in 2014 after gamergate started she pulled in like four hundred thousand dollars in donations that year she was hanging out with joss whedon fighting the good feminist fight you know <laughs> type jesus christ the fuck was that but that's what she was doing she was doing that back then right she was making money she i think she was making like half a million dollars a year after that for a while the problem though was she couldn't stay relevant enough in the gaming space and then she made some bad calls like attacking bo-katan's boob armor because bo-katan is a very popular character with women 
So a lot of women started attacking Anita because they're like, wait a minute, like, fuck you, lady. And she's like, oh, no. Right. So she's like, I'm kind of done with all this. And I'm going to go have my own singles wedding type thing in Germany with a bunch of her friends. I mean, good for her for having a good old fun time, to be fair. But uh, I mean, you know, considering that people like me and Sargon and others kind of helped her get that half a million dollars, we should have been invited to the wedding, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I, I would have gone. If I was invited, I would have gone. Just, just to say that I went. It would have been interesting. I would have probably been beaten to shit, though. But that being said, that being said, Anita was able to play the long game to get speaker. To get, you know, Gary, look, look what does Gary get? Gary gets invited to conventions. I don't know if he gets paid or not, but he gets invited to go. That's something. That's not nothing. Anita was hired as a consultant for Dice and other companies. Neil Druckmann got out there in 2014 and bent the knee to Anita at the Game Developers Conference, you know, before giving her an award. You know what I mean? Like, like in the gaming space, she was considered royalty. She was untouchable. And she had a blank check. She had a golden ticket for a while. She did. And then after that, she started, you know, again, this stuff started losing steam in a number of fucking ways. And that's a lot of what happened. But and these guys, you know, Gary and Jeremy and all those guys, they do it here on YouTube and they do it for the money because that's where the relevancy is. But if Anita's pulling in $50,000, $100,000 to go give a keynote address all over the world. We have no idea what money she was pulling in personally, but I guarantee you it's been millions. It's been millions, but feminist frequency ran its course. Feminist frequency ran its course when Trump got elected, um, you know, in many ways, because what happened, that was four years after they had really got going, but she tried to turn it into a political thing. And you can't be a nonprofit and, and run political narratives, right? You can't, you can't advocate for a specific candidate or against a specific candidate or some shit if you're a, non, a 501c3, if I recall correctly, at least in California. I don't know if it's elsewhere. But after that, there was really nothing that she could do because that part of gaming was over. But if she, so she can wind down her nonprofit and now focus entirely on profit because with Anita, it was always about the profit. It was always about the money. It was always about what she could get. It was Jonathan McIntosh who was the true believer, but Anita was the face and she was the capitalist. And that's the reason why when McIntosh left to become the pop culture detective, or whatever the fuck it was, he very quickly took his editing skills and essaying skills and applied it to that channel and was able to like, you know, get a million subs relatively quickly. Whereas Anita, I think, petered out at like just over 200 or something like the 200,000, maybe a little more. I forget all the numbers specifically, but that's what Anita was able to do. These guys will eventually run their course. What's going to happen with that, though, is they're eventually going to say something they shouldn't. They're eventually going to do something that they shouldn't, or there's going to be a break like Jeremy and Gary or something like that, like a big, big, big breakup. And then all of a sudden lines will be drawn. Ryan Kennel will most likely choose Gary over Jeremy because Gary's access to more, has got more access to money. And Jeremy will end up eventually becoming like Mecha Random 42, completely excised from the group. Geeks and gamers will go down. It's going to happen. It's, a, it's, an, it's an inevitability at this point. I just don't have a date of, as to when. But that's kind of what I feel about that. Anyway, thank you. Also, uh, Gary Kiffer thinks says, but the Chuds get to interview Cameron Pasha. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. They get it. They get to interview Mr. Cameron Pasha. Mr. Pasha. Do you know Mr. Pasha about the obsidian mirrors and all of that shit? Fucking obsidian mirrors. Gotta love it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Oh, let's see here. Uh, rational asking. Uh, is it true that Anita Sarkeesian was toxic to her employees and didn't pay some of them? I don't know if that's true or not. I have no idea if that's true or not. Um, you know. Yes, yeah, rational. No, no, here's the thing. Jonathan McIntosh is a liar, but he's also a true believer. And because he's a true believer and he knows how to edit and he knows propaganda real well, he's done quite well. That's what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the camera passion thing. I saw Kathleen Kennedy through a crystal ball. We remote viewed into her fucking thing. Blah, blah, blah. 
Um, anyway. Um, so a couple quick things here I want to touch upon before we get into the weird news. As you guys know, I, I, I like to, I like to dabble. I like to dabble in, uh, in some, uh, some artificial intelligence stuff, especially some artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm trying to get into the, uh, learn more about AI filmmaking. So I, I, you know, put together this little, this little thing a little bit ago, just some clowns. It's not perfect. I'm still learning the, uh, this is a runway, uh, runway gen two. The image was made in mid journey. And then I tried making it, uh, you know, do a little bit, but it's kind of creepy. Freaked out my six year old, something fierce. I thought that was all right though. Um, and then I'm going to show you guys is this is not perfect. I made this in like 20 minutes. I've been kicking around this idea for a podcast about zombies and stuff. And, um, I just, I decided to try the AI and put together a little, like little 26 second teaser. It's not, it's nowhere near refined, but I think it's, uh, you know, uh, well, just see for yourself. Hello, is anyone out there? Can anyone hear me? If you can hear this, the Olympic Peninsula is under attack. A giant comet crashed from the sky. It was like a nuclear bomb went off. Zombies, zombies are everywhere. So yeah, there's, there's, there's that. It's just a little thing. Uh, I'm just kicking around some ideas and been workshopping some stuff while I'm at work. And I just put that together today because I've been wanting to kind of get it out of my head, right? I wanted to get that out of my head. You know what I mean? And uh, so I just did that today. And I think some of the little videos came out okay. Um, yeah, not bad. Thank you. The voice is not perfect. It's AI. I should have just done it myself, but I was like in a hurry. Um, you know. So Chris says here, I hate clowns. Yeah, you should hate clowns. Uh, let's see. Parallax here says AI is bad and should be banned and illegal to use drugs. That's what X told me. That's right. Make it black and white or sappy. Yeah, yeah I could do that. Again, I was just, I was just fucking messing around with some shit. Have I been near Area 51? Um, I was going to go to Area 51 back in 2016. I was in Vegas for a couple days. I'd rented a car and I was like, had nothing to do one morning. And I was like, maybe I'll drive out to Rachel, Nevada. It was about a four hour round. It was like four hours there, four hours back. And it was like the middle of July. And I was like, ah, it's too fucking hot. But I do have a, I do have a bucket list of going out there. So maybe the next time I get, I get the opportunity to head to, to Vegas, I'll do that. Uh, I just have to, you know, do that. Zombie. Yeah. Zombies, man. I like zombies. I like zombies. Um, but then also, so, okay. I want to show you guys this one, right? So here, here's this guy. All right. You don't know this fucking guy, but this guy's name is Reed Southern. He is a uh, concept artist, right? Whatever. Uh, worked on movies like uh, Transformers, Rise of the Beasts, worked on Bumblebee, did some background stuff and whatever. This dude is like, this is like the anti-AI douchebag. Like the guy that you know, like you ever, you know how you go to a party and like there's that one guy who's like, oh, fuck that guy's here, right? That, that, that's that guy. That's all he does all day, every day is like fucking tweet about how bad AI is. So I like to troll him a little bit. So I, I asked mid journey to show me what he would look like as a poorly made Muppet living in a dumpster of his own self delusions. Uh, and this is what it gave me. And that was pretty cool. That was kind of cool. So then I jumped over to uh, runway and you can actually lip sync. Uh, and this is what, uh, what I put together a little, a, a little bit uh, for this. Know that AI art is bad. Did you know that it will destroy the world as we know it? As a digital artist, I know firsthand what unemployment is like. And instead of learning the new technology to benefit myself, I'm going to spend all day on Twitter complaining like a dog on a nail. <laughs> I just made that, like, literally that took, like, I think five minutes to render out or whatever. And it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good, you know? Uh, just it, one of the voices that they have there, it is what it is. Uh, but I thought it was kind of okay. I thought it was a uh, thought it was all right. And I thought to myself, like, wouldn't it be kind of funny to have like a like a sidekick character that was someone like that? It may change the voice a little bit, but uh, he looks in his natural habitat. Uh, you know, here he is, right? You can stunning, stunning, stunning parody work here, guys. Parody, satire, commentary, criticism. Uh, I see RJ here says the guy who worked on the concept art for detective Pikachu and other projects got pretty pissed and mad today too. Should I? Yeah. You know what? Let me show, let me, let me, uh, let me show that exchange by the way. 
let me sh those of you who who are who are here who who know who know the bullshit that we fucking have dealt with here okay right like you you guys know um exactly what i'm going to be talking about when i when i talk about this right so i mean, i got to find it i got it it was uh um no oh, hold on here it's i got to go back and scroll through my own thing let's see um all right hold on oh wait there we go okay uh all right i gotta find it okay so here we go i'm gonna i'm gonna show you i'm gonna we're gonna go through this from the beginning okay so uh this is um i blocked them finally but you guys know you guys know fucking donovan right donovan we know donovan all right we all know you've been here fucking annoying little shit so i said okay uh sora here uh showed off a blog we're gonna talk about that here in a little bit uh the blog for sora and showing the filmmakers and everything and i said simply amazing truly next gen filmmaking is on its way which i believe if you guys know me you know i've been talking about this now for over a year and a half this is shit that i'm interested in so he says here, this isn't next gen. What mid journey stability open AI are doing is criminal and the lawsuits are piling up. These companies foundation are as strong as a house built on sand. Okay. So I said, you sad, pathetic little man. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if within six months you have a complete mental breakdown and end up in a hospital for life. All things considered, it might be the best thing for you. Now, again, those of you those of you who fucking know, yeah, Blue Jay, oh boy, Donovan Crybaby Martin, exactly. We all, I'm so mean to Don. Donovan won't go away, Brandon. He won't go away. I've blocked him repeatedly, all right? He will not go away. He literally runs to like RJ and like Sean O'Rourke and other people and consistently just fucking like runs his fucking mouth, okay? All the time. And, he, and I, again, I'll always say, have a debate, come on the show, I'll drop all that shit. Won't fucking do it. He just won't do it. Like, and the thing is, like, look, I'll show you guys, I'll show you guys his fucking account, right? Okay, so he's like, I'll show you guys, look, this here. Okay, so look here, all right? He's um, still okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, he's still, he just, re all he does is retweet this guy. Some things like that. Okay, I'm trying to find him here, because just like the other day, Maybe because I'm blocked, it's not going to show it. Um, but he doesn't like. Goddamn! Hold on, I got to go to the replies. Okay. So okay, I'm trying to find it here because he like earlier. I think once I blocked him, he fucking backed off a little bit. But he's going to end up doing a thing. Okay, you know you can see. All right, like he just keeps you know. Uh, you're praising them for this next gen filmmaking. Truly tells me that you really do not care for the artists' rights. Even more apparent, you really don't have any creative bone in your body. And that once these things go away and shut down because they will, you won't be calling yourself an artist anymore. Even though in the first place, you never truly were. I've never called myself an artist for one. And two, these aren't going away. Like, what is he talking about? Like, what is he talking about? Okay, so he just keeps responding to me. All right. Okay. So then he'll, he'll just like start. Let's see. I'm trying to find it here. Because he was doing this the other day. Here we go. Look. Quote tweets me, okay, uh, yesterday, all right, talking about uh, James Marsden, right, and the thing uh, with fucking uh, Brian Peck. So, again, still talking me on this one or whatever, okay, so or still stalking me on that shit. Here we go. Uh, a couple days ago, a Discussing Film talks about the open AI thing from fucking Friday. He says, I bet if you were still a filmmaker to this day, you would sell out just like that, right? So he's still tagging me. Here we go. I don't know if he's talking about it. Here we go. Are you, you know, then on Saturday, he's still tweeting at me. All right. And then he's still fucking, and then he still like comes in and like, you know, Brandon, who also I blocked, but doesn't follow me. And then he's still talking to him there as well. Here we go. Look again, March 23rd. He, I mean, I, I engage with him a little bit too. I like to poke, but it's just like, it is literally, I don't fucking, you know, whatever like this is again him complaining about james mars and thank goodness i never even bothered to see any of the sonic movies like who gives you know whatever all right and then like again dan schneider shit i don't fucking talk to him i'm just messing around and then even here from from the other day i was messing around with the um 
you know, just mid journey and then trying to do runway, you know, gen two. And like, I'm just messing around with images. I'm just having fun. He's like, you'll never be a tour artist. Like the actual ones who work at Ghibli and abroad. Like it's just non fucking stop, dude. He goes after RJ. Um, you know, I made a joke here about this, this bad CG from the new Kong baby. I said, okay, that CG looks like bad. looks like AI El Mayo. Just a joke. You know, I really think you are actually against art. Like he just doesn't fucking stand this shit, but it uh, look at this here again, starts tagging me again and shit. All right. starts tagging me again and all this crap, right? He just keeps fucking tagging me. So this is what I'm saying. This is just over a couple fucking days, guys. This has been going on for months and for months and for months that he's been doing this shit. So I finally had enough and fucking just said pound, you know, like whatever. Like the dude is nuts. He's just insane. All right. So that's anyway, that's what happened with that. Okay. Uh, so then here comes this RJ Palmer guy, right? This RJ Palmer guy, concept artist, past Ubisoft Detective Pikachu, uh, paleo artist. What is that? He likes tomatoes. Uh, sir, you know, whatever, right? 187,499 followers. All right. And I said, you don't even know why I responded the way I did. He's like, explain. I said, okay. He said, this dude has been on my ass for months because I like AI art, but I also support regulations and ethical data training. I use it for fun. He's created multiple burner accounts to not only harass me, but my friends, not only here, but YouTube. I've offered him a space to debate the topic with me, but he never does. He just cries on Twitter and carries on. I blocked him multiple times. He just doesn't go away. So then him and I got, we went back and forth, right? He says here, like, if you support ethical training, data, and regulations, why not wait until those things happen? You are actively making our side look worse by openly and positively engaging with open AI, which I, you know, again, I say here, because the genie isn't going back in the bottle. There is zero point in not learning the technology. I think OpenAI is going to change things, open the doors for a lot of people who have been gatekept by the industry, myself included, to create anything and everything. I think the rules need to be legislated. However, the future is here. And by not engaging, you will be left behind, which is true. And I've been saying this for a year and a half. And I've been more or less proven right more often than not when it comes to this specific topic. So he's like, you know, then he says here, I don't know why your type always insists that it's some crazy hard thing to learn. Gen, I, Gen AI is extremely easy to use, but that's why you guys can do anything at, or, or can do anything at all with it. If you wanted to be a real artist, all you had to do is try, but that's too much for you lazy fucks. And then I said, here, it's not about laziness. It's about effectiveness. Two years ago, I paid an artist to do a job. I gave him the exact parameters of what I was after. I gave him reference images to pull from, and it was a very easy thing I asked for. He did not provide what I wanted after multiple iterations and revisions. I asked mid journey once and it did exactly what I wanted. I had a limited budget and I wanted to hire someone when that exhausted. I sought alternative means alternate means. Now that I have more money coming in as I was unemployed at the time, I can hire more people when I'm ready to do so. In the meantime, I'm using tools available to build my vision so that it can be improved upon. Again, you want to call it laziness when it's the exact opposite. Because I do, I put a lot of effort into my, a lot of effort into, you know, my development, like this, that podcast thing I kind of showed you guys, I've spent hours upon hours upon hours while I'm at work, you know, discussing with open AI, with chat GPT, building out the world. I'm having it ask me questions as a writing partner, not come up with concepts. It helps me research in real time and get a better fundamental understanding of what it is I'm trying to build and and to create and establish the rules of the world that's not lazy that's not lazy at all it's not laziness fucking brandon it's not laziness when you use it in conjunction with other tools if you use it as a replacement if you re, if you use it as an only in a replacement then you could call it lazy but it's really just kind of ridiculous to sit there and think that it all boils down to one aspect of it right but this is also the plight of the artist we have to also understand that the artist in this particular case is not a producer. It's not a content creator. The artist is an individual cog in, in, in a machine, right? It's just a cog in a machine and they have one. Whereas like the, the content creator or the producer runs the machine. Okay. The, the project is the machine. The artist is one cog in that machine. So you're talking about the person overseeing the project 
versus a person who is a part of the project, right? So you can understand if you look at the, the macro and then move into the micro, you get a, a better, I think, understanding. It's not that artists don't want to do work or, or people don't want to pay artists, but it literally does boil down to you also have to figure things out before you can like request a budget before you can seek a budget, you know? And so it's like, this is kind of the big point of things. Uh, Blue Jay here, thank you, says, uh, I like AI because it helps me flesh out my ideas. That's right. Brandon, you have art skills, so you don't need AI. You're also learning your art skills. AI could benefit you in your art skills. I think you really should look into that, to be honest with you. I know you're trying um, and, and good on you, man, and like keep it up. But it's like, again, like the more you fight back against it, you're going to get left behind in the next couple years. So just keep that in mind. Uh, is the AI debate from the same people who want practical effects over CG and hate everything CG? Not really. Not really. Um, it's not the same, not the same people. It's, it's, it's the, there are people who want practical effects, but, uh, those guys are just a little bit different. Uh, let's see here. Sadly, AI art will be, AI artists will be harassed off Twitter. I don't think so rational. They have, they have their own following on there. there there's a lot of uh, pro AI art people that are on Twitter and shit. And plus like other places as well. Um, so, you know, uh, Reed here says I'm an upcoming artist, but don't complain about AI. It's a waste of time. Yeah, man, that's, that's for the good. Uh, spherical man says, well, God forbid you ever lose your ability to draw with your hands, Brandon. I mean, we know his, his AI thumbnail work is pretty good anyway. So look, this guy and I, this is, this is the fucking, we, we just go back and forth for a while and, and everything. And look, like, you know, uh, did he respond to that? I don't think he did. Um, yeah, so he says here, so instead of learning how to work with artists better, and instead of learning how to do it yourself, you decided to ask a computer to do it all for you. Tell me again how it's not laziness. And I'm like, that isn't an argument. You're disregarding all the other work I did on my own project because the person I hired didn't do the job well enough. You're being obtuse on purpose. I get that you want to win the argument, but you fail to comprehend the overall aspect of it. You're tied to the art of a project rather than the pro the whole of the project. I mean, that makes sense and I get it. But that is why in the end, you're just going to run out of steam on social media and get left behind, which is true, which is absolutely 100% true. Uh, these people, as much as they are in their mind and their eyes fighting this good fight, they're fighting the wrong beast. They're fighting the wrong demon. They should be fighting, like contacting local legislatures, trying to get, you know, uh, rules and regulations passed through. A lot of them just cry on social media. There are people that are trying to organize, make no mistake about it. But what they want is they want all this shut down. They want all of this shut down rather than like trying to work with these companies to set up a, a payment system or royalties or licensing system that that can benefit them or utilizing the tools that are available, which by the way, they are all already using. Make no mistake about that. Uh, they are. I, I don't have any 100% proof of that, but you know, all of these guys are already using this stuff um, on their own. Because they know exactly, they're, they're, they're croning on about it right now. They are, they're croning on about it right now because ultimately that's what's going to end up, you know, they're probably, I wonder how many of them are making making money on Twitter right now because of that, right? Think about it, you bitch and moan about AI, I get tons of impressions and then it's like, oh yeah, I get paid to do this. Uh, let's see, uh, Matt is taking a plane from New York to California. Oh, is taking... <laughs> Is taking a plane from New York to California laziness because the person doesn't want to walk? I mean, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I see your argument. I see your argument. Absolutely. No, I didn't block you on YouTube, Brandon. I blocked you on Twitter, and I told you why I blocked you on Twitter. I will block you on YouTube if you don't stop. Buddy, every night, man, every night it's the same thing. Every night it's the same thing. All right, like we joke around with you about it, but it's just, it's like enough. It's enough, 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 okay? Like if you can't control your impulses in regards to like this, the fact that you, you're on repeat, like you're like a broken record, then like I will remove you, okay? I don't want to, but it's months and months of this, okay? Like it's, it's just, it's frustrating. I'm t Please stop. And don't like, don't troll Brandon anymore. Just leave him alone. All right. It's just leave him alone. That's basically all it boils down to. Um, anyway. So yeah, it's all, 
Let's see. CJ Atri says inkers use Photoshop all the time. No one literally inks comics by hand anymore. Exactly. And the, the example I like to use is what about Wacom tablets? Right? What about Wacom tablets? You're not using pen and paper anymore. You know, you don't have multiple different sizes of pens and uh, and 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 inks, right? And pencils. You, you, you know, you, you're not doing it by fucking uh, charcoal. You know, on a, on a fucking sketch pad, you can, but those allow you to do it in other ways, and it's faster and more efficient. Look at the show Bluey. Bluey's an amazing show. I love the show. There's episodes of it where they'll show you how they animate it, and it's all done in a computer, and everything is pre-rendered. All the expressions are pre-rendered. All of the environments are pre-rendered. Everything is pre-rendered. Everything is an individual file that you can drag and drop and manipulate how you need it to. That's not fucking, is that art? Or is that a computer doing 90% of the work? That's all I'm saying is the technology has advanced. The technology, and, and I've noticed that quite frankly, in, in this case, a lot of the people who are really upset and, and, and I will be absolutely fair. The people who are largely upset are concept artists because what does Mid Journey do or Stable Diffusion or, or OpenAI, Dolly, whatever? What does it do really well amongst everything else? Oh, that's right. It can do concept art. It can give you that kind of stuff. So they are worried about their jobs being in jeopardy. And that is something that is a valid concern, I'll, I'll admit. But the thing to remember off of all of that is that you should, you should still utilize the tools available to you in order to then maximize your output and make yourself an invaluable member of the team for, I don't know, job security. How about that? That's a fucking option, right? That's a fucking thing. That's the thing you could do. Job security. My goodness. My goodness. Job security is a fucking thing. Holy shit. Um, this, fucking, I got to show you this one though, man, I, <laughs> this fucking guy, this guy, this one dude came on in and tried and tried joining in the bants. And, uh, I, I, I would argue I probably BTFO his ass so hard that he, um, that he, he fucking, he blocked me like right away. Let me see if I could find it here. Um, okay. Okay. So, uh, here we go. Let me, let me bring this up. So this guy says to me, uh, says incredibly Zengi Wang says incredibly dumb things. All right. So in my, in my Twitter bio at the, at the very, what people don't realize is I, I planted that says incredibly dumb things at the end of my Twitter bio as a get out of jail free card. doesn't matter how bad my take is. That's what people see. So they go, Oh, he's just an idiot. I'm all like, yeah, you think that because you don't want to engage critically with what I'm saying. Therefore, you just go to that and I let you go to that because it's easy to detect who the moron is. So then I went to this guy's profile and he said, concept artist looking for a job. So I just said here, hey, bub, Craigslist is that way. And he did not like that at all. <laughs> he blocked me like right away. But then that RJ Palmer guy, all right, that RJ Palmer guy, uh, he says here, he's like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude, how old are you? So I said, 42 tomorrow. He's pulling from my bio, but I can't pull from his. Come on, man. It's tit for tat on Twitter. Also, when I lived in LA, I got tons of great gigs from Craigslist. So it's not an insult, but that's kind of the whole point is it's just fucking funny. Like, again, this is what I'm talking about here. These guys fucking dish it, dish it, dish it. When you get them with either like the same metric that they're using, right? You, you play from the same playbook or you engage in a, in a logical debate about the rationality of project completion and the overwhelming different aspects of it, all right, and how it's, it's whatever, they don't have an answer. They do not have an answer at all. All they've got is just fucking bullshit, right? That's it. So that's why it's pretty fucking funny. So even like someone here said like, so this, actually I always say this Pedro dude here, right? This Pedro guy. We were talking about it, right? We, we went talking about it for a while. And, I, and I'll give credit to, to Pedro. Like, Pedro, solid job, at least engaging. All right, solid job in engaging on that one. Because he wasn't being, like, he wasn't being a big old dick. He, was, he definitely was, was in it to have a conversation. And we did have a conversation. And I would gladly have him on to talk about it. 
right? Because it is about having a conversation. But if you're going to be a dick on Twitter, I'm going to be a dick right back. I think that's perfectly fucking fine. I think it's absolutely fine to have it, to be a dick if someone's being a dick right back. So there's that. But all right, let us talk about uh, something else. Let's move on here. 50 minutes into the show. I haven't even gotten to the fucking topics yet. Uh, Rapper Sean Diddy Combs Holmes. (laughs) Say that's why. Rapper Sean Diddy Combs Holmes uh, raided by Homeland Security. U.S. officials confirmed to Fox News raids on Diddy's homes are connected to a federal human trafficking investigation. Now, is it over for Diddy? Is Diddy done? Well, let's find out. Uh, Hold on. There should be. Wait, where's the sound? Uh, is this, uh, it's not muted. Any sound? Oh, is this? Oh, this is just like them watching. Okay, God damn it. I thought this was an actual news report. Wow, look at that though. All right, look at that. Okay, we'll come back to this as I give my thoughts on it. But, oh, oh, what? I got to join Fox News. Oh, that is so stupid. Oh my God. Fox behind a fucking paywall. Join Fox News to access this. That's so dumb. That's so dumb. All right. Here we go. Uh-oh. I hit the wrong button. Hit the wrong button. Okay. There we go. Gotta love uh, San Francisco news. There we go. We're following a developing story in Southern California where Homeland Security agents have raided the home of rapper Sean Diddy Combs as well as his studio in Miami as part of an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Reporter Haley Winslow from our sister station in Los Angeles joins us now with the latest on what's happening. Haley. Julia, it's been a pretty exciting afternoon, to say the least. We actually came in the convoy in the middle of all of it with hundreds of undercover officers in their vehicles and Bearcats. We got a tip and we're kind of standing by for a while. So I was really the only TV reporter here for about an hour and a half as this all unfolded on our station Fox 11. So we saw them jump out of the vehicles, put the crime scene tape up, and with huge guns basically go into one of the biggest celebrities in the world sean diddy combs okay i'm sorry sorry i'm sorry what yo when the fuck has diddy been relevant man like the last time diddy was relevant was like when he was with russell brand and get him to the greek other than that diddy ain't been relevant i'm sorry i hate to say it hate to say it but it's true diddy is not relevant at all uh, I was shocked. I was I was taken back. I was really shocked. I mean, I, I never I never even expected this to happen. I- More people coming out. Who's this guy? Yeah, they're all kind of dressed alike. Definitely shocking and hectic out here in Holmby Hills at one of Sean Diddy Combs' homes. We were first on scene as it all unfolded. We came right in the middle of the convoy of about 40 undercover law enforcement vehicles before they even put up the crime scene tape. The Department of Homeland Security making a big bust, officers say, in connection to a sex trafficking investigation. And while it was all... Yo, is he going to get R. Kelly'd? Right, can to get R. Kelly? Could you imagine that? Diddy bombing into fucking prison. R. Kelly, like, yo, what up, dog? They got you here too. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, what did Diddy take over for R. Kelly after R. Kelly went away? This is crazy. Oh, hold on here. Blue Jay says Diddy just released an album last year before all this happened, but no one talked about it. Really, I I, I haven't heard nothing out of Diddy for years, man. Hadn't heard nothing out of him for years. Uh, except I know he got that, like, he was sued for sexual assault, I think. And then, like, said it. Uh, Matt, you heard it here first. P. Diddy didn't kill himself. <laughs> He's going to fucking get epstein man. He's just gonna get, Jesus Christ. Like, what is up with, the, like, these... <laughs> I don't know, man. Like fucking sex trafficking. You make enough money. Just pay for that pussy. Just uh, You just got to pay for it. That's all you got to do. So all you got to do is just pay for that shit. All happening, investigators were also raiding his home in Miami. Homeland Security has not yet released details or named Diddy as the focus of the investigation. The 20-year-old Ryan Mendelson, he's lived nearby his whole life, and he often visits his best friend just a few doors down. But I've seen him once a week, girls lingering outside. I drive by a lot, um, and I see that a lot of girls, maybe five or six girls outside, 
some leaving, some not, some going in, black suburbans. Never know. I never thought anything of it, but now this is crazy. I mean. As we broke word on scene and from Sky Fox, Mapleton Drive near Sunset yeah, and Beverly Glen became a madhouse. And as more Bearcats and undercover cops pulled in, so did the swarms of onlookers, even a celebrity tour bus. We all have to keep our minds open to what's going on here. And, and, well, this is from Brooklyn, though. Leave Puffy alone, man. Y'all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely an unexpected added bonus for the people on that celebrity tour bus that goes through here. This neighbor. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to make light of like sex trafficking investigate. I don't. I don't want to make light of it. But the fact that she's all like, that's a good, that's, you know, that's a, uh, that's a really big surprise for those people coming through on a celebrity tour bus drive. I mean, they got a real big shock. Can you believe it? I mean, imagine all their Facebook friends are completely in awe of all this. It's just, <laughs> it's, I can't. Oh my God. She's just like, I understand what she's doing. I do. I get it. I get what she's doing. But at the same time, it's like, honey, this is not, this is not like time for this. This is not lady. Sorry. I don't want to say honey. That seems like derogatory and misogynistic. No, it's like lady. This is not the time for that. Neighborhood is home to a lot of celebrities. In fact, it's actually not gated, but his home, of course, is gated, and we're told that there's actually a guard there. We have reached out to Diddy and to his representatives for comment. We have not yet heard back. I'm Haley Winslow here in Holmby Hills in Los Angeles. Julia Mike, back to you. Yeah, this is all tied to a series of allegations and lawsuits. Like you said, you've reached out but haven't heard back. The man in your piece that we saw them looking like they were taking someone into custody, was that person arrested or just apprehended? while the search crews went into the home. Just detained. So there were three people from our helicopter that uh, showed three people coming out of that home. They basically went in, they went to the back over by the pool, Julie, and they detained three people inside there. Diddy was not here at the time. I think he was in New York. Uh, they also, of course, raided his home on the East Coast in Miami. But the people that they took out of those homes, we don't out of that home, excuse me, we don't yet know if they will be arrested. Right now, they're just brought in for questioning. And you've been out there all day. What are they doing right now? Are they carrying things out, or are they just still kind of staking out and covering, uh, tying up the neighborhood? Yeah, I think it's going to be a scene for quite a while. We've been on this since probably started around 10 a.m. We got to the scene here once they all deployed about 1 p.m. And they're still there. They're, all those vehicles basically parked up the hill down the street. Those are all undercover Homeland Security vehicles. And they were bringing stuff out right away, right after they went in and detained those three people. They brought out their drones. So they put kind of everything back in the vehicles. And then actually a whole other convoy of about 40 to 50 bear cats and undercover vehicles came in uh, about 3 o'clock today. I don't know if it was a shift change or whatever, but they're still just kind of here staking it out, I guess getting any kind of evidence they can to figure out exactly what's going on. All right, Haley. You have to love it, folks. You have to love it when they try. When they, when, you know, you can tell when they're trying to fill time. You know, like she's probably got someone in her ear saying, like, give it another 10, 30 seconds or whatever the fuck it is. Because what was that line there about like, well, the home doesn't have a gate. Well, that home back there has a gate, but the home over here doesn't have a gate. That, what does that even mean? That's not even at all relevant to the situation. And then just like, so have you seen them carrying anything? It just like you have to love like like the news as they're trying in the moment to get all that shit put together. Parallax here asking, have I ever done one of those tours? No. Uh, the only time I've ever engaged with one of those type of, type of things was when I was on the Universal Backlot back in like 2010, 2011. Uh, I was going to a script writers meeting event and one time the uh the tour bus passed by me and people were looking at me and i just yelled out snooch to the nooch <laughs> and all this like T -t 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 pictures are taken of people probably thinking i was kevin smith so that worked out for me uh jess asking when did this happen this morning there was an atb chase it happened this morning on the on the west coast so probably midday east coast so i don't know what an atb chase has to do with all that uh eric here says diddy has been sketchy for decades notorious parties back in the 90s crazy stuff uh people also speculating that those who were handcuffed might have been diddy's sons well as always this story is going to unfold and as it unfolds we'll probably talk more about it but in the meantime we had ourselves another uh big uh big thing today and that is that uh mr uh mr trump 
the failed former ex-president was supposed to put up a four hundred like sixty five m- m- million dollar bond today uh, from the uh, New York civil trial about or, about uh, or no the New York trial that wasn't criminal I don't think about all the defrauding of the state of New York that he did and uh, he got he got uh, an appeal he got a little bit of a win so let's take a look here at this and see what they say. All right, I just, I found the video randomly, so I don't know what's on this one. They call it a major victory. Uh, New York City court orders Trump to enter a bond of $175 million within the next 10 days. Now, look, it will be easier for him uh, to get, I wonder if this is just a video or is it like, is it just something they put together? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on this one. I'll see if I can find something else where there's a little bit of, uh, a little bit more information okay uh let's try cbs can i is there is there a video on this one yeah there is all right if you're just joining us right now we have some breaking news to report out of new york this is where a state appeals court judge has just granted trump's request to stay the 464 million dollar judgment in his new york civil fraud case the court has granted him 10 days to pay a reduced bond of $175 million. Uh, And our Errol Barnett is joining us now. He's outside the Manhattan courtroom covering this hearing for us. Errol, update us with all that you know. Well, Vlad and Chanel, this is a significant win, you could call it, for former President Trump, although it just grants him a bit more breathing room and it reduces the amount of money he would need to put up as he continues to insist that he's innocent. Just to recap for everyone, this is the civil fraud trial which claimed that the Trump organization, that's Donald Trump, his sons, Eric and Don Jr., as well as Alan Weisselberg and others, um, inaccurately and fraudulently submitted documents, banking statements as it relates to Donald Trump's net worth and the value of his properties. We all know Trump Tower. It includes uh, 40 Wall Street and many others as well. Now, a judge already ruled that in, uh, over the course of many years, Trump and his associates had overestimated their value by the billions, almost $2 billion. And in the judgment was that former President Trump had to pay at least $460 million by today um, in order to continue his appeal. Now, what's just happened here in the last few moments is that a New York appeals court has granted Trump's request to stay that judgment, meaning pause it, put it on hold as he continues, and he's already communicated this publicly, to struggle to get the cash on hand or to get surety companies, which facilitate getting the cash on hand, um, for him. Um, They now, this uh, New York appeals court, has reduced the amount that Trump would need to put up from 464 million down to 175 million. Okay, sorry, I I meant to like stop it before then. I was trying to wait for this guy to get to a point. Um, Of all the reporters on scene, this guy is one of the most boring I've 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 ever I've ever fucking heard. Holy crap. Snorefest. Uh so let's uh let's kind of like figure this out, right? Let's kind of figure this out here. So Trump was supposed to pay 100 464 million dollars. Went to 30 creditors, couldn't get 30 creditors to loan him the money. No right-wing billionaire showed up with the cash. There was something recently like just the other day with people like investing into Truth Social. Let me see what's going on with that because I'm kind of curious. I want to make sure I have that correct. Uh, let's see. Uh, truth Social um, Money Earned. Let's see. Um, okay. All right. So um, I guess uh, they're going to start trading. They're going to go public with Truth Social according to NPR. Um, this is what's going on with that. Let's take a look. This is from just a few hours ago. All right. So Truth Social will start trading on Tuesday. Trump stands to earn a fortune. This is like this is like the last ditch effort, right? Like this is like the last ditch effort. He's so desperate for money. He's been doing um, 
phone banking with like with like donors that, that have significant money trying to get them to put money in. The RNC has said that they're going to pay his legal bills. The uh, his campaign is just not making a lot of money. He needs like he needs several hundred million dollars in order to compete with Joe Biden. And he just simply doesn't have the support. Now, this could change with all of this stuff, right? Let's see what it says here. The company behind Donald Trump's social media app, True Social, will start trading on the NASDAQ exchange on Tuesday, potentially delivering a windfall of more than $3 billion to the former president. Now, that's a big deal. That's going to be big for tomorrow, right? Trump Media and Technology Group is set to become a public domain a pub, sorry, public company after completing a merger with a listed shell company called Digital World Acquisitions Corporation, which was created to merge with the former president's company. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, hold on. Um, it fucked me up there. Okay. God damn, it really fucked me up. All right. Um, okay. There we go. Trump Media will trade under the stock DJ, the stock symbol GJT. Oh my God. That's. That's actually kind of kind of based. I'm not going to lie. The former president would own at least 58 percent of the merged company, a stake that could be worth billions of dollars at current market valuations. The windfall comes as Trump is mired in a slew of legal cases. Earlier on Monday, a New York appeals court reduced the amount Trump must post a, a, as bond in a civil fraud to 175 million from nearly half a billion dollars and give him another 10 days to post it. What I don't get about this is like right afterward, like Trump went on and like basically said like he's got the fucking money. You know what I mean? He he went on and and, and said that. So you're like you've got to be fucking kidding me on that shit, right? Um that he's he has said like all that stuff, but he's like hey, you know, I'm, I'm fucking broke, you know what I mean? Like I'm just fucking broke, you guys. Um and it's just it's it's crazy. All right. So, um well, hold on, let me find I lost my page. Okay. Um, all right. So, but Trump may not be able to share to sell his shares in Trump media for another six months under his current agreement. He could, however, try to renegotiate his agreement or put up his stock holdings as collateral in exchange for a loan. That's what he's going to probably do is put up the stock holdings as collateral. In a news conference on Monday, Trump lauded True Social's performance despite its poor financial health, saying True Social is doing very well. It's, it's hot as a pistol and doing great... What? Uh, in filings, True Social said it had only it had it only had revenue of just over three million in the first nine months of last year, and lost fi nearly fifty million during that period. So, how does it have a valuation of nearly three billion dollars if it if it fucking lost fifty million last year? He claimed to have that cash during the trial. Oh, he did. That's so weird. Like that's the thing I don't get. That's what I don't get is, is basically just like all of the shit that he keeps saying is, is always, you know, and then he always just kind of lets it out of the bag and everyone's like, yeah, we know we, we fucking know, we know exactly what he says. He says it all the time. And yet for some reason he just gets, he just continues to get, um, <laughs> like it just continues to get it. Uh, it's crazy. Um, but uh, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to cut over here to Jen Saki from uh, MSNBC. Um, Cause I think she'll have a, uh, she's going to kind of break it down a bit more. And what really struck me about all of this is just, oops, damn it. There we go. Sorry guys. And what really struck me about all of this is just how ironic it is that a guy who has railed against a two-tiered system of justice repeatedly has been afforded the kind of leniency that no one else would ever receive. I mean, of course there is a two-tiered justice uh, system in this country, one in desperate need, by the way, of reform. But it is definitely not tiered in the way that Donald Trump is describing. And he's implying that he is the one who is treated worse, when actually the opposite is true. Just consider that under New York state law, Attorney General Letitia James could have enforced the nearly $500 million judgment against Trump last month, but she didn't. She granted him a 30-day grace period to front the money before the appeals court intervened. And I can keep going here, and I will for a little bit, because in Florida, the Trump-appointed judge overseeing his documents case has shown him such blatant favoritism, she's been rebuked twice by a higher court. She is, surprise, surprise, moving at a snail's pace right now and has yet to even decide when that trial will actually begin. 
It's also worth noting that anyone else who knowingly and improperly retained classified documents would likely have faced travel restrictions or be forced to surrender their passport or even be put in jail, but not Donald Trump. Likewise, in the election interference case, the Supreme Court hit the pause button so they could take up the absurd argument that a president should be able to do whatever he wants, even assassinate a political rival and be immune from prosecution. And while justice for Trump in that case is delayed indefinitely, hundreds of his supporters, the people who listened to his lies, have faced prison sentences, hundreds of them. But again, not Donald Trump. And back in New York, yes, a trial date was circled on the calendar in the election interference hush money case today. That's a big deal. And the judge actually scolded the Trump team and strongly rejected their arguments to delay. But we were supposed to be covering the start of that trial today, and we are not. So no, Trump is not the victim of a two-tiered system of justice in this country. He's been a beneficiary. There is one system for the powerful, wealthy, and well-connected like Donald Trump, and there is an entirely other system for everyone else. So, I mean, yeah, I kind of agree about she's trying to be Rachel Maddow. Well, she's, she doesn't have it. Um, the woman who, who took over for Rachel Maddow sounds like Rachel Maddow. But I agree with uh, Spiro Command. His press conference today was kind of bonkers. Let's take a look at that for a couple minutes because uh, it's always interesting to see how I always kind of like watching dementia J Trump, like do his thing because it's just like, there is a bit of shot in Freud. You're watching a man like legitimately disintegrate in real time. His brain is gone. It's rotted. It's, it's fucking gone. Uh, whatever, you know, like his sons, his daughters, his team, uh, they're propping him up. This is fucking elder abuse. In my mind, this is worse than Diane Feinstein. You know what I mean? Um, I agree with Rational here that MSNBC should have never fired Mehdi Hassan. That's true. They should have also never hired fucking Ronna McDaniel. Now, granted, to be fair, Ronna McDaniel was the head of the RNC for seven years. So she is kind of like as close to the insider information that you could get. So like on that front, she's going to have to come use, become useful around the election season. Although everyone is pissed off that Ronna McDaniel is involved. So here's Trump's uh, statement today. I think it's today. This is all about election interference. This is all Biden run things, meaning Biden. And no comment, son, Eric. No comment. He's alive. And it's a shame. It's a shame what's happening to our country. This is election interference. They are. He, com he committed crimes while he was president. While he was running for president. I think he might have been. Yeah. While he was running for president back in 2016. And he's like, is election interference? interference folks interference uh I, I can't do it trump but it's you know a complete bullshit are doing things that have never been done in this country before we've never had anything like it certainly not at this level but we've really had nothing like it that i've been able to find it does happen a lot in third world countries banana republics if you look at uh what we just left Good Lord, he looks terrible. I'm sorry. I know I don't mean to keep interrupting, but like he just looks gaunt. He, he like, look at like he, yeah, he's lost a lot of weight. You can tell you like, look at his face. It's, it's super thin. Uh, he's not eating the Big Macs. He's not eating the double Whoppers. He clearly has avoided the Baconator. He's probably not even getting taco bowls, which is a shame because those are fucking delicious, but he just looks terrible. Like this dude is not going to live to see the election. Like, I don't understand. You can have four, four criminal cases, 91 federal, 86 federal indictments four you know, half a billion dollars in debt. The walls are closing in like they're closing in. He does have some luck on his side, which is very true, but he, he, there's no way that this fucker is going to live. You had a, you have a case, which. They're dying to get this thing started. The judge cannot go faster. He wants to get it started so badly. And there's tremendous corruption. You have Pomerantz, Mark Pomerantz. He was Hillary Clinton's lawyer, or Democrat National Committee's lawyer. He worked in Paul Weiss. He walked in and he took over the, the uh, district attorney's office. Nobody's ever seen anything like that to prosecute Trump. And then they wouldn't do what he wanted to do. And they ask him right now if he knows who Trump is. And I think he would probably there's about a nine out of 10 chance he would get the answer wrong. He goes out and he writes a book. Long before any decisions were made, he writes a book about it. And the book gets published and everybody's reading his book. And the judge said there's nothing wrong with that. 
And if you look at Bragg, Bragg had a fit over that. Bragg said, this trial is now dead. We can't do the trial. Well, that was one of the problems, that, and the judge should have allowed that to happen. And you had other instances, like Colangelo. Colangelo is a radical left from the DOJ who was put into the state, working with Letitia James, and then was put into the district attorney's office to run the trial against Trump. And that was done by Biden and his thugs also, because they can't win an election because of the borders, because of energy prices, because of uh, inflation, because of Afghanistan, the worst and most embarrassing day in the history of our country. He can't win because of... <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta love it. He's in, I think he's at Trump Tower, and he's swatting away flies. It's not even summer yet, and he's swatting away flies. Uh, you know, hold on, Rational says, a new story came out a while back that Biden basically only works presidential duties until like 2 p.m. And then after that, staffers take, tell him his day is over. I mean, but if he starts at like 6 a.m., that's a full eight hours. You know what I'm saying? Trump took executive time, like all the time. Like Trump would not work it. He'd work an hour a day. I don't give a shit if Biden is done by two. We've seen in, like, like actual like legislative things done in our country with Biden as president that have been beneficial to Americans. Trump didn't do shit. He just watched Fox News. That's it, man. Russia, 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 because of all the problems, because of Ukraine being attacked by Russia. And he can't win because of the October 7th attack of Israel, which he should have never allowed to happen. Would have never. Why do you talk? How did Biden? How did Biden? Which, okay. Oh, my God. Okay. One of the reasons why we support Israel the way that we do is one of the reasons why we pay them $3 billion a year is, is because they have one of the greatest surveillance fucking systems. Okay. They have one of the greatest surveillance like states in the world. Like they monitor a lot. We get a lot of data from them in regards to the goings on in the middle East. That's one of the reasons why we do what we do, why we have the relationship that we have. When October 7th happened, I thought to myself, you know, we're going to find out that Netanyahu knew either this or something like this was going to happen. And then after that, you know, he, that, he, that they allowed it to happen, right? Like my mind was thinking like false flag type shit. Cause I don't trust Netanyahu this period. I think he's a fucking scumball. But then you find out that it's like, they did have prior knowledge that something was being planned, but they thought that Hamas was just too fucking retarded to be able to pull it off. Right? So I don't buy that one at all. I don't, I don't buy that. They thought that Hamas was too fucking stupid to be able to pull it off. So it's like, you know, they, they held that information. They with probably withheld that information from their allies, i.e. us. So this context, this, this comment here about Biden let October 7th happen. He just let it happen, folks. Uh, all those Jews dead. Biden's fault. Biden's fault, you guys. He did it. You know, it's like, it's so fucking stupid. Hold on. Uh, Biden not going back to the Iran deal really hurt. I think they're trying to rebuild the relationship with that. Like, it's a hard one. You know what I mean? He's like, it's a hard one to do. Um, let's see. Instead, Biden is escalating with them on behalf of Israel. Yeah. Well, look, man, like I said, is we have, we have relationships. We have, we have like national security relationship uh, as a result of that. October 7th because it beca happened because of Trump's Abraham Accords. What I haven't heard of those. Let me know. Let me know. Like, like, like what's, what is that? Happened I'll look if it I up. Were president. Ukraine would have never been attacked if I was president. And you wouldn't have inflation if I was president. We didn't have inflation. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we weren't running out of toilet paper and paper towels, uh, mostly toilet paper during the pandemic, right? Fucking shrinkflation wasn't already happening uh, during the, the pandemic. All that shit that we're still recovering from wasn't happening while you were in charge, you bloviating fuckhead. So all of these things, so what they do is they do election interference, which is court cases, and uh, let's try and tie him up, and let's take as much of his money as possible. I respect the appellate division for substantially reducing that ridiculous amount of money that was put on by a corrupt judge named Ngoran. He ought to be looked at, seriously looked at, especially what he did with valuations. He, he's the one, he's a fraudulent valuator where he values Mar-a-Lago at $18 million, and people say it's worth 50 to 100 times that much, the biggest experts in the business. 
So he ought to be looked at, and James ought to be looked at, because she tried to get him. She's like the puppet master of the judge. And, you know, our state, this state, is losing tremendous prestige. It's losing its companies. It's losing its people. They're fleeing, and violent crime is flourishing. And we can't have that. We can't have that. No city should have it. Property crimes, I would say, are up. Violent crimes are notoriously lower. We uh, violent crime has dropped. Yes, Chicago is a problem. No, there's no need to say. But what about Chicago? We all know Chicago is a problem. I don't know how to fix Chicago. Like, legitimately, don't know how to fix Chicago outside of like, you know, really finding a way to like stop bullet manufacturing. Other than that, I have no idea how to how to help Chicago. That, and it's happening in other cities, but not with the lawfare. The lawfare that they're doing is incredible. So they could have done this in the case of the trial that we just left. One of the many that are going, every single one of them is run by Biden and his thugs. It's the only way they think they can get elected. And I think so far it's backfiring because the people of this country understand it. It's backfiring. But they're being run and they're running all of these different cases. So ridiculous, the cases. Every one of them is ridiculous. Uh, you take a look at any one of them and you say any one of them, it wouldn't make any difference. This is all weaponization of DOJ and FBI. They raided my house in violation of a thing called the Fourth Amendment. Not allowed to do that. They raided my house in Florida, mar a That you refused to return the documents after months and months and months of pleading with you about it. You moved the documents yourself uh, in preparation for... Uh, This sort of thing. There's been corroborating witnesses that have talked about that both publicly uh, as well as in affidavits. Oh, yeah. And then it was a judge signed off on the search warrant to be able to raid Mar-a-Lago to to retrieve stolen documents that belong to the United States government. Uh, This was not a an God. Just the lies, my friends, the lies. No notice, no nothing. They raided it. I can't believe it. Nobody can believe it. And we'll see how that all works out in the end. But it's illegal what they're doing. It's criminal what they're doing. And it's never been done before in this country. Uh, You can't have an election in the middle of a political season. We just had Super Tuesday. You can't have an election in the middle of a political season. Uh, Somebody, uh, somebody uh, doesn't understand that we're in, we, we are now in the general election. Uh, somebody doesn't know that he's the party's presumptive nominee because somebody isn't all the way there. If you, you now see that his hair is bigger than his head, his brain has officially deflated. The dementia has set in. He doesn't know where he is. He, he, he wants pudding time, uh, and, uh, and to watch the new episode of X-Men according to Ash here, $2. Thank you. Chris was right. X-Men 97 F2 is full on Jan six. That's why he wants to watch it. He needs to remember what happens and to not feel like he's a bad guy. Rational here for two. Thank you, buddy. He says, if Trump wins, I don't want DNC blaming progressives. They're, they're gonna, but they fucking shouldn't. Progressives are going to be the ones that fucking drag this country back into some sense of fucking normalcy. Absolutely. Yeah, what the fuck did he say exactly? He doesn't know what he's saying. He, he's gone. He's completely inept. He's just, this is like listening to an old man in a bathrobe yelling at the sky. And we had a Tuesday after a Tuesday already. And we had Louisiana the other day, a couple of days ago, and we won in a record number, the highest number ever recorded. And But we're in the middle of an election right now, and we're fighting crooked Joe Biden, who's the worst president in the history of our country, by far. Who's let this- <laughs> He says that with a straight face. That's so cute. He's so demented. This country go to hell. The borders, millions and millions of people coming in from prisons, from mental institutions that terrorists many people coming in from prisons and mental institutions think of it and terrorists are coming into our country and this guy's just letting them come in by the millions i think we have 15 million people already people don't say that i say it and i'll bet i'm right too so i think the number is 11 million but he's trying to inflate it to 15 million to make it sound worse than what it is don't get me wrong we need to secure the border 100 percent, and no one from the left and the right is going to disagree with that but again, you know, he tell, him telling uh, Congress to not – the Republicans to not move forward with getting that bill through because it would have benefited Biden and then coming out and talking about illegal immigration as if it's a problem that he can solve when he could have solved it. 
um it's just it's hysterical because you're just watching like just you're you're we're watching this happen we're watching this guy just make up make up lies we're going through this weaponization of our government to try and knock out somebody's political opponent and so far based on the polls it's not working at all the people understand it uh, we have like biden was up in the polls and i think now they're i don't want to say neck and neck i think trump is like Today I saw a poll that said he was up like by like a half a percent or a percent or something. So they are close together. This is this is a situation where Democrats are going to need to get out to vote. Republicans stay the fuck home. I'm telling you, stay the fuck home. If you don't want Trump to come back in office and you don't want to go back to way the way things were from 2017 to 2021, if you don't want a repeat of January 6th, if you don't want this kind of megalomaniac to have access to that kind of power again, to be able to absolve himself of credibility of, of accountability in the crimes that he has committed. Um, then, then stay the fuck home. That's, I'm just saying, stay the fuck home or vote Biden or vote fucking Jill Stein. I don't fucking know, but uh, literally it's just fucking uh, get up there. Um, let's see here. Not the border talk. It's always the border. I should change. I should change the show to Border Talk Radio. I have a man who just uh, ruled they'd like the trial to start in 21 days or something, and I don't know how you can have a trial that's going on right in the middle of an election. Not fair. Not fair. <laughs> Not fair. Don't commit the crimes, asshole. Don't commit the fucking crimes. Fair. It's not fair at all. He knows that too. He's a Democrat judge. He wants to do that because. They're all trying to damage Trump as much as possible. It's having the reverse effect, but maybe someday it won't. I don't know. But it's having the reverse effect. It's a, a terrible, terrible. It's not having the reverse effect. Joe Biden raised way more money than Trump has. Uh, Trump keeps hemorrhaging cash. Can't get the money for the bond. Had to beg and plead uh, to cry to the appeal appellate court to be able to get them to drop it down to $175 million. If he's able to play, pay that off in cash. Uh, I think he will, to be honest with you. I'm not going to sit there and like try to play it up like he won't. I think he will. I think he'll be able to get that covered. But otherwise, he still is going to have to pay that money. He may not be able to like, you know, do whatever. But what I think is happening here is I think people are affording him these luxuries, this two-tiered system, because they don't want there to be any kind of sense of impropriety or or taking favorites or whatever or picking sides because they know how crazy his base is. Like like everyone in the political system has to walk has to walk on eggshells when dealing with Trump, especially people in like positions like where their authority can yield consequences against him because they are afraid that if they do the wrong thing or whatever that they're going to be killed. Like you can tell that some of these people are legitimately like afraid. Like the the first guy that uh, that um Fannie Willis went to to become a special prosecutor for Donald Trump, uh, for that Rico case out of Georgia was, I think like the former secretary of state or something, or maybe a former attorney general. He was some dude who, who had some authority and that guy turned it down because he's like, I don't want to have bodyguards for the rest of my life because he knows how crazy and how obsessive and how pathologically violent Trump supporters are. I, I don't think we can sit there at any point in time anymore and not have that conversation about how there is legitimately violent people that support Donald Trump and those people have acted before and will they act again? I don't know. I I'm sure a lot of the people involved in J six will most likely not be engaged, but you have people like the proud boy types, the oath keeper types, those kind of crazy fuck the fuckheads, like the groypers, those kind of guys who knows somebody might want to martyr for Trump. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, uh, and that's a problem. That's a real big problem. And so these people are now stuck, literally stuck, between trying to uh, exercise justice for a, a career criminal who tried to overthrow, you know, the peaceful transfer of power, who who has lied and deceived the American people for decades upon decades, uh, and and the fear that they'll never have a normal life again because they'll always be looking over their shoulder for that potential MAGA hat wearing idiot that's going to walk up behind them with a fucking gun, and that's a realistic realistic fear that these people have and anyone who's going to be a jury member in regards to Trump in this particular case with the Stormy Daniels payment or the Rico case or the documents. Uh, I don't think, yeah, the documents case or the January 6th case, 
those people, whoever becomes jurors are going to, are going to ultimately, um, be fearful for their own life after the fact, if they find him guilty. And my fear with that, and I think I will absolutely be vindicated in having this fear will be that the names of those jurors will in fact become public and their names and their faces will in fact be out there. And then they will have that target on their back for the rest of their lives. With, and, and the government won't, won't never do anything to, to stop it or to protect them unless it becomes too bad. But that's a lot of what's going to happen. That's a lot of what's going to happen. Uh, wasn't Ashley uh, Babbitt their martyr? They've tried to make Ashley Babbitt their martyr. Um, I say this as a person who lived in the same city as her, who went to the same high school as her. Most likely, I've, I've, I've met her at least a couple times through the drive-in. Uh, uh, she's a traitor. Ashley Babbitt didn't die a martyr. She was a traitor, 100%. Um, and, uh, you know, look at how many Republicans are fleeing the house. Oh yeah. A lot of them are. Oh yeah. A lot of them are, uh, a lot of them are absolutely, uh, running because they don't want, they, they don't want the, the MAGA to have the authority. They want to do all that. They want to get rid of it. Ken Buck. Yeah. He, Ken Buck did that through the drive-in. No, it's true. Plushy. Yeah, I worked at the, I worked at a drive-in theater in St. Like, dude, Ashley, okay, fucking Jesus Christ. I don't know if I have to explain this or you're just laughing or whatever, but uh, Ashley Babbitt, right, was from Lakeside, California. I moved to Lakeside, California, November 29th, 1999, okay? She went to El Capitan High School starting in September of 2000. I graduated El Capitan High School in June of 2000. Well, July, technically, I think. I went to summer school. Okay, but I worked at the Santee Drive-In, which is no longer there, from 2001 until 2010, and then once again from 2013 to 2015. During the time I worked there, from 01 to 2010, those near nine years I worked there, you bet your ass every fucking teenager in Lakeside, Santee, El Cajon, La Mesa, Poway, Ramona, possibly even Escondido, which was 19 miles northbound, and even Rancho San Diego, all came through the drive-in. This was a cultural place to go. Believe me when I say that when I when I say that it's a high probability that I engaged with this woman, I'm not making that up. Because I was there for years. I was the I was a manager for years. I was a box guy for years. I was a lot guy for years. I dealt with everybody, especially people who were like her. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, Trump said he would give more stimulus checks. Don't know if he's lying, but that rhetoric can sway some voters. I mean, like it's, that's a put up or shut up type situation, really. I don't believe. I don't believe so. Um, no, I didn't know her specifically, Eric. I'm sure I, I engaged with her. But I know the type of person, right? Like I, I haven't, I don't know if I don't, I can't say a hundred percent that I met her, but I'm, I would, I, I would bet that I have met her. Anyway, let's keep going. Precedent, a terrible thing to do. They could have started this when I left office. You could have gone back three years, more than that. When I left office, all of these things could have been started, so we wouldn't be quibbling over starting this week or that week or two days or three days, it wouldn't have mattered. This thing would have been over two years ago. He's actually right about that. I'll give him credit on that. He's 100% correct that they should have gone after him sooner instead of waiting to this year. But again, a lot of it was also the optics. So the optics are like, do we go after an ex-president? Uh, how long do we wait to go after an ex-president? Uh, we have to wait for the information, you know, the investigations to happen, everything to kind of take place, yada, yada, yada. Like all those things, like we know all of those things. Um, and unfortunately it's, uh, it's just taking its, its sweet ass fucking time because that's the way the legal system works, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, he is right though. He is right. It could happen sooner. They could have started. They should have never started because there's no case. If you read Andy McCarthy's piece, if you read Jonathan Turley's piece, if you read legal scholars all over the world. They say this DA case is a hoax and it's something that shouldn't have, it's not even a crime. They say there's no crime and there is no crime. So I just- Paying hush money to a porn star that you boffed through a shell corporation. Uh, oh no, it wasn't the money paid by, um, like wasn't the money given to him by David Pecker from National Enquirer, right? Or, or like, no, 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 no. 
I think he paid to I think he paid to silence the story for the um the one woman the other woman that Trump had an affair with um but Stormy Daniels was paid f through Cohen and then Michael Cohen was paid back through the Trump organization like in like it wasn't like six individual payments or something along those lines um I forget all the details because it was a very long time ago I just say it's a sad day for this country when you have something like this and remember the words should have been started three years ago if they were going to start it at all and then you wouldn't be quibbling over what week it's going to end days they're quibbling over days and hours they wouldn't be quibbling at all they never started it and you know why they didn't start it because they didn't know i'd be running and they didn't know how well i'd do no we all knew you'd be and running if i were not running or if i were doing poorly like everyone else has done because no, they're we, all gone they're all knocked out i i, I love this like they, they didn't know i'd run they didn't know i'd do so well no we 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 all knew it we were hoping you weren't going to but we knew that if you did this was going to happen this isn't anything new except for crooked joe biden if i were doing poorly this wouldn't be happening if none of these trials were. well here's the thing rodham is saying here they should have really just ignored trump and let him burn himself out the path that's been taken has only kept Trump relevant long past the sell by date. The, the problem with it is, though, is that like it, that was always an inevitability, right? Because there were crimes that were going to happen uh, that needed to be called out, right? Like there were eventually crimes that were going to be called out and taken to task and everything else. Uh, there was legally no way for them to walk away with the biggest problem was that they they like Merrick Garland specifically wanted to play by this like decorum. And that's the biggest the biggest factor here is the decorum that what well, we have to wait, what well, we have to do this, what well, we have to do that. Like, no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have to. You're choosing to because of the optics. That's what it boils down to. They're choosing to because of the optics. That's really it. It is just that. Been happening. If I wasn't running, they wouldn't be happening. So it's a sad day in our country in many respects. Uh, but the good day is that the appellate division was fair. It's a lot of money still, but the judge is corrupt, in my opinion. He's the most overturned judge. He's been overturned five times in this case alone. He ruled against me before he even knew anything about the case. He ruled against me. The whole case was all about damages, and there were no damages. And perhaps you'll get him to tell you about what took place in terms of a settlement negotiation, because those weren't the numbers he was discussing. Those weren't the numbers. It's a disgrace what's happening in our country. Does he even know what he's saying right now? Like, no, he wasn't overturned. Like, the, the appellate, he, I, Trump tried making the claim that, like the appeals court overturned uh, the fraudulent uh, conviction or whatever it was. The, I mean, you had six weeks of trial, right? Six weeks to determine how much money Trump was going to have to pay. You know, uh, <laughs> like, it was six, 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 six weeks. It's, it's just, it's kind of crazy. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Geek Prime asking how I'm doing. I'm doing good, man. I turned, I, my birthday's in an hour. So I turned 42 in an hour. Good old lucky number 42. And we have to get our country back and we're going to get our country back. That's what's going to happen. November 5th, I believe, will be the most important day in the history of our country. We'll get these people out of there and we'll seal up the borders and we'll, as I say, drill, baby, drill. We'll be drilling. We'll get energy costs down. We'll get rid of the ridiculous electric car mandate so nobody's ever heard of anything so foolish and so stupid and we'll bring we're gonna drill baby drill hasn't biden been drilling a lot um and whatever i mean like obviously we're not going to be be ready for an electric vehicle only country in the next like six years but it is an idea trying to get all those, um, you know, trying to trying to get some of those emissions down so we can actually save our fucking planet. Uh, there is no mandate. Uh, he, he's talking about California, I think, uh, where California um, is. Uh, I think they said by 2030 they want to have all vehicles electric. That's just I don't even see that being a possibility. Also here, the Boone, the Breakfast Club released 40 years ago. I feel old yet. Yeah. Well, the Breakfast Club was set. 40 years ago i don't know if it i don't yeah but it march 24th uh 1984 was uh was was when that happened yeah so i i, I yeah i do kind of feel i feel yes i do feel old i feel very old <laughs> it's just i do um you know i feel good but i feel old this is it's, it's a weird weird place crime back to law and order we're gonna 
get those words law and order back because our cities are are a disaster. If you want law and order, you better you best you best put on them handcuffs, Chief. Uh, greatly respect the decision of the appellate division, and we will abide by that. Uh, we'll put up the cash or bond very quickly, securities cash or bond, whatever it is. We'll put it up very quickly, and uh, we'll win the case. Uh, Todd, maybe I'll have Todd say a couple of words, and then I'll have uh, uh, any questions or anything you want to ask. Okay, Todd, wherever you may be, please. Thank you, President Trump. So, as we said in court today... Uh, former ex-president. Failed former ex-president. Free, and they can do whatever they want. Let's see. They go and fight for something that's not even a crime. They say at most of the game is right. not a date we should go to trial, and we're going to continue to fight. And if you read the Andy McCarthy article, or Jonathan Turley, or many of the legal, legals, I think almost every single one of them, that's not even a crime. We're being tried for something that's not even a crime. They say at most it's a misdemeanor, but there's no misdemeanor either. So we have violent criminals that are murdering people, killing people. We have drug dealers all over the place, and they go free, and they can do whatever they want. But they go after Trump with there's not even a crime. And did you see the number of people were there? You had Colangelo and behind him, and remember this, Colangelo was a DOJ guy. He's a Biden DOJ guy. Why is he in the Manhattan DA's office trying the case? That in itself is a conflict. He's in the Manhattan DA's office. Trying okay, he's just talking fucking nonsense at this point. But I mean, looking at everything, he looks, he looks and sounds tired. He's very tired. He's very fucking tired. Um, uh, let's see here. Hold on. Update Sean Pity. Okay. Uh, hold on. Uh, is that true? That that Diddy has fucking fled. Did Diddy? Did he fucking? Did Diddy flee? Uh, <laughs> they're call. Are they calling? They're calling him on Twitter the Diddler. It's pretty fucking funny. Um, that's pretty funny actually. <laughs> they're calling him the Diddler because that's actually uh, the Diddler is a serial killer that was never found in San Francisco who targeted gay men. Um, and so there's that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I'm looking on TMZ's Twitter account. The last thing they posted is apparently Haley Steinfeld's relationship with Josh Allen is starting to feel serious. Has anyone checked on RJ? Has anyone checked on RJ? Perhaps, uh, perhaps, uh, he has, uh, you know, we need to do we need to do a wellness check on RJ, finding out that Haley Steinfeld. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Did I can't find if Diddy actually uh, uh pieced out, man. So you're gonna have to fucking you're gonna have to show me a link, an actual an actual link. Uh, you know, I'll take I'll take Twitter link. If anyone's got a Twitter link, let me know. We'll bring it up. Cause that's some uh that's some shit. Right there, if that's true. Let me see. Trending. Diddy. Latest. Come on. Give me something good. Okay. Um, I'm trying to trying to find if anything is happening. So far, nothing. It's really, uh, uh, really, uh, really nothing right now. So you're going to have to fucking, yeah, you're, Eric, you're going to have to give me, um, something there, man. Now, let me check one more. Uh, okay. So here we go. Let me, let me, this is from three hours ago. Uh, Diddy was in, where was he? He was in Miami. All right. Page six has the story. Uh, send me a link. Send me a link rational. Well, I can look at this here. All right. Uh, I'll bring it up. Okay. So breaking, this is from three hours ago. New video shows Sean Diddy Combs pacing around Miami airport after federal agents raid both homes. Uh, watch his team. Okay, here's the new footage. He's just like, oh yeah, look at look at that walk, man. That walk ain't good. I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, Diddy. He's got, yeah, man. That dude, yeah. fucking, he's fucking cray, dude. He's gone. Um. All right. Let me. Okay, so. This is the uh, this is the the link right here, page six. Um, okay, Sean Diddy Combs private jet landed in the Caribbean while homes raided by Feds. All right, 
Uh, let's see. Diddy Combs private jet was reportedly on the ground in the Caribbean, known as Love Air LLC, to Antigua. Um, wait, hold on. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, reportedly on the ground in the Caribbean while Homeland Security raided several of his properties. TMZ tracked the I'll Be Missing You rapper's black Gulfstream 5, known as Love Air LLC, to Antigua Monday afternoon. Per the outlet, the plane left Los Angeles around 9 a.m. on Monday morning and headed straight for the Caribbean. It's unclear who was on board, but since TMZ later obtained a video of the rapper outside of a Miami Opa Laca, um, or Miami Opa Laca Executive Airport just after the raids, he couldn't have been on his private jet. According to NBC News, Homeland Security's official seized phones from Combs at the airport before he was scheduled to board a different jet and fly to the Bahamas for vacation. Law enforcement sources didn't reveal if he still went on the trip after getting stopped at the airport. Uh, reps for the rapper did not immediately um, respond. So, okay. So, basically... um what we're seeing here. So this raid comes on the heels of several lawsuits levied against the rapper, including multiple allegations of sexual assault and human trafficking. The bad boy for life rapper vehemently denied all accusations. Okay. Uh, do we have, hold on. Did I click the wrong button on that one? I might have, I want to see, um, uh, let's see. Is this the right article? Or is this a different article, different article. Hold on. I just want to see. Okay. So yeah, there we go. Okay, so Sean Diddy Combs accused of gang raping 17-year-old schoolgirl in fourth sexual assault claim. Oh, my God. When was this article posted? This is from December 6th of last year. Wow, that was that long ago. I feel like it was so much closer. Um, seems just like yesterday, kind of. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lie. Clearly, he isn't going anywhere. He could have stopped because he was, he couldn't be stopped because he was a bad boy for life. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus. Um, all right. So Sean Diddy Combs has been accused of gang raping and sex trafficking a 17 year old schoolgirl when she was in the 11th grade, according to a new court filing. It's the fourth accusation or allegation of sexual assault made against the billionaire music mogul in three weeks and comes after he settled the first suit with his ex singer Cassie for an undisclosed sum after she accused him of years of rape and abuse. Minutes after it was filed, Combs issued a furious denial. Um, okay, so he's saying no, right? But his my his body is telling him yeah. Sorry, that's just you know I had to do it. Had to do an R. Kelly joke there. Um, says here that the latest accuser alleges that when she was seventeen, she was drugged and raped by Combs, his longtime lieutenant Harv Pierre or Harvey Pierre, and another yet un unnamed uh, man back in two thousand three. The filing includes a photo of the accuser referred to as Miss Doe sitting on the lap of Combs, then age 34, and alleges the assault left her suffering significant emotional distress and feels of shame that have plagued her life and personal relationships for 20 years. Doe claims in the lawsuit that she was in high school out with friends at a club in Detroit, Michigan in 2003 when she first met Pierre, the former president of Combs Bad Boy Entertainment, who told her she was hot and insisted that his best friend and brother Combs would love to meet her. Uh, so she was clearly at his house, and she's wearing Dolce & Gabbana shirts and whatever, right? Uh, she then called Combs, she claimed, or he then called Combs, she claimed, and put her on the phone with the star, who told her she should fly to New York City with Pierre. She agreed to this, but alleges that she was forced to give Pierre, who had been smoking crack cocaine, oral sex before they boarded a flight to Teterboro Airport in New Jersey. Upon landing, she was taken to da uh, to Daddy's house recording studio, owned by Combs and Bad Boy, where she was plied with drugs and alcohol by Combs, Pierre, and a third assailant, assailant who had flown there with Pierre. Uh, the filing reads, as the night wore on, the 17-year-old Miss Doe became more and more inebriated, eventually to the point where she could not possibly have consented to having sex with anyone, much less someone twice her age. But what is the age of consent laws in, uh, in there? I, not that I'm disagreeing but it's like i feel like that should be added into this like i feel like statutory should be added into this i'm just saying it claims that she was raped first in the bathroom at the studios by combs who removed her underwear and forced himself on her as she hung over a sink 
While at the studio, Doe is then gang raped by Mr. Combs and the third assailant and Mr. Pierre in that order. While Mr. Combs was raping Miss Doe, he complained that he could not get off unless she pinched his nipples as hard as she could. <laughs> like, yo, baby, I can't come to you. Give me a purple nurple. Uh, I mean, yeah, I can see it. The filing alleges that Mr. Combs then watched on his third assailant, who Miss Doe had not even realized had begun to have sex with her, raped Miss Doe as she told them to stop. Uh, after the third assailant was finished, Mr. Pierre took his turn at raping Miss Doe and then violently forced her to give him oral sex, during which Miss Doe was choking and struggling to breathe. When Mr. Pierre finished, he left Miss Doe in the bathroom alone. Miss Doe fell to the fetal position and lay on the floor. Her vagina was in pain. That's terrible. That is terrible. The accuser says she could barely stand up following the alleged gang rape and was helped to a car, which took her back to the airport. She says that she has a limited recollection of getting back to Michigan. Okay, so here's what's going to end up being. If she has a limited recollection of getting back to Michigan, but she remembers all of those details, that is something that the, def that the defense is going to use. In New York, Age can say, but they were in, they were in Jersey. They were in Jersey. Hey, Henry, I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. Um, apparently the island that, that he, yeah, but we don't know if he actually went to the island or not. We have no idea if he went there. Um, but I'm telling you guys right now, like the, the fact that the, um, that she says she admitted to having limited recollection of getting home, but she recommend, but she remembers everything else that happened. That's going to be something that gets fucking brought, brought up a lot, but either way. Uh, Diddy, Diddy is done. I would argue, uh, the dillionaire is, uh, is down and out. He's going to be, he's out. He's out. Um, that's horrible. But what the fuck you thinking? Getting on a private jet with a rapper's brother. I think she might've already been drunk, right? I think she might've already been drunk. You know what I'm saying? Is like, that's kind of the whole point is like, she was like, I want to go meet Diddy. And then that guy's like, yo, you got to give me, you got to give me, um, uh, you got to give me head. And she's like, okay. And then does that and then gets on there, gets probably more fucked up, flies from Detroit to Jersey, which really isn't that far, and then goes and t and then does all this shit. So I have no fucking idea, man. I have like no idea. Either way, that's some terrible shit, though. Uh, Shifty Gizmir says Jeff Carlin was fired from the Goldbergs because he said his vagina it was in pain. Vagina pain is no joke. To be fair, he did say the word vagina a lot, from what I remember, or something equivalent to that. So. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Either way, that's fucking terrible. Um, that's pretty bad. One of the things I wanted to kind of laugh at today, and this is just weird. I don't understand it. Um, is uh, this this woman here? Her name is Emma Dixon, right? D i c k s o n, uh, from the UK. Says I let my son see me in the shower. I did. It's no big deal, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's not exactly British, but still. Um, okay, so having your young child see you naked in the shower is not a big deal, according to this mom. Emma Dickinson has insisted she has no problem allowing her four-year-old son, Teddy, to walk into the bathroom while she's having a shower, and she believes it's important to be comfortable around, around each other, especially while her son is young. The 40-year-old mom said she won't allow Teddy to see her naked forever, but she argued it's not a big deal for the time being. So, okay. All right, like, so she's 40, the kid's four. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, there's, that's, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think you should do it. Like, like, I took a shower with my kids, like, one time to show them what a shower was like, and I was wearing swim trunks. You know what I mean? Like, I've never, ever, 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 ever done that. Um, but I have friends of mine who are single parents who have showered with their children. Because like that was like when they were younger and like they they just were doing it because it's like not a sexual thing. But it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird, you know. So she says here, the woman from Castle Rock, London, Londonderry, admitted some people have told her it's inappropriate for her son to see her naked, but she said she doesn't want her son to grow up believing he has to be ashamed of his body or to think negatively of anybody else's. And then like that's that's fine, I guess, you know. Uh, I understand the, the, the methodology there. I can't say I agree with the, with, 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 with what she's doing, but I understand why she says it's about letting kids take the lead on what they feel they're comfortable with. I think it's sad when people make it out that it's inappropriate. When your kid is four, it's not a big deal. 
I'd probably start insisting on locking the door at the end of this year when he starts school. Kids come out with stuff. I wouldn't want him coming out with something in the classroom about how mommy is naked all the time. Uh, it's important to be comfortable. Around, I mean, yeah, true. You don't want that. It's important to be comfortable around each other's uh, as kids are only innocent for such a short time now. They grow up so fast. I don't want him to start feeling ashamed of his body until he reaches the age where he wants more privacy. Um, you, you honestly, wait, you expected me to be for this? No, I, no, I trust me. I have not been naked around my children. Uh, my, their mother has not been naked around them. We don't do that. I can understand, but I have friends of mine who have given the circumstances. You know what I mean? It's like, I think like up until like the age of three, it's probably more about okay. But like when your kid's four, they're asking questions. If your kid walks in and sees you naked, it's going to be like, mommy, what, what is that right there? What, why, why you got a fur burger? What's a fur burger, mommy? Why is it like, it's really big. It's like, a, it's like, a, it's like an Afro mommy down there. Why is a fur burger? It's like a jumbo sized extra fur burger. <laughs> like if he starts talking about like, you know, all that kind of crap, it's like, it, it, you know, it's like one of the weird things, like Andy McDowell, by the way, the actress Andy McDowell admitted back in the 90s that she's like always naked at her house. Like nudity is no big deal. It's like not a sexual thing, right? And so that ends up becoming the question, right? That ends up becoming the question is like, at what, is nudity acceptable if it's not sexual? That's a question. Is nudity acceptable if it's not sexual? Now, a number of years ago, I went, this is like 08, I think like 07 or 08. I went to a nude beach and it was one of the most chill experiences I've ever had, right? No one cares. No one is judging you, all right? Like no one is judging you because there's no sexuality there. When you're, you don't go to a nude beach to like ogle women and get a boner and like wank it, you know what I'm saying? But there is definitely, you know, like there's the Oedipus aspect of this as well. Yeah. Is nudity art? I think nudity can be art, but it also depends on what kind of nudity it is. You know what I mean? Like if it's like, if it's, if it's a naked woman or a naked man that's not engaged in sexual activity, I think that can be considered art. Like Michelangelo's David is art. Um, Aphrodite is, is art, right? Things like that. Um, or not Aphrodite, the Venus de Milo, sorry. Venus de Milo is art. There, there are elements of it though. Again, it's sexual in nature, right? If you, if you're not, if it's, if it's not sexual, that's kind of a weird thing. Uh, Rodimus here, <laughs> mummy, you look like a 17th porn, 70s porn star down there, mummy. John Holmes would be quite impressed. He would. Yeah. Yeah. I've read that online. Yeah. I'm only full, but I've got a fucking, I've got a TikTok, mummy, mummy. How do you feel about, about manscaped.com as a possible sponsor, mummy? You need it, mummy. You really do. Um, a uh, nude McDowell roguelike Southern accent. Jeez, dude, she was, uh, she, I think she, I think she admitted that on like the Rosie O'Donnell show from back in the day, like, like legitimately back in the day. You should check that out. Command unit here says, depends if she's a single mother and her culture. Yeah. I mean, I guess so, but it's like, this is like a white lady in fucking Britain, you know? Um, all right. So Emma explained that she has no problem with her husband, Dougie. 35 or their son seeing her in the shower. Well, your husband is seeing you naked in the shower is nothing new. If your husband has filled you full of goo and you have had a offspring with that person, he has clearly seen you naked on more than one occasion. Uh, the mom said that like most parents, she used to bathe with their son when he was a newborn. And although she no longer does this, she doesn't see the issue with him wandering into the bathroom while she's in there. Now, if now again, here's the thing. Is she in the bathroom and she's naked and he walks in? That's one thing. If she's around the house, if she's strutting it, flaunting it around the house, if she's got like fucking curling rolls in her, in her pubes, because it's such a big bush, um, you know, there's that Mal Oh, 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 Malkova. Are you talking about the video of Mia Malkova giving a blow job to that guy in front of her mom? Is that the one you're talking about? I know that one. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, it's not all great. Salt and pepper. Oh, it's a fur burger with salt and pepper. There you go. Or the fries. Um, but anyway, it's, I don't think you should, I just don't think you should like actively like talk up, like you should, you shouldn't actively do it. Like locking your bathroom door is fine. I lock my bathroom door. My girlfriend locks the bathroom door. You know, the, the children have privacy, right? Like, you know, um, all that stuff. It's just, it's all that. Like you just do it. It's fine. Like, it's just, it, it's not the end of the world. Right. But you just know, I don't think you should, I don't think you should be like, you should be like, yeah, no, like, I mean, it's so weird. I just don't, yeah, it's weird to me. 
Um, all right. So uh, she added that children at Teddy's age are often, uh, they still run around naked and she doesn't want to force her child to grow up too quickly. Instead, there will be an organic shift to allow both Teddy and his parents to have more privacy when he gets older. Yeah, no shit. Like, no shit. Like, you're going to want your kid to have privacy. Um, you know, but what I want to know is like, why, like, why did she go public with this? Like, I ran, ran across this on like weird news, you know, she's just all like, I do like her husband's shirt though. Uh, middle earth hiking club. That's pretty cool. Um, her and her, and her husband looks a little bit like a hooligan. So like, you know, anyone's talking shit is going to end up fucking getting it either way, man. It's just, it's kind of like, I understand her reasoning of it, but I still, in my mind, in my, in my brain, I think it's probably for the best to not have that be a thing, right? Like, like, you know, you want to set boundaries. You always want to set boundaries around like your kids. You, you always do, you know, and when they get to that point where they understand that you can have them understand that you, that you can have them understand a hundred percent that you want there to be boundaries. And that's perfectly fucking fine. That's perfectly fine to do that. The, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, it's just like her way of going about it is kind of weird in my mind. It's kind of weird. But hey, listen, naked moms, right? Naked moms. <laughs> here's a here's one I just read about today. SWAT team raids innocent family over stolen AirPods dropped on their street. This you got to love this, guys. You've absolutely got to love this. Um it is is a SWAT like I've been swatted so I know what it's like. But why would the why would the SWAT team raid somebody over stolen AirPods? Like they're like 150 bucks. I don't even freaking know, but look at all the SWAT guys. Oh my God. All right. So here we go. A pair of AirPods and what lawyers say have some shoddy was some shoddy police work resulted in an innocent middle class Ferguson family having their front door smashed in by the St. Louis County SWAT team last May. Around 6 30 p.m. on May 26th, the uh, Brittany Shamily was home with wait, hold on. The Shamily family? <laughs> That's fucking great. The Shamily is this in Ferguson, like Missouri? Right, St. Louis, yeah. This is this is uh this this is the same place where Mike Brown got 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 fucking ten years ago. Um, anyway, uh, around six thirty p.m. on May twenty six, the Shamily family uh, was home with their children, including an infant, when police use a battering ram to bust in her front door. What the hell is going on? She screamed, terrified for herself and her family. I got a three month old baby. Body camera footage from the scene shows Shamily came, sorry, I just can't get over that last name, came to the front door with her hands up, her face a mix of fright and utter confusion at the heavily armored folly making its way from her front porch into her foyer. Oh my God, she says. <laughs> Who fucking wrote this? Her foyer? <laughs> it's like a fucking double wide, dude. What the fuck? The SWAT team was looking for guns and other materials related to a carjacking that had occurred that morning. The search didn't turn up any of that, though it has led to a lawsuit. Uh, file Friday. Sorry. That may lead to a better public understanding of how county police decide whether to deploy a SWAT team or serve a search warrant in a less menacing manner. Because in this case, the police clearly made the wrong call. The carjacking that led to the raid happened 12 hours prior, 16 miles away in South County. Around 6 a.m., two brothers were leaving the Waffle House on Telegraph Road near ja Jefferson Barracks when a group of six pulled up outside the restaurant and carjacked them. Two of the carjackers took off in the brothers' Dodge Charger, while the other four fled the scene in their own vehicles. St. Louis County police were summoned to the scene as part of their investigation. A friend of the carjacked brothers told police that his AirPods were in the stolen car and that he could track them using the Find My application feature that lets users locate one Apple device using another. See, that's cool. Those are, those are great. Those are great if you're tracking cheaters, by the way. Uh, police did just that. According to the lawsuit, the app showed the AirPods to be at the Shamley house. There's just one problem. Find my is not that accurate, says the family family's lawyer. I, I know it's Bevis. I know it's Bevis, but come on, let's be fair. You first say, you first see this and what do you think, man? Beavis. 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 Uh, hold on here. Spherical Man says, you're not going to believe this, but you share a birthday with the Catch Me Outside. How about that? Really? Really? A fucking Bad Bunny. Or not Bad Bunny. Uh, bad Baby. That's her name. Danielle Bergoli, I think. God, why the fuck do I know that? 
Holy shit, why do I know that? Uh, anyway, here. Um, yet, uh, based on the Find My result, an officer signed an application for a search warrant saying that he had reason to believe that firearms, ammunition, holsters, and other firearm-related material were inside. That evening, police showed up in full combat gear carrying a battery ram. Shamily's husband, Lindell Briscoe. That's a cool name, by the way. That sounds like an old school fucking like sheriff. Right? I'm Lindale Briscoe and I'm the sheriff of these parts. You're going to come with me alive or dead. Preferably dead because you won't be complaining at that point. That's a cool name. Lindell Briscoe sounds like a fucking badass. Shamily family, on the other hand, seem that doesn't seem so cool. But Lindell Briscoe, that's a fucking that's a manly name. That's a manly fucking name. Uh, was napping in his work truck in the driveway with two other couples' children. Why was he napping in his work truck with t- work truck with two of the cu- with two of the couple's other children? You know, you know what it probably is. To be fair, this happened in May. Uh, you know, I'm going, you know what I'm going to assume. It's AC. They had the AC. Probably why. Inside the house, body camera footage showed one of the officers in full SWAT gear uh, pick uh, pick up the crying three month old and carry the baby outside. Shamily asked if she could sit down and was told no. That's fucked up, man. Don't, don't touch the kid. Let the mom touch the kid. What the hell's wrong with you? While the family was detained outside, the SWAT team ransacked their house. The lawsuit says one SWAT team member punched a basketball-sized hole in the drywall. <laughs> Another broke through a drop ceiling. <laughs> they turned over drawers and left what had been an orderly house into disarray. After this had gone on for more than an hour, the AirPods were located on the street outside of the family's home. It later came to light that one of Shamily and Briscoe's daughters saw what was likely the stolen charger careening through their neighborhood a little before 7 a.m. Uh, the vehicle later crashed uh, about six miles from that family home. It stands to reason that someone in the charger tossed the pair of stolen AirPods onto the street in the vicinity of the quiet house that the police later bust into. My God, man. Like, they fucking tracked it. Okay, so they tracked it. Well, and so no, so they, did, they didn't track the AirPod via Wi-Fi. Because it, unless, unless the AirPods, and I have no experience with AirPods, but unless AirPods had, um, what's the word I want to use? Unless they had like an open Wi-Fi signal, like I, I don't think, I, I don't think they do. I don't, I just don't think that they do. Uh, Music Man says, I met a lady named Mariah Goodnight. That's a cool name. That is a cool name. The Adventures of Lindell Briscoe Jr. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Um, I mean, look, like. You know, okay, so they're upset about the cops using SWAT tactics and everything else, right? Now, if these guys who who robbed uh, this house, uh, robbed this car, carjacked, had guns, and had maybe flashed a bunch of firearms, I can understand that. But there's no reason why these cops should have thought that this little house would have had it without doing some, without doing a preliminary investigation. You know what I mean? So it says here, the overwhelming force SWAT team's employee is designed to ensure officer safety, which Shock acknowledges is important, but he says that this needs to be balanced by people's rights against unreasonable searches and seizures, saying we're not in Afghanistan or Gaza. He hopes that the course of the lawsuit, um, in, in the course of the lawsuit to better understand how county police decide when to deploy a SWAT team. I would hope so. I would hope so that, that they would do that. Uh, let's see here. A few months later, the door still busted. The family's landlord fixed it instead. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. The day after the errant raid, Briscoe emailed one of the detectives inquiring about the department repairing his broken door. The detective agreed that the County would fix it for them. Exact. Yeah. The thing is you have to do it yourself and then you have to build a County. When I ended up getting, um, when I ended up get when I got swatted, uh, the cops wanted to search my place and I was like, I, and then um, they ended up uh, with like they tracked the fuck ton of dirt in. So absolutely, I, I completely understand that. So here's what we're going to do. I need to uh, there's some more stories I want to get to. There's some more stories I want to get to, but I got to go to the bathroom real bad. It's time I got to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have ourselves a little break and I'm going to play uh, uh, something. It's it's almost midnight. It's 1130 half hour till I turn half hour till I turn 42 and we're going to check out. This Pookie Park AI generated 1950s TV commercial for a creepy puppet theme park. Uh, Cause I wanna scare you people, it being so late in the evening. I wanna scare you so I can go uh, quickly use the restroom as well as get something to drink. I'll be right back. So uh, enjoy the show. Hello. 
Ladies and gentlemen, step right up and experience the wonder of Pookie Park. At Pookie Park, you'll enter a world of imagination and adventure like never before. And oh, what a magical place it is. Meet our friendly puppet pals. Our colossal Howdy Doody type puppets roam freely and are here to make your visit unforgettable. You can play with them, have a chat, and they'll even sit with you while you enjoy a tasty treat. But beware, when the park siren sounds, it's time to run for your lives. The chase is on. Excitement is at a whole new level when the puppets start chasing you. Stay on your toes, because if they catch you, you might just become one of them forever. Frozen in puppet glory, living an eternal life of strings and wooden whimsy. It's a transformation like no other. But don't let that frighten you. It's all in the spirit of fun. Just look at the joy on their faces as they run for dear life from these massive marionettes. You can hear the laughter and the screams of sheer terror. Oh yes, they're big. They're a tad bit intimidating, but that's the magic of Pookie Park. Our customers can't help but return, no matter how frightened they may be. It's a unique experience that brings families closer together. Quite literally, we've had countless customers confess that they've never felt so attached. Join the puppet parade and become part of the spectacle that draws thousands of visitors from far and wide. But folks, be ready, because when that siren wails, it's time to move. Can you outrun the lively puppets and escape their magic? It's a one-of-a-kind adventure that'll have your heart racing, but don't let the fear deter you. The thrill of escape is what makes Pookie Park so memorable. Pookie Park isn't just about puppets. We've got thrilling rides, delicious snacks, and fun games for the kids, ensuring endless laughter and joy. And when you're thirsty, our top-notch soda jerks are ready to serve you the finest refreshments, perfect for quenching your thirst after a day of excitement. There's something for everyone. Embrace the adventure and face your fears. It could be a lifetime of strings attached, but who could resist such a captivating adventure? Gather your family and join us at Pookie Park, where the magic of imagination meets the thrill of escape. Make memories you'll cherish for a lifetime. Oh, let's be real. Let's be absolutely real. You're not leaving Pookie Park. Oh, no, folks. You're not leaving Pookie. We know it. We absolutely know that there is no way that any one of us is going to be leaving Pookie Park. <laughs> but... Speaking of AI, because I want to keep on the subject of that, right? That was pretty interesting. Uh, you gotta love it here. This is so today we had a we had a, a thing. I, I actually I'm getting a little bit of ahead of myself here. Uh so uh OpenAI dropped this new blog saying Sora first impressions, we gained valuable feedback from the creative community helping us to improve our model. And they went to a bunch of different people that made a bunch of different short films. Uh and and the one I thought, you know, that this was the coolest one right here. This one called Airhead. And it's from a group called Shy Kids, which is out of uh, Canada. And uh, this is um, this is interesting. Again, when I, when I talk about AI being the future, like the the future filmmaking, um, it's it's wild. It's it's absolutely uh, it's absolutely wild. Oops. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. There we go. Well, they say everyone has something unique about them, something that sets them apart. It's just in my case, you know, it's quite obvious what that thing is. I am literally filled with hot air. Yeah, living like this has its challenges. Uh, windy days, for one, are particularly troublesome. Or oh, there was a one time my girlfriend insisted I go to the cactus store to get my Uncle Jerry a wedding present. Ugh. What do I love most about my predicament? the perspective it gives me you know i get to see the world differently i float above the mundane and the ordinary i see things a different way from everyone else yeah and i feel like it's because of that perspective i'm reminded every day that life is fragile we're all just a pinprick away from deflation 
So I try to live life with a lightness, a buoyancy, a joie de vivre. I got a lot of ideas keeping this thing full. With any luck, I'll find a way to share them with everyone else. So that was made using Sora. That was made using the uh, the technology, you know, that we've seen come out from that. And it looks awesome. Like, look, it's an interesting story. Balloon head guy. Like, holy shit. Like, what the fuck am I looking at here? You know, like, what what exactly is this thing? And it is. It's it's very much just like, holy shit, right? It's um, it's 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 fucking wild. Um, but, uh, one of the things uh, I like about it is that I do feel that it will ultimately democratize in many ways, the ability for, for people, uh, to be able to like make anything they want, right? It's, it's going to be very wild and very interesting to see where it all goes in the next couple of years. Um, but r- right now we're in the very early phases of it. Uh, rational asking, how does he eat? Probably through his anus. Uh, it's just, it's Pollyanna as fuck. What the fuck does that even mean? It's like was it just like saccharine sweet. It was an inter- it was a it was a cool little short film. But it shows you that there's like you can tell it's AI, but there is also some fucking consistency there. And I want to see uh more of what they're going to be able to do with it as time goes on. Um because that is of course what we what we need is it for to for for people to experiment with it to show its limits. And I think to me that's going to be well. So Spherical Man here brings up this Melanie Mac review of x-men 97 now i've only seen the first episode so i don't know what she's gonna say about that but i have a feeling i can tell what she's gonna fucking say um so yeah like you know let's watch a few minutes of uh of you know of manic pixie dream girl times fucking sociopath and this, not sorry, sorry. Shifty Gism said that, not spherical man. I get you too fucking mixed up. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. All right, uh, let's see what she says here. It's not good. She's wrong. I I don't know if she's she's probably gonna spoil it, Music Man. To be to be fair, but it's there's really not much there like that you can get spoiled on. I'm being honest. It's like it, it, if you've seen the original show, you know the character motivations. It's actually pretty decent. Like it's really good. Um. Like I was really enjoying it. Like I, I, I thought it was pretty fucking amazing. So, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll check out this. So if you don't want to come back in a couple of minutes, uh, I'm not going to do the full fourteen twenty five. I, I'm pretty sure that I'm only going to be able to get maybe a minute in before I, I would rather you know kill myself. So, uh, because she's so vapid, so, so vapid two episodes of x-men 97 so that you don't have to or you got i just by the way that line there right i just watched the two first episodes of x-men 97 so you don't have to what the such a fucking old lame sentence to say it's something you say as a gag as a gag right you'd be like hey i just watched the first two episodes of fucking x-men 97 so you don't have to like you say it with some oomph some pizzazz some fucking energy you have to you fucking have to but she's like this so meek so meek i just watched the first two episodes of x-men 97 so you don't have to speak up woman command attention this is not already we're like we're fucking five seconds in and I'm, and I'm already loading the fucking double barrel shotgun to blow my own brains out. I mean, you can if you want. It's up to you. But I'll just say I don't think it's that great. <laughs> I think that it could. Okay, bam. Says right off the bat. We're fucking 14 seconds in. You can watch it if you want. Okay, cool. I don't think it's that great. What does she do? She brings up bounding into comics. And she's obviously going to be talking about episode number two. All right, she's going to be talking about episode number two. Okay. Uh, obviously, here, look at the title of that article. Hollywood director argues X-Men 97 chose to adapt the trial of Magneto in order to take a swing at the MAGA crowd. Yeah, most likely. Because the fucking largest threat we have to our country in regards to society at this point in time aren't the queers, the gays, or the fucking migrants. No, it's the fucking MAGA people that we know are uh, fucking 
violent prone sociopaths. We know this. Anyway, uh, all right. Could have been worse, but I don't think it's that great. And I want to highlight some points too from this article, which I will momentarily. But okay, notice how often I just says right after uh, playing with the hair, right? What is up with that? Like, I just I have to play with my hair so people know that I'm a woman, and it's it's just it's there. Um, you don't like it, but you also don't start off by talking about what you don't like. You know what I mean? Like, so that's the whole thing here. We're 23 seconds in, and she's not even talking about what she doesn't like about something, right? Now, you guys all know me. Like, I'll talk about what I like about shit. Um, but uh, let's, uh, yeah, Spherical Manor says, I bet she does the X-Men is woke route, most likely. Um, let's see. This is for five. Thank you, buddy. He says, it's funny how the original X-Men animated show shared the same writers as Exo Squad. I mean, they're both well done. And a lot of, a lot of people worked on the same shit back in the day. So it's, it's cool. Um, it's a, it's the show she cares. Exactly. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Plushy. Uh, and this is why I enjoy VTubers. I mean, to be fair, VTubers are more humanistic than Melanie Mac. Melanie Mac could be replaced by a balloon wearing a wig on a fucking stick. And you would just get the same kind of squeaky fucking, you know, nothing that she says. Um, again, it's just like token, 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 token. Just to kind of give a quick rundown. I do think that the characters, their personalities and all that are pretty accurate. I don't think they're as good as the 90s, the actual 90s versions version. But I do think that they still mainly stuck with the characters overall recognizability right so we didn't get any overt race swaps gender swaps or anything like that not yet at least it's not too late i mean despite morph being called non-binary in some of the interviews or whatever and by the way morph is a total uh if you didn't catch what i said um yeah uh he's fruity so <laughs> Wow. Again, this isn't necessarily. Wow. She had to beep herself while she dropped the F slur. Jesus Christ. Rational. It's a continuation of the 90s show. Why would they race? Exactly. Exactly. Rod, Mr. Matt will be the silver surfer, the AI overlords. Goddamn right, motherfucker. Secure my place in the fucking hierarchy. Ensure my survival and the survival of my children. I'm coming for your art to bring about the, the, the eater of worlds. The method of your destruction. The community here says, please stop the video. It's, oh no, we're only a minute and a half in and it's fucking terrible. It's we're a minute and a half in and it's fucking terrible. This woman, look, I'm I'm not gonna I'm I'm glad she doesn't have children. If she if if she was populating uh the world, I I would definitely be fearful. You know. Anyway. It's super overt, but in his voice it's just super effeminate sounding and he does try to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with wolverine i do anticipate that getting pretty gay um so i will say that which is stupid but there definitely are some woke undertones let's not pretend there aren't on episode two okay 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 the 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 uh, I, again the lack of comprehension is w w wonderfully amazing there's some, you know, there's like some underground like woke towns in the, in, in the, in the show. Yeah. The show is literally about social justice. The show is literally about otherism and racism and how racism and segregation is bad. Right. That's le like legitimately what it is. It's woke as fuck. All right. Like it is woke as fuck. It, it's, it's fucking dripping, dripping with soy. Okay. Fucking when, when, uh, <laughs> When Scott Summers uh, fucking nutted in um, in in Jean Grey, it wasn't it wasn't sperm. It was highly potent soy, is what it was. Okay, that's what it is. Dripping with it. All right, ESG funded the show. BlackRock and Vanguard were personally overseeing every aspect of the show. Jesus, these fucking people are just. I know, I know, I know. Spherical man, their relationship was like that in the original. I know. 
rational. I know that the X-Men comics were an allegory for the civil rights movement, yeah, as well as the fucking Holocaust. There's a lot of things in play there. But you can tell that she doesn't understand. There's an empty hamster wheel running in there right now. I don't know if the hamster is on a break or if it's dead. But she is like, my God, vapid. Who especially, they lay it on pretty thick. Now, on the first episode, not as much. Uh, but on the second one, certainly. I will say, too, that... This cartoon as a whole, even the woke elements aside, it lacks the heart. I just don't think that modern writers are as good as older writers used to be. They're just not. A lot of- You were a child, Melanie. You were a child watching a show about people who can fly or shoot fucking fireworks out of their hands magically. You, you were watching a show that was an allegory for the civil rights movement. You were watching a show that was designed to entertain you as a child while also uh, delivering uh, a message of hope for the future, never mind discussing some of the greater woes of, of our culture and our society and, our, and our, our history and our wrongdoing. You were a child. You're not expected to understand these things when you're a child. So of course you think that the writers back then were better because you didn't understand the nuance of which you were engaging. You, you just don't like you're, you're, you're dumb, Melanie, you're dumb and you still wear a choker. I don't understand that girl. You're not in fucking high school anymore. Of the stuff that we see just doesn't have the same heart to it. And I think because it, it's just more vapid, if you will. Oh, she used the word, folks. Uh, inappropriately, I might add. Uh, if she says that it's vapid, but doesn't provide any specific examples as to why it's vapid, she, she, she's just limp, literally pulling the word out of something she heard somebody smarter say. And that's what it really feels like here. Not to mention the animation looks like it's made with flash or something. It just, it, it like Okay, I'll say this. I don't like Gambit's design, but other than that, it's fine. Acts the soul of the 90s cartoon of X-Men. Um, what's, your, what's your favorite episode of the 90s cartoon of X-Men, Melanie? Who's your favorite character in the 90s cartoon, Melanie? What, what did you love about the show, Melanie? What, what was your favorite story arc, Melanie? Who was your favorite side character, Melanie? Did you lose your shit when Spider-Man crossed over into the X-Men, Melanie? Or when the X-Men crossed over into Spider-Man, Melanie? What was your favorite moment from that episode, Melanie? <laughs> right? You gotta fucking, you gotta wonder about that. Rodimus, I don't think we're gonna get another Trump term. I just don't think it's gonna happen. What, I don't like the crop top? I don't think there's much there to work with, to be honest with you. I don't care. God, you guys are fucking, sim you guys are simping over Melanie. Go to her subreddit and find the fucking AI scantily clad images, rub one out and come back. All right. She never watched it. I agree. I agree. Uh, have I seen the AI images of Henry Cavill as Magneto? I haven't, but I kind of want to. Um, I, you guys are so fucking weird. You guys are so horny. You guys are so fucking horny right now. See your crop tops, see your fucking earrings. Oh my God, I'm going to come. Jesus Christ. You're talking about you know, Gambit in the crop top. I didn't know. I didn't like, it's not the, not the crop top that bothers me. It's like Gambit's face looks like really like detailed. Like they, they lessen the detail on it. I don't know. I, I was also watching it on a tablet. So there's that. Um, I'm not worried about that shit. Uh, okay. So I just got confused, but either way, shifty gives him go rub one out and come back, buddy. That's the thing. Go rub one out and come back. That being said, let's just, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the undertones. Some of the things that I noticed on the second episode that I felt was a lot more woke pandering. Uh, <laughs> okay, we're two, we're three minutes so in. So for certain, and which I'll read a little more on here uh, from Bounding into Comics. Uh, she never saw the episode. She never watched it. She never watched it, right? She saw the trailer. She knew about Morph. Uh, that's the only thing she has talked about as being from the first episode, right? She's not three minutes in, three minutes, one second out of a 14 minute, 25 second video. She has not mentioned any other key detail 
outside of Morph wanting to talk to Wolverine. Like, that's it. And there's only, like, I think one or two shots. Like, there's, like, one scene in particular with Morph and Wolverine. And they're talking about Jean Grey. You know what I mean? So it's like, she's not mentioning any. I don't think she watched this. I don't, I literally don't think she did. Isn't she? No, no. She's not the one that didn't read Isom. But, like, I guarantee you at this point in time, she. I don't think she watched X-Men 97. So... Hollywood director argues X-Men 97 chose to adapt the trial of Magneto in order to take a swing at the MAGA crowd. I definitely did feel like there was some swings being made at the MAGA crowd. All that stuff. Not even just MAGA. Why do they consider everybody who's not on board with woke ideology MAGA? That's just odd to me. Uh, because that's because right now the people that are largely the biggest group, the vocal minority against that minority are people who like to wear very starched red caps, maybe with a little bit of a temple at the top. You know what I mean? It's so fucking, it's just like, those are the people that are actively trying to destroy democracy. That's why they're being mocked. And she's like, I don't understand it. I just don't get, we're three and a half minutes in, still has not provided an example. I, I'm waiting for a prime example. It's not, always the case but i think the overall message that we're getting is definitely trying to take a swing at anybody who's not on board with woke ideology they're definitely x-men is woke ideology to like the nth degree so you could kind of see what they're going for with that one right it's like we're here we're queer meaning different get used to it and she's like i don't i don't i don't know what that means the the, the gays are doing something uh, let's see. I also don't find visible tattoos attractive. Hidden tattoos are hot as fuck though. I mean, I don't like sleeves on in general. I don't like sleeves. I don't, I don't like, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think skin is beautiful to be honest with you. I just think skin in general is pretty. Um, I'm not a big tattoo person. Tattoos actually kind of turn me off to be honest with you. Trying to insert, uh, this oppression. Hey, we're oppressed. We need affirmation. This, that, and the other type message and what you'll see with, you know, there was a, a fight scene, for example, and one of the humans was like, hey, humans have problems too. You don't see us whining about it. I hate that you whine about it and I hate you. And that, that to me definitely felt like a jab at people who are not. That, that's, that's literally a jab at her. That's like legitimately a jab at her. Is I don't like, like, I have problems too, okay? I'm a white woman. Obviously, white women suffer the greatest in society. I mean, like, I have to wear this choker at the age of 40 for people to identify that I am an oppressed white woman. I don't need to hear about your oppression, the systemic racism that's happened over centuries in this country. I don't need to hear about that. Like, it's literally aimed at her. <laughs> yeah, Rodimus, Rodimus. Yeah, Melanie Mack is like almost 40. Um, how old is Melanie Mack? Yeah. Uh, Melanie Mack is uh, estimated, estimated, estimated to be 37 years old. I t I'm 42 in six minutes. All right. Wait, is this fucking show about me? Exactly. Her choker is heretical. She looks way younger. Yeah, it's the makeup. It's the hair. It's the way she it's the way she dresses. It's the way that she she's got the eyelashes. The way she looks like a like an anemic version of shoe on head. It's just it's really terrible, guys. It's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> it's just, it's like legitimately like what the fuck? This is terrible shit here not affirming for example uh the the victim mindset with people that they're trying to push the whole like oh let's make women and and black people victims right or the what? alphabet community oh we need affirmation oh we're victims constant victim mentality and so whenever people push back and say hey everybody has problems we're not whining about it we're not playing victim that's what they're saying. They're not saying. Hasn't she complained about like Christians being oppressed in this country? 
right? Like, hasn't she complained? What I don't get again, she's got that cross on her neck that she loves so much, and she's calling people the F slur and she's judging other ones. Uh, she one head is like uh, early 30s, early 30s, but mutants are a flipping minority. I know, I know. So she thinks the villains are right. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she gets paid. She gets ad rev. She gets ad rev. I, and I'm sure she has like, no, she's also got a, a Patreon, I think, right? She does like a Bible study thing, I think. I don't know. I only know a little bit. I'm kind of just like getting on the Melanie Mac like info dump type stuff. Um, Because I really, like I really have been contemplating like going after, like doing reactions and responses to these guys. Is that something you guys want me to do? Like legitimately asking. Is that something you want me to do? Like just to start, when I go live, watch these kind of videos and then just mock them is that what you guys want i hate you they're saying hey can you just not be a victim can you get out of this victim mentality because that doesn't help anybody so there's that obvious so okay we're five minutes in she's referenced two bits two bits from the show okay both of which i believe were either like in the trailers right or like minimal bits two things jab there there's also <laughs> there is also a scene where storm in the courtroom is like silence blah, 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 like says her spill and it was a total on the nose stay silent when a black woman speaks moment <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> uh, that was a thing. And. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like you, could you tell, like you could tell she was gearing up to press that, that, that bleed button and dropping the end bomb. You could totally tell that that what was going on. Um, like, wow. Yeah. I feel like a lot now the trial of Magneto's been a thing in stuff before. Um in the comics, which I never I didn't read the X-Men comics. I watched the That's 90s cartoon and watched the the movies, the what or 90s early 2000s around that era, the movies. I I really liked them. You mean from July 2000 until June 2019? those 19 years of a multitude of X-Men and X-Men related movies that were pushed through 20th century Fox. You watched those movies. I don't think you watched all those movies. Did you watch Electra in 2005? I don't think you did. You know? <laughs> uh, Rodimus here says, I wouldn't call it, yeah, even call X-Men woke because it's egalitarianism. I, no, it's woke, dude. It, it's definitely like, it's not egalitarianism. It's, it's really not. It's, it's, um, it's it's really they are fighting for for mutual rights like and there's a line in the first episode where they're talking with the guy who killed professor x and that guy killed them thinking that it would he's a true believer that it would like disrupt everything and unravel what they're trying to do and scott's like more people have come to our side as a result of that which is also very true it does open up public sympathy especially when there's an assassination Right. But I, again, I, I wouldn't understand. I wouldn't, I highly doubt she's going to mention any of that in here because she's that stupid. Um, but yeah, trial Magneto is a thing before, uh, is a thing before I'm bounding in a comics really goes more into detail about that. Um, now Magneto here, he, and here and in the cartoon as well that we've seen X-Men 97, he's trying to, to, uh, explain himself he wants to be trusted uh, as as a good guy now because he's like hey my methods were bad i just you know i didn't want to see my people eradicated but now i'm trying to take a different approach uh, more of that charles xavier approach blah 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 i'm gonna be totally good now right right um and so, yeah, uh, but here in the cartoon, they have something that really stu stood out to me and where they're trying to insert some of their ideology. No, notice how she is. She is reading the article, trying to find a point in the article that makes her argument for her that she can read from in order to make it sound like like there's not just 
air blasting in between those ears. Into this, because like when I think of X-Men, of actual, you know, more of the old school X-Men and the stuff that I watched from the 90s, I always had the impression and the message that it left me was, yeah, did the X-Men want to be accepted by society? Yes. But the overall message was, at least my takeaway, was that, hey, society does not accept the X-Men. They're mutants. They're freaks. Uh, they're freaks of society. They're rejects. And yet they still choose to protect humanity, the world. So they're protecting the very people who hate them. And she's going to be like, and I, I take offense to that. Like, yes, that is, that is what the, it was, it was about tolerance and understanding and respect. That's what it was. That's exactly what it was. And yet she's like, she gets it. She got it when she was younger folks. Okay. But let's find, I have a feeling she's going to be like, and that's, that's lame. Now I just have a feeling that's what she's going to say. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I hope she's not entirely dumb. I really do. I really honestly hope that, but uh, I'm not expecting much because you again, you can tell here she's trying to read the article in order to have it formulate the opinion for her. This is, this is, you know, I, I know cause I used to do this kind of shit when I needed to make a quick video back in the Monday and Matt days and I didn't do the proper research. I just grabbed the article and ran with it. Uh, there we go. Yeah, music man. Yeah, thank you. But it is. Oh, yeah, right. It is. It is after midnight. Yeah, it is. It is. It's now 1202. Uh, I'm now 40 fucking to Douglas Adams year. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Spaceship Poet. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I got sucked into watching this and I want to fucking I, and now I'm like we're halfway through and I I, I, I do definitely want to like die, but I also want to just yell and scream that just showed that that just showed their character that just showed that hey this they're they're heroes in this area in this way because i mean it's easy to help people who love you but how much more difficult is it to help people who hate you and that was the message but now what i get more so from this cartoon is like why aren't you affirming me affirm me now again they wanted that but it just seems different uh, and a lot of what we're seeing from like the alphabet mafia, for example, what we're seeing from them and how they want to, to call themselves basically like they want to pretend like the X-Men were created to represent them. Oh yeah. The X-Men is a queer story. You know, this modern <laughs> one's definitely trying to push that. But I, I mean, in essence, yeah, they kind of, it kind of is a story about, about the other, about different people. Uh, and that does have something in our day and age, especially where you've got the attempt by the right to like curtail reproductive rights for women, uh, make the threat about going after gay marriage, obviously, uh, anything involving trans people. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The people that the X-Men would protect, the ones that you are championing the, from when you were younger, the ones that you are remembering fondly, would protect those marginalized people because that's the right thing to do. But she's like, they're just gay. <laughs> and I don't like that. That's, that's what she's saying right now. Uh, that is just pathetic. But the old school. So, oh yeah, it was all about queers all along. It was all about queers and marginalized people. They think that they're the X-Men basically. But it's the overall message of, hey, here are the X-Men who are helping people and what separated them from the villains, right? The good mutants from the bad ones was that the good ones were still protecting society, this very society that hated them. We don't see that with the Alphabet Mafia. You don't see any of that. You see the opposite of that. The Alphabet Mafia act like the villains of X-Men. If we're being real, they act like the villains of X-Men. It's like they want to force themselves on society. They want to force their ideologies on everybody. And they want to brainwash and bring more people in to their ideologies. Isn't that exactly the entire impetus of modern age Christianity? 
or any religion, right? You are there as a shepherd, not even a shepherd. You are a disciple of your God. And your main focus is to bring more people into the fold. And you do this not through conversations, not through actions that would be beneficial or outreach programs. You do this through fear mongering. You do this through social pariahism, through ostracization, uh, through legislation now in a, in a lot of very red rural areas uh, where the Bible is the way of the land. All this kind of shit. It's so fucking funny. She doesn't understand a word what she's saying. She also has only mentioned now three elements from the show. Uh, Rational asking, should I convert Melanie Mack to an atheist? I mean, good luck. Good luck. What'd you send me? A spherical man. Oh, wow. That actually looks pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> Henry, Henry Cavill. God fucking damn it. I keep trying to save it and it's all Twitter's all like, you have to save it a certain file type because for some reason we can't, you know, we, we can't be expected to do things correctly. Anyway. Oh my God. She's, she hasn't mentioned anything from the show yet. Um, but three point thirty five hundred likes, thirty five hundred likes. Yes, I know modern Christians are pretty decent. I don't really have a lot of issue with people who are like the general in the fuck, like the, the sheep of the flock. Okay, because they're just trying to get by like everybody else. Like that part I get. All right, but no. But at the same time, the people who are the organized ones, the people like her that fear monger and use hyperbole. And clearly, like, wear a cross, but speak outside of what the Lord would agree with. Those are who I'm talking about. Children. They're mutilating children. They're teaching children of things that they should not be taught at their age. They're having drag queens read stories to them. They are. But the story of Adam being lonely and tired of jerking off into a bush and God taking a rib and giving him a woman. Uh, for with whom he uh, is able to, I think, have like five kids with, right? And then, and then Eve is out there going like, "Man, I'm fucking hungry." And the snake's like, "Hey, we had a fucking apple." And she's like, "I can't have that fucking apple. That apple is fucking from the tree of knowledge. Uh, I'll fucking that's what God doesn't want." And the snake's like, "Yeah, dude, like whatever, do what you want. You're fucking God's chosen ch chosen children. You're the first assholes here. Holy fucking shit!" And they fucking eat the apple, and then they're fucking cast out and shit, right? Never mind Sodom and Gomorrah. Never mind. Who was the guy who fucking let the mob rape his daughters? Like, there was a thing with that, right? Uh, you know, all in the name of God. Like, fucking let the men rape his daughters. That happened. I believe that happened and shit. The Bible's not for children. The Bible's not for children. This shit's fucked up. There's incest. There's rape. There's sodomy. Uh, there's, like, fucking uh, abominations unto Christ, like Cyclops fucking gigantic whales you know uh never mind if adam and eve are the first two people that's a lot of incest that's a lot at, at this point melanie mac our dna would be scraping the bottom of the barrel uh clearly somehow i didn't have that problem and you clearly did so i kind of like feel bad about that um but uh let's keep going teaching perversion to children okay and just at Planet Fitness recently, for example, there are men, these perverted men, intruding on female spaces. And then if a woman complains about it, she gets her membership taken away or she gets kicked out of Planet Fitness. She gets kicked out. Nothing to do with X-Men. Nothing to do with anything you brought up. It's bloviating waste of air, waste of time, waste of space. Just like whatever is in between those eyes of yours. Um, let's see here. Rodimus says here, I stand by religion. Every study has shown that religious people are happier and more fulfilled on average. Yeah. It's called ignorance is bliss, buddy. You gotta love ignorance is bliss. Uh, command unit here for five. Thank you. Says 40 K does parody modern day politics taken to the extreme, but is done within the context of the universe. And I usually, and I feel usually done well. I mean, yeah, you can do that. You can, you can easily lamp lampoon satirize whatever you want, like modern day politics. Like I, I like to do it all the time. Um, but I, you know, uh, I have, but I like to piss people off when I do it. Um, anyway, these are, it's always men are going into women's areas, but never a woman going into a men's area. I mean, that is true. So, I mean, well, to be fair, spherical man, you don't really ever hear about a trans man in that situation. You just never do not to say it doesn't happen, but it just never makes the fucking news, you know, 
in this particular regard, I look at someone like Melanie Mack and what she's saying here, and it's like, you know how you fix that fucking issue with Planet Fitness? All right, you know how you fix that issue? We just have fucking gender neutral bathrooms and everyone has individual stalls. That's it. That's it. You fucking get rid of the men and the women, right? The different rooms. You have individual stalls, private showers, fucking done. Fucking done. That's about it. That's it. That's all you're going to do. That's all you need to do. Problem solved. No more issues. Out of the gym. We've seen this in sports. We've seen that. Like this slippery slope that the boomers talked about is real. It's happening. We're seeing, we're seeing the effects of it. So whenever the, the queers want to <laughs> pretend like they're the X-Men and it's about them. No, y'all are the bad guys because you're the ones trying to force yourselves on a society. You're the one. What has Christianity done for fuck's sake? What has Christianity done? outside of force itself on society are you fucking kidding me all right largely at this point christians kind of keep to themselves because they're the predominant religion they don't have to there's no natural predator for christians anymore there used to be lions just saying but there used to be lions uh but lions no longer they don't exist in america so so christians can they, there's no natural predator for christians they're able to go freely do what they want okay um and uh and everything else um, but never mind the fact that many, 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 many millions of people uh, have died as a result of Christianity in the name of Christ. A lot of horrible, terrible, tragic things have been done. And yet she's all like, but y'all the bad guys because you, know, you queers, Jesus. That are punishing people for not affirming you and that want to see people punished for not affirming you and your identity. Oh, sorry. Is, is Melanie Mack hungry for the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation? Um, I mean, I, I think I, I honestly, if she, if, if we searched her, 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 if we were able to look in her search history, we would most likely discover that there is a fair amount of blacked.com pornography. Okay. I would, I would assume so that she would be on blacked.com probably like milf.com as well because she'll never have kids so she's like just gonna fantasize about fucking a stepson i guess i don't know what she's into um you know it, it, we would find some weird shit we would find some weird shit if we looked in her search history he and delusions so let's not play like that's the same thing now something that stood out here with one of the lines in the cartoon for x-men 97 was um, where, so he talks about being a freak of a mutant. So she, and, again, again, she has to read the article. She has to read the article in order to get an opinion. She did not watch the show. She did not watch it. I think she saw clips on Twitter and that's it. Like, that's what I think. And when he talks about, yes, here we go. Born a mutant an abomination to their misnamed gods like what is that a a who's that what's that pointed at an abomination to their misnamed gods well god in the bible the real true god in the bible calls homosexuality an abomination okay uh and i believe the bible I believe <laughs> it's almost it's almost like she has to fucking affirm that to herself. Well, in the Bible, it says that God called homosexuality a an abomination. And, you know, I believe the Bible. Uh, let me I'm just going to I just you know what? I want to know the passage. What passage in the Bible did God call homosexuality an abomination i'm just curious here let's find out here okay okay oh it was in the book of leviticus specific, specifically leviticus 18 22 and 2013 these passages state you shall not lie with a male as with a woman it is an abomination leviticus 2013 further emphasizes that those who engage in such, such acts shall surely be put to death 
uh you know i mean like okay so i guess right if you think god is real god hates people who wrote the bible let me let me i'm just curious here who wrote the bible let me just look this up here okay so uh according to uh according to this the bible was written by various authors over the course of centuries with god being considered the ultimate author according to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16. Humanly speaking, approximately 40 men from diverse backgrounds contributed to the Bible, each recording what God intended using their own writing styles and personalities. For example, Moses is traditionally attributed as the author of the uh, Pente Pentateuch, whatever, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, 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 Deut Deuteronomy, while Isaiah is credited with writing the book of Isaiah, uh, the New Testament authors include that of, uh, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Paul, right? The Beatles, gotta love them, among others. And the Bible's unity, uh, the Bible's unity, despite being penned by different authors, is seen as a testament to its divine inspiration and guidance by God. So a book authored by men, approximately 40 men of different diverse backgrounds, Moses being uh, attributed to the author uh, of Leviticus, the Leviticus saying, if you shall lay with a man as you do a woman, it's you're going to go to fucking hell. Okay. Um, but Moses also was a raging heterophobe, right? He was a, he was not a heterophobe. He was, think about it, right? Moses, if you follow the story in the Bible, right? Great flood needed to build the ark, and the ark had two of every creature for procreation. Uh, in his mind, he would not, he would look at that. I'm just saying, he would look at that and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, 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 if two men, uh, lay next to each other or two because he probably would have seen it in animals let's be real all right he probably would have seen it in animals and so in his mind he's looking at it from the sake of being maybe a farmer if two male pigs fuck there won't be offspring they might have a good time you might get glazed pork chops but you're still gonna have like no offspring so in his mind he's gonna look at that as being something like well if two male pigs have sex and they're not mating with female pigs, then I don't need to feed them because they're not going to be what I need. They're not going to, to continue to produce progeny that I can either take to market or I can use for my own food supply or whatever. And since homosexuality does happen in animals, uh, that's probably how we viewed it was like, oh God, these, these animals are sinning. These animals are fucking sinning. You know what I mean? So it's kind of uh whatever, um, you know, so all I'm saying is basically, <laughs> it's basically, uh, he, he was all about, he, if anything, he could have also been about eugenics as well. Right. He could have been like, well, if I, if these two pigs that are male are fucking, they're not going to produce offspring. I need to produce offspring. So I'm going to kill them. I'm going to eat them. Uh, hopefully not filled with cum. And then, and then I'm going to have other pigs that are going to be straight and that are going to fucking provide me with offspring. Cause that's going to benefit my farming. Therefore long, my, my, my long lasting life. So by just looking at it through the lens of a farmer or a person who had to survive in those times, yeah, it's more probably accurate to make the claim that the whole you shall, you know, not lie with a man uh, probably has a lot to do with just, uh, you know, what, um, no cross, spe you know, no, no, no same sex species erotica that or he was masturbating to a fucking hardcore and he 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 felt guilty after a while you know he probably had like a rum springer type situation where he went out there and he met you know moses at a bar he's 20 years old looking good buff dude fucking you know works with farms and shit and then uh, he meets a young guy could be i don't know could be some dude named like slayus or something right and he's all like yas queen you know he could be out there just totally doing that it's like being out there completely uh you know like hey moses like let's go fucking chill brah like, let's go chill. I got this wine. Okay. And like, we can go fish and I can show you my pole. And his Moses is probably like, all right, man. Yeah, totally. I, I, I totally want to go see a pole. Oh, you mean your dick? Oh yeah. That's a big throbbing meaty cock. Well, I just, I'm just now going to suck it. There you go. It's really, he was, Moses was a fucking homophobe there. I solved it. I saw, I solved, I solved the, I solved the issue of Moses. Slay, slay us, queen. Slay us, exactly. <laughs> Look, it's all ridiculous. Organized religion, the Bible. Come on, it's like a 2,000-year-old book that hasn't predicted shit. 
All right. It's like it's like imagine if uh, imagine if Back to the Future Biff took back the wrong almanac and it didn't produce anything of value, right? But he was still able to somehow like turn that into like a fucking cult. There you go. Um. All right. <laughs> Whether the, like no matter what is in like the Bible is truth. Whether I no, it's not. It's not truth. Like it or not, it's true. No, it's not. And yeah, this definitely felt like a jab against that, against the Bible, against God. And so you even have Magneto call the people bigots. Bigots. See, they hate that word because it's a it's a reflective yeah. word. Uh, so anyway, then we have this tweet where Joe Russo here, uh, and the opinion of the aforementioned Russo, the scene was specifically chosen for- Oh my God. Is he trying to make the claim that Joe Russo is the Joe Russo, right? That Joe Russo is not Joe and Anthony Russo. That is a different Joe Russo. Adaptation in X-Men 97 in order to take a swing at MAGA voters. Do you think the MAGA crowd has figured out that episode two of X-Men 97 is about them and the January 6th insurrectionists yet? Or nah, because January 6th, they can't get over it. That is, they're, they're obsessed with it. It's their 9-11. Um, and so then there was a lot of pushback against that. But anyway, long story short, I wasn't impressed with X-Men 97, what we've seen so far. I think it could have been worse. So, uh, I think that, you know, they've. I, I think what we've seen with a lot of modern ad adaptations of stuff. All right, I'm not going to finish this because we've done. We've gone on this way too fucking long, and it's, uh, it's it is getting late. But what we've what we've determined in the last half hour or so of watching uh, this absolute unfettered garbage permeate through Melanie Max gaping maw that she calls a mouth is that for one she references she says it's not good she makes no direct reference in the show outside really of the courtroom scene without any of, of storm in the courtroom scene without any prompting from the bounding into comics article then other than that she really only mentioned morph because everyone's been attacking morph and it's, it's, uh, it's really, she can't, yeah. Um, yeah, this is pretty bad guys. This is pretty bad. It's pretty stupid. Um, I, I agree. Shifty gives here says this is the best thing Disney put plus has put out since and or I think it's really good. Yeah. Rational here says, I just can't, she's such a moron. I just can't, you know, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, that's the fucking hilarious thing about it is that she is. I, so, you know, I called her vapid at the beginning and, and then this is the first, I think Melanie Mac video I've sat through the entire, like most of it and not, not, not really a point was made. Nary a point was made, but yet she ends up getting, how many views does this thing have? Let me see here. She's got uh 30,000 views on this 3,500 likes. Uh, what are the comments? Like, I need to see the comments here. Um, she's got, wow, holy shit. She's got 1,500 comments here. Uh, you know, Lara Croft videos here says they really put my man Gambit in a pink crop top and ripped skinny jeans in 97. Probably he was fucking totally whatever. To think Stan Lee created X-Men, he made them mutants because he was tired of thinking up reasons for how his characters got their powers. Um, okay. <laughs> like, uh, is there anything? Oops. Nope. I, I, okay. I clicked, I clicked it out accidentally. Whatever. It's stupid. It's fine. Macaroni Mac. That's very true. It's very true, guys. It's like, oh my God. That was painful. That was legitimately painful. And the thing is, like, side scroller pod apparently is gonna like bring her back on. I just I was looking at her Twitter account. So so side scroller pod is gonna bring her on. And and I think like a regular thing or some shit like that. Um, and this is this is the whole thing with like the right wing grifters. Is that the right wing grifters, they they just they just this is what they have to do. They they just have to push the nonsense. We know that we've seen that we cover that. We'll talk about that. It's not hard to tell at all how bad these guys get because they know deep down that they're only so popular with so few people in the grand populace of things 
that they have to try to maintain this idea that there's more of them than everybody else. But because YouTube operates in such a way that is, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, emotionally driven, emotionally charged, at this point, it's very difficult um, to, uh, to, to kind of break in on that one, right? 30,000 people watch that and 3,500 are like, I agree with this message, but the message was bad. It provided no value. It was, it was nutrition. It was it just void of all nutrition, as I like to say. Um, just fucking crazy, fucking wild. Yeah, she's basically a regular of the show now. Yeah, sitting right next to, is she? She's all up in the big G and G stream. She's big time now. Sitting right next to to Jeremy and Rippy. Exactly. This is the problem with these guys, and, and and literally, this is the problem with these guys, is that they do sit absolutely unopposed in many ways. In many ways, and they lie. We all know they lie. They have to lie. They all maintain the same bullshit. They all maintain the same lie. They all maintain the same talking points. It's Fox News cranked up to 10 for fucking Zoomers or millennials that are like retarded, I guess. What sucks is that there's a lot of us who are. And I really wish that other people, I really wish other people would, uh, would get up on this and absolutely just start fucking fighting the fuck back. You know, I really do. I I'd start, start heavily, heavily fighting back. Um, unfortunately, I just don't necessarily see uh, that always happening, you know, just because people, people will run out of things to largely, I, I don't want to say like largely get mad about or whatever, but like they only care about so few things, or, or I should say they only care about so many things at one time. Would that work? A new, uh, a new alt-right grifter appears every day. What do you mean? Like what, what part do you mean? Like you mean taking the fight to them? Would that work? Is that what you're asking? I talked about it in the beginning, but I can reiterate it again, but I, I do want to get to this one. Cause this is actually in the fucking title of the video. Um, did I cover the SWAT team? I did cover the SWAT team thing. So here we go. This is crazy. Man changes his name to literally anybody else and announces us presidential run. Texas man says he's unsatisfied with Trump and Biden and says new name isn't a person. It's a rally cry. Yes. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Would fighting them work? You don't fight them directly. Okay. Plushy. I'll, I'll, I'll let me get through this and, I, and I'll get back to that. Okay. Just let me just save that. Okay. So a Texas man has legally changed his name to literally anybody else and announced that he is running for the U S presidency in the 2024 election formerly known as dustin ebby the 35 year old is a u.s army veteran and seventh grade math teacher in the suburbs of dallas and now has a texas driver's license to prove his name change he said that he wanted to change his name because he was unsatisfied with this year's presidential candidates joe biden and donald trump saying here 300 million people can't do better uh there really should be some outlet for people like me who are just so fed up with this constant power grab between two parties that it has no benefit to the common person. Ah, yep, yeah, there we go. That's the that's the conservative in, in him right there, right? That's a con like he's a conservative. You can tell that is is just unhappy with Trump because Trump is doing the power grab. The fucking liberals aren't doing the power grab in the way that the way that people like this guy here would would think. They they would think, oh, the liberals are going after culture, I guess. But the culture war is clearly being dominated by the right wing right now. So and they're the ones that are trying to like restrict rights. Uh, take away, you know, uh, fucking freedoms and shit. They're the ones doing all that, like fucking glad handing each other, giving their their friends tax deals, covering up for each other. I mean, don't get me wrong. No, I'm you know, fuck, I'm not even going to entertain the concept of both sides right now because both sides isn't the issue. The issue is not left or right. It's it's fucking Trump. Trump is the issue. So while this guy is funny for doing a meme of literally anybody else, all right. It's pretty, it's like, it's, it's kind of a waste of time. Let's see. He needs 1300 or 113,000 signatures from non-primary voters in the state of Texas by May to get his name on the ballot. Since that is unlikely, he is campaigning to get people to write in his name saying we don't have a neither option on the ballot 
And this kind of stuff fills that role. No, it's, I mean, it's really doesn't, it's kind of stupid to be fair, right? You don't, you don't put in a neither option on a ballot because that's not how ballots work. That's not how elections work. Uh, and it is very much, if I had to guess, I'd say this guy's probably like a libertarian, right? I'd probably say that. Um, let's see, for too long, Americans have been victim of its political parties, putting party loyalty over governance together. Let's send a message to Washington and say, you will be, you will represent or be replaced. Here's the thing with this. I absolutely. Okay. All right. Like America should not be stuck choosing between King of debt, his self declaration, meaning Trump and an 81 year old. Okay. So if he's saying King of debt. And then an 81 year old, the king of debt clearly is the one that he's arguing against. So here's what we, here's what we need to do. Okay. If you know anyone in Texas, and I mean this literally, if you know anyone in Texas, you need to tell them to vote for literally anybody else. Okay. Write the name in or contact this homie and try to get him to put it up on the, um, to, to try to get him up on the ballot. Now, again, is that, is that going to happen? Probably not. But the reason why it's important is because it needs to be done. This guy, th like a vote for this will not be a vote that takes away from Biden. A vote like this will be a vote that takes away from Trump. And we know that we need to have votes taken away from Trump, especially in Texas. Imagine if enough people just, I mean, it's, look, it's, it's, it's a fucking, it's a thought experiment. Is it going to happen? No. But just imagine how funny it would be if enough people decided to vote literally anybody else in Texas outside of Donald Trump, and then magically Biden ends up winning the election because whoopsie daisy, or w wins the, wins the, uh, the, the, you know, the elector, the, the, uh, God damn it. The electoral votes of Texas, therefore, de de you know, absolutely giving him a win. Um, it won't happen, but this guy's got the right idea. However, in this case, it would not benefit uh, Trump in the slightest. It would it would only hurt Trump because b people who are going to vote this time around are, you know, they're not going to, no, we don't have a lot of undecided voters. Like I, I have a feeling Trump is going to lose largely because they've lost everything since 2016. The only thing Trump really won was the presidency. After that, like, yeah, they got the speakership of the house back, razor thin fucking margin. Now Republicans are leaving in droves. That margin is now down to like one or two. Uh, very soon, I think it's only going to be one. And that basically means that any Republican can basically like threaten to not vote along with the conservatives and vote with the Democrats who are wholly unif completely unified under Hakeem Jeffries. It's not looking good. It's just not looking good for any of them. So yeah, by all means, bring it on, man. Absolutely bring it on. Uh, let's do it. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Yeah, Spiro Command says, same with RFK Jr. He'll take more votes away from Trump than Biden. Exactly. There's no Jill Stein running this time. There's no fucking like, you know, like libertarian third party candidate that's going to speak to the fucking left. It's not going to happen. It's not going to fucking happen at all. Uh, John here says, uh, Stormy Daniels trial should end prior to the November elections. Yes, that's going to probably run till I'd say early June, maybe. Um, and yeah, that's going to come out right during the fucking main campaigning season. So we are good on that one. It's gonna be pretty crazy. All right. Uh, we did get a super chat here from command unit. Thank you, buddy. He says you are taking the Bible out of its historical context and it being a response to the religion of the time, specifically Hellenism and Canaanite religions. I don't, I don't care about its historical context. All right. I don't care about its historical context because no one in the Western world all right. And you don't live in the Western world, to be fair, but no one in the Western world ever looks at the, co the historical context of the Bible. We just listened to a vapid 37 year old ageless woman who was complaining or trying to make the comment that, oh, 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 it's fucking, oh, it's fucking, oh, oh my, it's fucking, the Bible's true. The Bible's true. I love my God as she's calling people the F slur. So, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, okay. Plushy. Getting back to your point here. Let's kind of we're gonna kind of we're gonna we're gonna kind of round it around, I guess, right? We're gonna kind of we're gonna kind of go full circle for three hours. Um again, we have right now, let me just double check. We got 122 on Twitter, 39 on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't already, please leave a like. Uh we got uh, you know, if, if you're if you're on the on the Twitters, uh feel free to uh to, to come on by. You know what I mean? 
uh, feel free to absolutely come on by. Tell me, tell me what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to the Twitter chat real quick because I think only I can post. Well, no, I have it set up on the Twitter chat that anyone can post. We have 120 right there right now. I'm going to post this right here. If you guys want, come on over. Come on over. Check out the YouTube channel. There's the there's the link right there. Okay, I posted it in the Twitter chat. Um, there we go. See, right there. Uh, say Mac is missing the historical context of mess with her. Yeah, there you go. Um, I did drop the link. I did drop, the, I dropped the link over on the Twitter chat. There he is right there. So people can come on over, check it out. Uh, it'd be great to have you. We'd appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, you know, anyway, here, here's how the, the fighting of the chuds. Here's how you fight the chuds. I've mentioned this before, but it really is simple. YouTube is algorithmically driven. Largely that algorithm is, is through, uh, emotional response. And also how much time you spend on the spend on the platform and how much time you spend engaging with certain content. That's what it recommends you. That's why those guys all operate the same way, right? Everything's the same. There's no deviation. Or if there is a deviation, it's very minimal. It's not enough to break the to break the mold, to break the bubble. All you got to do is just worm your way into that algorithm. Okay, so one of the one of the I'm gonna show you guys a clip. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys a clip here. Uh no, I don't have the full, do I have the full video? Uh, let me find it. Let me find it real quick because, um, I think, I don't know if it's on, I don't know if it's on there. It should be. I know it's just, I'm kind of talking like all over the place. I apologize. Um, let me see here. Uh, Andy, it's an Andy Signore clip. Sir, a uh, very bad day. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, oh, come on. Let's see. I really don't understand why Vito fucking just absolutely um, does that shit. Uh, I really wish that fucking uh, he would do that. Okay, where, is, where are we? I'm trying to find it. I'm sorry, guys. It's on a Nick Diorio channel. And um, I unfortunately like it's just God damn it. I'm going to have to search on YouTube because it's hard to find on its own. Let me see here. Um, okay. Let me see. No, I'm still looking guys. I'm sorry. Cause I really, I don't, I don't have the clip saved. I have it on like the other profile, but not this profile. I think I might, let me, you know what? Let me double check that there. Do I have it over here? I know we're over in Hollywood after dark here. Do I have the full thing? Yeah, here we go. Over it, Matt, leave me the fuck alone. You're starting to freak me out. It's obsessive. It's scary. It's scary, it's isn't it? It is legitimately yeah. like single white female. Like, dude, move on. Are you, it's, he's like Max the Mandalorian. Do I gotta like, dig, we gotta dig up some dirt on him to sort of scare him to shut up too? I don't understand. Like, stop. <laughs> I am in possession of Mad Max's face behind the mask. Uh-oh. I am issuing a warning to this man. Not just his face behind the mask, but also details about things he doesn't want known. So I, I want to go. I'm yes. going on record. I don't know anything about this. Yes, he does not. It's, he's like Max the Mandalorian. Do I gotta like? Uh oh. Do I gotta like? We gotta dig up some dirt on him to sort of scare him to shut up too. I don't understand. So I, I want to go. Yes. I'm going on record. I don't know anything about this, Jody. Matt Jarbo went on a stream saying I doxed him and gave I like, dude. I don't, I don't, I don't support right. that. I don't give if this guy's private information. Right. At the same time, he's come at you and me to be honest. Really hard. Dig, we gotta dig up some dirt on him to sort of scare him to shut up too. I don't understand. Uh oh. Yeah, dude, Andy, I have like nothing against you, bro. I have, I've pretty much never. All right, so that there's there's more to that clip. Let me just go back over here. We go. All right, so there's more to that clip overall, and the reason why that's important is because in that clip, I can't find the full thing. I have to, I have to find it. It's like ten minutes or whatever. I have the files. There's somewhere. I just don't know where. But largely, what happened is this: Mad Max uh, was covering Jody and Andy so much that they were, he was infecting their algorithm, meaning that like his videos criticizing them were running next to and being recommended to people who watched their content. And that is why they went and found out who he is and why they tried to scare him into silence, like finding his name and what he looks like without the mask on. He's now, you know, he now doesn't wear a mask and everything else. It doesn't fucking matter, but that's what they did back then. 
they wanted to get him out of their algorithm so they because he was actually impacting them but he was one guy with like four you know five thousand subs or whatever a uh, small channel i think at this point when he streams he only gets like a, you know he, he gets like 20 people and shit which i mean i'm doing the same right now on youtube at least right but that's all what i'm trying to say about that literally is just this is like what you do is is you respond to them you use their thumbnail you use uh, elements of their thumbnail their title their video description, their YouTube tags. That's it. And you respond to them and you put that out there and the system will eventually start recommending it to people who watch that content. Meaning that the people who let it autoplay will get a response content and they'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll give this a listen or whatever, right? Because sometimes they're gonna wanna listen to it. And then with all that debunking, they'll be like, oh, holy shit. Like I had no fucking idea that these guys are fucking morons. And that way you start very, very, surreptitiously and i'll use that word word here uh, to get you worm your way into the algorithm and the algorithm will start to defend it will start to show it to people and then what you're going to see from them is you're going to see them come out and say things like oh just make you know just say don't recommend this channel yada 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 but again if you can infect enough people you can you can take down an empire you can topple an empire and that's how you do it that's how you absolutely do it there's no flagging there's no there's no flagging there's no dmca there's no, there's, there's no attacks on channels. You're using your voice and the data that's presented to you, the tools presented to you in order to, well, make your mark. And that's it. You're getting 2016 vibes from the cycle. Nah, man, not at all from the cycle. Trump is weak, weak compared to 2016, dude. 2016, he was the outsider, okay? 2016, he was the outsider. He was uh, fucking you know, charismatic, he fought all the, you know, he he was able to go out there and just verbally dance around like Marco Rubio, Chris Christie, all of those guys. He they, they couldn't compete with Donald Trump on that front. He had them just fucking, he blasted them out of the water because they weren't expecting him. And then this time around, he didn't even have to go. He just said, fuck you, I'm not gonna do it and didn't do it. And, and everyone's like, all right, yeah, he's our presumptive nominee. He's fucking broke as shit. He's broke as shit. And even though tomorrow morning or in just a couple hours from now, when the stock market opens and True Social goes public, we're gonna see what kind of foreign money gets dumped into that fucker. And there's gonna be a lot of foreign money getting dumped into that fucker. So we'll see what happens with that. But at the end of the day, he's a he is weaker. He's a weak ass candidate. He he's at this point out for himself. The RNC is paying for his bills. His campaign is paying for his bills. He doesn't have the money to run a campaign. He had to cancel a rally in Arizona the other day because he didn't have the money to pay for the rally. So he went to Ohio and he just kind of like piggybacked on to another uh, Senate uh, candidate, uh, their rally the other day. So you can tell that like Trump, he just doesn't have the money. He's hoping that this is gonna be the influx that he needs, this valuation of $3 billion, which will not be valued at $3 billion. Uh, there's no way True Social is going to have a $3 billion valuation. There's just simply no way. Um, yeah, it's Saudi Saudi and Turkish money is definitely going into. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rational says, Michael Moore said Democrats should not get ahead of themselves and say Trump will lose early. This year. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. I'm not, I, I, I will 100% agree. 100% agree that what they need to do is get Trump like is to keep beating the drum that Trump is a problem. All right. You know what I'm saying? Is like like keep telling the people that so they get out to vote. What you don't want are Democrats to be complacent. Right? What you don't want um is that to happen at all. And I I, I don't think that's gonna happen, to be honest with you. Um but uh it could happen. Uh well let's see here. <laughs> Holy shit. What's this here? A bridge um collides with francis hold on here i keep trying to go to bed but shit keeps fucking happening holy shit let's see what do we got here this is breaking ship collides with francis scott key bridge in baltimore causing it to oh my god well i mean there's joe biden's infrastructure money oh my god Oh my God, no way. Oh. 
Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Dude, that's nuts. Holy shit. I, I don't know if anyone died. I really fucking hope not. Oh, wow. That's crazy, man. That's, oh, Jesus. That's fucking wild. Uh, John here says Biden is counterattacking Trump and needs to keep at it. He actually is. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, let me see if I can find the oh, Twitter's all like, it's your birthday. Thank you, Twitter. Uh, let's see. I got to try to find the. Uh, did I respond to it? Damn it. Uh, hold on. Let me find it. Because there's um the I don't follow them, but uh, let's see the Biden uh harris the biden harris is like a um a twitter account that's like kind of like trolling yeah biden biden harris hq um here it is right here um let's see malarkey ends here just the facts jack a, a project of biden harris 2024 uh we're on the other websites too joe.com joe biden i mean it, this apparently is legitimately from the biden campaign by the way, you got to love the Dark Brandon. The, the Dark Brandon's dope as fuck. Okay, so here we go. You've got uh, Trump, you know, talking. Oh this, oh, this is great. Look at this here. It's my great honor to be at Trump International Golf Club in West Palm Beach tonight. Awards night to receive the club championship trophy, the senior club championship trophy. I won both. A large and, a large and golfing talented membership. A great and difficult course. Made the play very exciting. The qualifying match and match play was amazing. A large and distinguished group will be here tonight. Very exciting. Thank you. And then this right there, Trump putting a fucking award on <laughs> See, but here's the thing with this. Here's why this is important. Because uh, one of the things that John Fetterman did was Fetterman went after um, Dr. Oz on social media and just roasted him and roasted him and roasted him. And that was great. Uh, that's fucking awesome. All right, here we go. Uh, Joe NBC, most Americans, conservatives. Um, yeah, that's obviously true. Uh, former Trump White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson. Um, yeah. Good old Cassidy. Um, fucking Pelosi just goddamn retire. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, Caitlin Collins outside New York. What does she say? By the former president is his unhappiness with the decision that we just got from the judge there, Judge Juan Marchand, who decided that, yes, this case will be going forward. They are not going to dismiss it, as Trump's attorneys had been arguing for. And they're also not going to delay it any further than it was already delayed. It was supposed to start today. Now jury selection will begin on April 15th. And that was essentially what Trump was summing up there, which really we got an indication that he was quite annoyed with how today went by what we were hearing from our reporters inside the room, the observations uh, of Trump's body language as he was sitting there and the judge was pressing his attorney, Todd Blanche, on these efforts. They were hopeful going into this that they would succeed in getting at least a few more weeks of delay out of the judge here. They were not ultimately successful with that by the former president. All right, so yeah, sure trump isn't that's that's kind of like all right you know nothing really nothing really sexy about that unfortunately you know like you want you want the funny you want the memes um but uh yeah he's not going to be happy about that right um oh here's 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 a funny one let's see here trump posts clips a clip of himself being confused you can't have an election in the middle of a political season <laughs> I mean, like this kind of stuff is great. This is this is the kind of stuff they need to do. You know, eh, 200,000 views isn't great. Uh, also, Anna popped up here, which I did send Anna the link uh, if you want to come on for a few. Um, do I think it was a mistake for Biden to keep Kamala as his VP? The answer to that is no, it's not. And the reason why, it's, it's all about party cohesion is what I'm trying to say, right? So the party cohesion, if he would have removed Kamala, uh, Kamala as, his, uh, as his VP, that would have shown that there was a problem, right? That he didn't have faith and trust in her. And that would have translated to the American people. Whether or not it's true, like, I don't know, like, right? Kamala hasn't, or, you know, Kamala hasn't really done uh, too much, in my opinion, to be seen as a great uh, VP pick. But at the same time, it is just that. Like, they're just, that's what they're doing. Um, you know, he's sticking with her. And I think it's... Um, Okay, it's that. okay, real quick here. Uh, authorities say they're trying to rescue at least seven people after the Baltimore Bridge collapse. 
That's fucking wild, man. That's so wild that that bridge collapsed. Uh, Spherical Man says, Kate and Collins is a little hottie. Down, boy. Down. Keep it in your pants. Keep it in your pants. Um, anyway, what else do I got here? I mean, that's kind of a... There's other stories, all things considered, but nothing I really want to like dive into because we've been on for almost four hours. Uh, but I did send a link to Anna to come in and hang out for a few. Um, Sierra Commander says, I doubt Trump will pick a VP. Nothing says he has to have one. I, he's going to have to pick one that's going to have to have some value, especially if the polls are showing him not doing well. But the question that becomes, who? Who, 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 who um, is the person that would be the most uh, uh, effective? Not in the job. Right. Like not in the job, the V I've kind of come to the realization that the VPs is only someone you pick to help get your votes, not actually fucking do anything. Right. So what I'm thinking, what I'm wondering is who is going to be the person, right? Who does Trump need the most votes? The evangelicals are already on his side. So that's why Pence doesn't fucking matter. Your general, uh, your general run of the mill conservative is a little bit, you know, there, they might be a little wonky. All right. So that's where something like, look, Rational here says he's going to pick Christy Nome. It's going to be a woman. It's going to be a woman. It's not going to be a man. It's going to be a woman. Christy Nome is definitely a, a solid choice for him. I don't think she's a good person, but she's got a pretty big uh, presence and everything else. You know, so I, I understand that. I understand that she's got the pretty big presence and people know who she is. And everything. Uh, John here says Marjorie, Marjorie Karen Green. It's not going to be Marjorie Taylor. It's not going to be Marjorie. And the reason why it's not going to be Marjorie, I believe, has a lot more to do with the fact that with Marjorie, what you're looking at is a crazy person. And everyone knows she's a crazy person. She's too fucking erratic to be a vice president. On the campaign trail, she'd make it more about her. Even though she is definitely pro Trump and she would probably do her best to play that role, you back Marjorie Taylor Green into a corner. And she fucking cat the claws come out, right? The claw the claws come out. Um, let's see. You should get that smoking hot blonde. Did he, what? Kaylee McEnany? <laughs> I mean, M McEnany would definitely join the campaign. That's a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Uh, she would join the campaign, and she would just be like, you know, fucking the most loyal. Uh, but tr uh, no, Rational's right. Uh, Trump doesn't want someone who will outshine him. And that is, if if he brought in Marjorie Taylor Greene, Marjorie Taylor Greene would take the spotlight away from Trump. Like, absolutely. Would they, like, it's the same reason why Sarah Palin took the spotlight away from McCain. I think without Sarah Palin, all things considered, without Sarah Palin, uh, Obama pr maybe would not have won. And I say that because uh, McCain, in the eyes of a lot of Americans, even though the motherfucker was a goddamn war hawk, was probably seen as more moderate than George W. Bush, right? You know, he served in the military. He understands military activities and everything else. Maybe he won't want to, like, get us into some more shit. I don't know. Um, but Sarah Palin was the worst choice he could have made because, you know, she was that fucking maverick as well, The the you know, the firecracking pistol, right? You know, pew, 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 I can see Russia from my house. She was that person, and that took away all attention from McCain. We we showed the clip a couple weeks ago of uh, McCain over on SNL the, the weekend before the graduation, literally begging people to vote for him. And it was uh, it was crazy. Be, uh, beat Nikki Yeast is the last saying conservative. I do agree with you on that one. Um, like, his daughter is fucking nuts. But I, I liked McCain. I liked McCain, actually. I always did. What up, Anna? How you doing? Hey, what's up, man? Happy to be joining you. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of chilling out. Uh, it's now officially my birthday. Happy birthday, man. Thank Happy you. Happy fucking birthday. I'm 42. Uh, I, how's it feel, man? Any know. different? <laughs> no, my body aches. My joints ache. I'm fucking exhausted. So exactly the same as before. Yeah, exactly the same as before. Sweet. Like I'm holding in a fart, but I'm in a room by myself. It's so weird. Well, I guess that's not sweet, but you know. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's like it's another ages, year. I guess it's you. another. Yeah, it's another fucking year. It's another fucking year. It's no. It's like age progress. You know, it happens. You can't really, you can't really fight. Would I love to go back to being twenty five and like knowing what I know now? Absolutely. Um, but I also realize it's one of those things where it's like any change to your current life, right? If you go back, there'd be massive alterations. 
like, and most likely the biggest changes would be, I wouldn't have my kids. Right. So, uh, that is unacceptable to me <laughs> to not have my kids. You regret nothing. And sure. yeah, I, in that, re yeah, I mean, there's only oh, these things I regret. Um, but, well, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, but I'll, 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 I'll tell, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this without going, I can't go into detail, but without what happened in August of 2018, I would, my youngest daughter would not be here. That is very accurate. So I can't go into the story, but there's a reason for that. So, yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, yeah, we've been watching Trump videos. Uh, his speech today was fucking terrible. Uh, we watched a Melanie Mac video, which uh, was fucking terrible. Um, and I was and I was explaining how to fight the right and win. What are some of the key points that you went over? Because, well, largely it's the algorithm, uh, and I talked about this with you before, I believe. Okay. If you fight, if you use the algorithm to your advantage, like a gorilla, think of it like a gorilla fighter. You oh, know? you were talking about that with Max earlier. Now I see what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, this was referring to as like Max and everything else. It's like if you treat it like you're a guerrilla fighter, if you're like the Viet Cong, you know, the rebellion in Star I love when people say Star Wars isn't political, but then you're just like, you do realize that the Empire was actually like a, like an allegory for like the United States imperialism during Vietnam, yep. right? <laughs> and they all were wearing Hugo Boss outfits, which is also, again, a bit of a, a bit of an on the nose allegory for certain things. Cause like at that point, uh, Lucas is like legitimately saying that the U S is no better than the Nazis. Like the empire is basically space Nazis and we're the empire. I mean, like, you know, y just using the powers of reverse osmosis, you can kind of figure out what he's trying to say there. Uh, but again, these people are, you know, the media, uh, media illiteracy, all that kind of shit. Yeah. Classic. Right. Uh, Shifty Gism says, you were down, your girlfriend cheered you up, boom, baby, not much to tell. No, actually. <laughs> That's, no, it's not at all. He said it's, it's, it's his story. It's a personal story. It's a story. Yeah. I would love to tell it. I think it's funny, but I can't tell it. All right. I can't tell it. It's, it's, it's just, it's fun. It's funny to me. It's very funny to me, but no, I, I cannot you, tell I it. Uh, I told it to my therapist when it happened and she looked at me like I was fucking insane. And I'm just like. Yeah, you, you're like, you're not going to get the humor on this one, I don't think. Um, so uh, let's see. Oh, as for the vi vice president, Rodimus here says, I've seen people say Vivek or Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi would would not Vivek. Vivek doesn't have the play with Tulsi would be a massive pull. I agree that Tulsi. I agree that Tulsi Gabbard would. She would and be you know like, what, man? She's so damn fucking hot. <laughs> hot enough. Would you vote for her? Would you vote for her? She was a VP. Oh, that's no, how she no, is. no, no, no. What about like what about if it was like Trump Carano 2024 if he picks Gina Carano? No, I I can't. Really, you uh, wouldn't you wouldn't vote for the uh for the uh uh crush me daddy? I'd be like Anakin crowd? Skywalker, like I shouldn't, but I shouldn't. But, uh, but I maybe, abstain. But maybe I would. I, no, I'm just you kidding. Know, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> contemplate voting for Gina Carano. See, look, someone can be as hot as they want. I'm not, you know, politics matters more than big muscly women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, right? But yeah, yeah. I personally am not into I'm not into death by no, space new. But but you I know get. what, man? Different strokes, uh, different folks. All things considered. Um. So. Uh. Oh yeah. So I don't know if you were if you heard last night's stream at all. Um. I did mention that there was a, a situation with a lost item on my bus. Um. There was a bunch of Japanese uh, students who had come into town for like the day. Apparently, mm -hmm. they were like. They were on a trip. I don't know much. The The lady who was running the uh, like they're already, I think, already back in Japan by now. Anyway, one of the students who was like 15, 16 years old left their wallet on my van last night. And I didn't notice it till I got back to the depot. And that was late. That was around midnight. Right. That was around fucking uh, about 11, 11, 30, 11, no 45. Good, man. And I'm like, fucking shit, because like. This is his passport. He needs it to get on the plane. He needs it to get home, right? So I'm like, I'm scrambling. I'm like texting my bosses like no one's answering because it's Sunday night. They're all asleep. And then I, I run into the to the depot and I look and I'm like, all right, who's fucking going up to the airport next? You know, like who's, and so I'm like looking at schedules and shit. And like, thankfully one guy did and uh, I, I wrote him this whole fucking note. I'm all like, 
this is a Japanese exchange student uh, wallet and passport. Here's the address, the hotel that they're at. Here's his name. It's written on this. His name was like, his name was Kenji. Kenji Kobayashi. That's the kid's name, right? Mm-hmm. Total fucking like anime name. I'm Kenji Kobayashi. And I'm going to solve murders. And like, mysteries, right. probably. And mysteries. Uh, fucking awesome name, to be fair. I, I looked at this passport and I'm like, Kenji Kobayashi. That's a fucking dope name, dude. Um, and so, and so I wrote wrote this big ass note and I fucking gave all the information and I, I hope to God, I don't know. No one called me today to let me know what happened. I don't, I'll find out more like, like later this week. Well, I hope it gets to its owner. Yeah. yeah, Like, dude, I barely slept last night because I was legitimately, legitimately like I kept waking up thinking about this kid's fucking wallet, man. I just kept waking up. Like, should I have just driven to the airport and like dropped it off? Should I have like just taken one of the vans and gone and done it and not been home to like three in the morning? Like, would I be in trouble for taking one of the vans and then driving up? Because my car wouldn't make it, you know, like, is it is it would they be would they be upset with me about that? I, I figured what I did was probably the best of of all solutions, which would be just leave a note and hope the next guy will take care of it. You know. And I hope he did. I don't know. It was I left a note for either him or another woman. And the other woman is like way more like I don't want to say competent because like this other guy, he's new and he's 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 a good driver. I don't know him very well, but I don't want to say he's like incompetent. But the other woman would have been like, I'm on it. And she would have beelined right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. like I wrote on there like I'm like his name is AJ. I'm like AJ or Jennifer. Like, you know, whoever gets this first. I'm hoping that if AJ chose to not take it. Jennifer was coming in like a half hour later. Jennifer would have seen it and she would have fucking done well, it. Oh yeah, so. man. Keep keep me posted. I feel like that's like a pretty big thing, you know? Like a wa- someone's wallet, that's the can be their entire fucking identity and like literally, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's fucking no, terrible. I just I feel I just I feel like I know in that situation I'd be freaking the fuck out. Yeah, no, me anyone would be. That's why it's like such a scary situation to imagine. Yeah, like, like what would you do? Like, what you know, like they get to the air in the morning because they were literally they they got into town, they came in from the airport. I picked them up at the hotel, drove them over to this one person's house, like twenty miles away. You know, four hours later, came back, grabbed them. They went back to the hotel, and the lady's like, "Oh yeah, we check out on the we we're, we're leaving in the morning to go back to Japan. We just came from Korea." And I'm like, "So wait, you guys flew from Korea to Seattle?" hung out for like less than a day and then bombed back to Japan. Like, all right, cool. I I don't know. All right. I can't believe some people live like that. Yeah. Ain't that crazy, you know? Rodimus here says, Matt's such a good man. The last time I left my phone in a cab, it was stolen by the cab driver. It's not, I mean, I would have, I would have given the phone back as well, but it's not, it's, it's, but it's a passport, right? Like, it's just, it like there's, the kid needs it to get on the plane. He needs it to get home. Like, what would happen if they didn't have a passport? Like, that would either delay everybody, which would cost a shit ton of money, or one of the chaperones would have to stay back with the kid for how many days to figure it out. Something like that. They're not going to leave a 15-year-old kid alone in Seattle while they all go back to Japan. Yeah, no fucking way. It's not that's, gonna happen. That's some home alone shit. It would be pretty funny, though. Uh, <laughs> It would well, be no, funny. It would be well. What I mean by that is just like I you know, it. imagine like well, because when I was fourteen, I did that uh, that East Coast trip, right? It was uh, Boston, New York, and DC. And when we hit New York, we were walking up and down Fifth Avenue, right, doing everything. And they wanted us to stay together. They're like, everyone stay together, everyone stay together, okay? And I'm all like, fuck that shit, man. I'm a, I want to check some shit out on my own. So I walked into the Coca Cola shop that was on Fifth Avenue. And I just waited a few minutes and they, there was like 30 of us that went on the strip. And so I just waited and they all passed me. And then I just kind of like bombed around for a little while by myself. Not long, like maybe like 30 minutes. I wasn't like, a, you know, it wasn't like a, a whatever. Right. I just, I wanted a little bit of freedom in New York city. Cause I had seen home alone too, lost in New York. Like a wow. Countless. It comes back to home alone. Again. It always comes back to home alone. Everything comes back to home alone. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then I, cause everyone was going down to, we were, we were walking down fifth Avenue. Uh, I think from like, I forget we were, we went to where we ended up was FAO Schwartz. So like wherever the fuck, like I forget where we got off the bus, but like the, the end goal was FAO Schwartz. So I knew that I had to get the FAO Schwartz. All right. And so I just, a little bit extra time, a little bit of extra time. 
uh, just to kind of enjoy it a little bit to kind of take it all in, um, you know, and then like, and then get down there. But like, what if I would have been like kidnapped? All right. What if somebody would have seen like tubby 14 year old me and they're all like, Ooh, dessert or I don't know, glazed donut hole, some shit like that. What? Know, the fuck? what? I'm just saying someone could have seen me and been like, Dan Schneider says, hi, I don't know. Oh my God. That's I, I get what you're saying, but do you have to say it in such a fruity fucking way? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, all right. Yeah. You're I always, right. I, I always, you always say that. Gotta say it like that. <laughs> no it was his wallet it was his wallet yeah his wallet had his passport in it uh his passport his driver's license everything else happen, yeah real quick here command unit for two thank you says tulsi and kamala's rivalry would be fun uh that would be pretty fun i'll tell you this though uh if tulsi gabbard went up against kamala harris in a, the vp debate tulsi would trounce Trout. Oh, I'm going to be entirely honest. I'm afraid of like Tulsi being the VP and you should be too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she would actually be competent. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. I don't want that name attached to Trump. Yeah, exactly. Um, she's too hot. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm just kidding. Other reasons too, clearly. Uh, maybe. Maybe other reasons. Maybe other. Reasons. You're just yeah. Okay, keep but mostly the point. that. But mostly that one. Huh? Well, you know basically, what I, basically, what I would what I would then ask everybody in that moment would be like, on election day, wank off first, so you have post nut clarity before you cast your vote. Yeah, yeah. Jerk off you know? before you go to the voting. Yeah, don't, I, I would say always do that. Yeah, don't don't look at don't look at Tulsi Gabbard like she's a Hawaiian version of Rogue from X Men ninety seven. Right, don't do that. You know, some people would probably call it fascism, but imagine if we, we had the government mandate that you have to nut before you you go vote. You should have to nut before you do anything in life. Everybody should orgasm. I, I, like, I don't know get about that. that no, I, well, okay, hold on. We've got to uh, get in your pre nut nut. You know, you got to get you you got to get your nut on. Okay, for post nut clarity. Okay, but it but it doesn't last very long. So you got to think of it like before a test is always a good thing because takes the edge off. Yeah, put your okay. testicles to the test. Yeah, right. You fucking drain your testicles for the test. Or drain your testicles on the test, depending on what your teacher's into. Testies, testies. <laughs> right. I mean, again, if you're gonna if you're gonna like go for a long drive, like you just want to be more comfortable, fucking just just fucking drain them out. Uh, you know, if you're gonna do all these things, just drain them out. You're good. Yeah, I think it's. I think. I think that. I honestly, God, this is true. One hundred percent true. Like I stand by this. I really feel like if if they are going to start forcing people to go back to the office like that's going to be the mandate they have got to, ins to to institute a fucking like 15 minute jerk time like in the day they've got to set up a booth for it where like this is like you know like this is your bathroom this is your jerk station okay we inside we have nudie mags for both men women or whatever you're into remember okay. how there was the fight for the like the 15 dollar minimum wage now there's the fight for the 15 minute minimum jerk there's no, there should be. I, and I, I, I mean that like legitimately, like we'll joke about it, but it's like, for one, it, it, for men, at least specifically, like it is good for your prostate. A wank would serve some people. Some a good. wank would serve a lot of people. Good. All right. Or, or, of or a jilling off would definitely do well, you know, or because even a James, I go off. Yeah. What's a James? It's James. Like, yeah. But like, explain to me it's the male it's the male equivalent to no that's jacking off what are you talking about <laughs> what what are you uh, doing in there nigel's oh i'm jamesing off it's yeah it's what, what it's is that gay i'm honoring king james it's one of gay British by polishing my there. staff and my scepter <laughs> the crown jewels are nice and polished right you, now. you know that some shit has, some fucking royal did that shit back in the day like they weren't fucking straight they were getting it on dude i guarantee you some royals were they did everything. fucking incest they probably would have done anything yeah <laughs> you'll do incest you'll do literally anything. literally they did incest that's hey you heard it here first if you'll do incest you'll do anything <laughs> hold on john says here uh four day work week i agree with the four day work week absolutely and then uh and europe employers d uh, does have private time at work do they some people are extra degenerate Jarba. i mean like i don't know if i consider myself hold You're on not. froggy says i'm trying to get you a news story in the mods don't let me post it well dm to me on twitter is it if it's the fucking uh what is it is it the baltimore thing apparently that's a mass casualty has been declared after a container ship 
collides with uh, the key bridge, causing it to completely collapse. I can't believe they took down a bridge in America. Wait, wait, really? You can't? Why can't you? They, it's like it's almost like they hit the fucking Pentagon. Well, maybe you should, <laughs> maybe you should come to terms with the fact that, you know, <laughs> there's some crazy shit that goes on every day man i, don't I mean the, yeah but like bridges going down i feel like that's you know some sus shit right there that fuck off man that's not oh sus. That no dude time. my fucking my six-year-old tonight she looks i said something as a joke and she goes i don't know dad that sounds sus like, oh jeez, that ain't good that? that's freaking silly i'm like where did you learn about sus? yeah where'd you learn about freaking sus yeah well good, she watches man. she watches this one one youtuber uh, hold on. Command unit here says, reminder, women don't have post-nut clarity. Mm, I mean, I'm going to disagree on that one. I'm going to disagree on that one because women get horny. I think we need to acknowledge that. That's, just that's... in a different way sometimes, but sometimes not all. Well, women have women women have the, the, the clitoris and the fucking G-spot, right? So they have two ways to come. All right. So you can do, out, you know, external or internal stimulation. All right. And if you're really good, you can do both at the same time. But again, women get turned on and women want to finish. And when they finish, they feel relaxed. And that's, and that's awesome. the whole point. That's the post nut clarity is the relaxation. You don't have that fucking, that horn fog on your mind. You know, you're not like, you know, with men, it's because especially because we, we start thinking with our fucking, with our dick. Absolutely. Yeah, that corn dog fog. Yeah, I know yeah you're, you're, you're just all like, you, you're just all like, I, sh I, all I care about right now is this. Um, but uh, anyway, um, have Shifty Gism says, have you ever come across a porn scene that has no. an extended shot, <laughs> extended shot that is so well framed and so well lit? No porn scene you see afterward can even begin to compare. I occasionally find those. Yeah, anything shot with a DSLR with a good lens and depth of field in cinematic, I'm just like, you know, at first you had my uh, attention. Oh no, first you had my curiosity, but now you have my full attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're like, if you're like, man, wow, that was really good. Like that sweeping panning shot across the, across this was really just well framed and just really established a good story. Hey, man, you gotta find uh, the entertainment and the little things, man. Even uh, unexpected places sometimes. Right? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, Mo here says someone saved me from this nightmare on the five. No. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, I'm leaving yeah. you hanging. I was, that. dude. I was stuck in so bad traffic yesterday. That like even Reddit was talking about the traffic I was in later on that night. I brought it up last night with Chris and it was like, le like legitimately the traffic I was stuck in by University of Washington for over an hour just to go like half a mile was people like, like, you know, what the fuck? It was bad planning on my boss's a part. rough day at work. Yeah. Let's see here. Hold on. Damn, man. Uh, I hope tomorrow is better for you. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. The. The, um, there's been, well, yeah, mass casualty. Were people on the bridge when it fell or were people on the boat when it fell? Cause we already talked, we already, we watched a video of the, of the bridge going down. Um, I'll bring it up again just cause like it's under the bridge downtown. You know that song, right? Jarba? <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Right. I can't sing it too much. We'll get hotter. Right? No. <laughs> That song is a fucking bow, 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 you agree, bow, right? bow, bow. Uh, dude, who doesn't love Red Hot Chili Peppers? Idiots. Do you know Anthony Kiedis admitted in his biography to having sex with a fourteen-year-old like multiple times? Say what the fuck, brother? I need to hear that. I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad I know the truth, but you know, he he time. didn't know she was fourteen at first, and then he found out. And then he's like, we had sex one more time. And then what she a left. wild thing to fucking say. And I'm like, why would you put that like in a book? And, like, why would an editor? Some people this? don't know what they're fucking doing with their it's lives. Crazy. Man. Yeah. How can you get into a position where you wouldn't even know that to begin with? Like, I, I don't yeah. know. Drugs. Gross negligence is the only thing, you know, like, I yeah. can just, <laughs> like, I, I mean, help. like if I was single and I was like fucking super famous, I'd be all like, yo, I need fucking ID for everything. Right. Like, I, yeah, I, no, I get you. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, you know, like fucking I support voter ID laws specifically for that reason. Wow. That's an interesting... <laughs> you know what? I, I somehow I like your logic. Jared, but... It works. My logic. My my logic is never flawed. All right. Let's take. Oh, yeah. You, this ne is never, never, never flawed never, ever. It's, never it's always perfect. You. It's never failed. If you check my Twitter feed today, it was always perfect. Uh, I pissed off so many fucking people. It was great. 
All right. Uh, so this is the uh, the Sky News. Is they're going to definitely claim this one, but it's all right. On that breaking news um, that we have here on Sky News relating to the bridge that has uh, collapsed in Baltimore. Wow! Uh, after look at that. A large boat collided with the bridge. It's a portion of it um, has now collapsed into the water. It's the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. It collapsed after the large container boat collided with it early this morning. Reports came in uh, early this morning that a large vessel crashed into the bridge carrying north and southbound lanes of Interstate 695. We're told that it was catching on fire before sinking and causing multiple vehicles to fall in the T uh, Patapsco River below. That's the latest that we are hearing. There's the bridge intact and then shortly Afterwards, uh, the bridge, as you can see, oh uh, my God. several vehicles were on the bridge at the time. What would you do we in that do, situation? I uh, believe, according to emergency um, my services, best? that a search... Your best? Your, you do your best. Like, yeah, what the fuck? Like, no one's trained to deal with this type Losers of Losers always whine about their best, though, Anna. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. You know, I, I, well, how about right. doing your how about doing your worst? Like, so I think that's even cooler than doing your best, frankly. Apple Maps is updated also. It doesn't surprise I me. I love when people do their worst, you know? It's uh No, do you, you know the fucking Do you know do you know that do you know the meme? The 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 quote Which one? Like it's like um it's your best, right? So it's from um it's from it's from the movie The Rock with Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery. Yeah. And he's all like, "Are you ready?" He's like, "I'll do my best." Your best. Losers always whine about their best. Winners Damn. go home and fuck the prom queen. And then he goes like, Carla was the prom queen. <laughs> like, cocks and cut. It's so fucking epic. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that before. Oh, dude, you're fucking missing out, man. Um, You're missing out. I dude. am missing out. The the rock is 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 peak fucking. It's it's Michael Bay uh, right after. It was his second movie. It was right after Bad Boys. And it was like the start of like the Nick Cage fucking kick ass action films around that time. Yeah, it was uh, so Apple Maps is updated also. Jeez, like, the base the best case of the rock in cinema. Yeah. <laughs> get it? Oh, yes. You get it, right? Yes, I get it. I get it. <laughs> All right, yeah. Although, still, there's still like more to this story, apparently. Which is continuing now, search and rescue operation uh in the area. We've spoken to the local fire service. Uh Gary. Yes, who say that seven people potentially into the water vehicles, like you say, this bridge, 47 years old, opened in 1977, 1.6 miles long in its entirety. This vessel that's leaving that port harbour, you can see in the background there, you can see the gantries of those cranes, uh, part of the Baltimore Port and Harbour vehicle was leaving, heading for, Singa for Sri Lanka. It's a Singaporean flagged vessel. And earlier in that footage, if you look closely, you can see large trucks crossing, you can see cars crossing as well. Like you say, the Interstate 695, that vessel 950 feet long then. Wow, that's over a mile over a mile long bridge. That's pretty wild. That is pretty crazy. A mile long bridge going down like that. Yeah, I know. That's that. I, I was joking earlier. Like that's not something you see fucking every day. But I don't think there's any, like shits like that's gonna happen I, I, unless I get any reason to believe something. I don't know if I believe there's any foul play. Like the structural integrity with shit that old man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, looking at it, it's, uh, so the ship, um, was built in 2015. Uh, it's pretty big. It's 300 meters long or whatever. Um, it's a big ass cargo ship. Uh, there's, it's a big boy. It's a big boy. Yeah. So it's not like it's something, uh, tiny, you know, this motherfucker, uh, let me see if I can bring this up here. This is something I found on Twitter real quick. So you've got uh, this one right On here. I mean, just look how big that fucker is. And then, Jesus, wow, yeah, I didn't know that. That really does kind of put it in perspective, doesn't it? Yeah, that really does. Um, it, that really uh, that's a huge that's a huge bitch to you know to make not light of the situation, but uh, that's pretty massive. Because you know when I was in Vancouver, uh, BC over the summer, and we on the cruise ship we actually went underneath a really big um we went underneath one of the one of the bridges in vancouver and it was like 
you know, holy shit, like just that puts it in perspective, right? But um, this is wild, man. Like, I'm, dude, like if you were on there, I mean, look, I, I'm glad, I'm glad that when that when this happened, it was the middle of the night when there's fewer traffic that's on there. Yeah, that but that is one thing we can at least be thankful but for. But if but. you were on there and that thing struck and you didn't immediately fucking turn around and vacate the fuck out, like it you're you're stuck. It, yeah, to quote RJ when he goes insensitive, it's Jover. Um, what? Oh, <laughs> wow. Uh, Rodimus here says, so ships do go under that bridge all the time. Baltimore is a super busy port. How do they manage to hit the bridge pylon? I mean, this is going to be like malfunction. You're going to hear about malfunctions. You're going to hear about, you know, ineptitude. You're going to probably hear about inebriation. Um, yeah, in two hours, that bridge will be bumper to bumper. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. But think about, like, how it's going to do now, right? Like, People are going to be like that. Th that's going to cause people to probably not go to work that day today. Like, cause if they're just going to be stuck. Yeah, that's fucking terrible, man. It's one of those harsh things of, rea of reality, you know? Well, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm really, um, I'm really glad that, uh, you know, it is. Let's see if I can find it here on the maps. All right, here we go. Wait, that's not it. It's, uh, oh, this is it right here. So, yeah, I mean, like, just, like, think about that, right? Like, all, so, so for the next, God, fuck, dude, for the next, like, three years or so, because that's how long it's going to take him to probably rebuild that bridge. Yeah. It's, it's to, so everyone's going to have to go funnel through. If you live out here in oh, Engineer. Oh, traffic's going to be a whore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. You're going to have to fucking go. I mean, unless they build a ferry port, like a really quick ferry port. That ain't happening. Oh, um, All yeah. All those stuffy a, politicians getting together to fucking do it. No. Yeah. There's another bridge in a bridge tunnel further up, but it'll absolutely cause traffic. Yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. Like, you can tell, like, they are fucked. Oh, look, Pasadena. Um, Sweet. Uh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of people that are just going to be like, yeah, I ain't going to work for a yep. while. Fuck that. Yeah. Yeah, because you've got also look, you got the uh, the international. Was this Thurgood? What is this thing here? Oh, it's an airport. Oh wow, yeah, that's gonna fucking. Hey Mo, Mo, what you need to do is you need to get your ass to Baltimore and become an Uber driver uh, for the next three years, and you will make a lot of money. I'm telling you, Mo. Leave LA behind. It's time to. It's time to go. Capitalize. Right. This is your moment. This is this is your moment to do it's it. It's crazy how much like the infrastructure can like fuck over in just one one day. You know. Oh what yeah. I mean? Important shit that in some major metropolitan areas, like a, a bridge, millions of people are going over it every day. You know. Well, it's like, you know, I mean, right, when I, well, hundreds of thousands, I, I should say. when I lived in uh, San Diego, you know, we had the Coronado Bridge. Yeah. And and the Coronado Bridge, you know, every day, just fucking tons and tons and tons of people. So because um, the military base is there, plus all the people who live in the island and everything else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. Anything like, you know, there and well, actually, after 9-11, it was really interesting is they had um a whole bunch of national guard was posted on the coronado bridge of fuck, dude all the time the cops on one side national guard on the other um because they uh you know in case there was a bridge attack because the thing is if you can take because like you have the port of san diego right the naval base is right there too so they go into the bay sorry they go into the bay and if like the coronado bridge was taken out Right, it would trap the military in there, you know. Yeah, but there's also the Silver Strand that I think's like seven miles long or whatever, and it connects Coronado Island to um, Imperial Beach uh, to IB, and uh, they could that can be blown up. They've got explosives ready to take that fucker out because so the Silver Strand is like really, really tiny. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can, I'll show you here. That's crazy, about. man. Cause like it's, um, 
All right, Silver Strand. God damn it. I'm fucking... Yeah, there we go. It's like Coronado, California. God damn right, Coronado, California. All right. I know. Damn, kind... so someone in a ship caused this, eh? Yep. Yep. I mean, you know, here we go. So this is... um. This is Silver Strand. Let me just kind of zoom out a little bit here. All right. So San Diego, good old San Diego. Um, uh, by the way, I lived over here in Lakeside. That's where I lived. And I'd get to Coronado. And this was 23 miles from my house in Lakeside to Coronado. So just to give you an idea of like how far it is, not that any of you care, but 23 miles. Uh, so anyway. You come over here on the Coronado Bridge and, you know, it's a great, it's a great bridge. It's an awesome bridge. Um, and, you know, so if they take this thing out, let's say, uh, cause you've got all the Naval base right here, you've got all this shit, right? So it'd be bad. San Diego Bay, all that stuff. So the Silver Strand right here is what they, like, basically like they would blow this section right here from like the base Coronado right there. Probably all this section right here would just get fucking boom, blown the fuck out just so they could get the fucking ships to go out through. So that's crazy. I wouldn't, uh, it gets crazy how geography gets used in this way when it comes to, uh, to war. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, so, you know, it's self-defense and yeah. Well, there's, yeah, there's like a, like a, you know, like, San Diego itself is kind of crazy. Like, look over here. You've got like, this is the this is like Mission Bay. This is nice. I like Mission Bay quite a bit. Uh, Fiesta Island, that place is wild. <laughs> that place, that place is wild. Um, Fiesta Island is a place where they 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 do like this. Oh God, I forget what it's called. It's like every year there's this big like sporting event there, but it's basically like just an excuse to like play really drunk baseball and like walk around and like show your tits and shit like Sweet. it's you can't even like bring uh glass on the island like during this whole time interesting it's weird yeah i went to it one time it was fun uh my friend almost got fucking pegged in the head with a baseball because like there's no they have baseball mounds but they don't have like any uh there's like no none of the you know the fencing right to block like foul balls yeah 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 uh oh. but no, mission bay is mission bay is fucking great here there's sea world right there all right, you've got the OB Pier. OB Pier is fucking sick. Look at this. It's a it's a decent walk to get out there, by the way. Like to just wow. get out to the OB Pier. How long? Uh, it takes probably about like I'd say it takes anywhere between like you know it's, it's probably ten minutes, maybe not ten minutes, but like you can get out there maybe like five six minutes. It's like walk no. out there. It's pretty good. And then of course you got like OB here, right? Does his thing, and then you know what? Dog Beach. Dog. Yeah, there's always Dog Beach. Um, I remember one of my my very first time going to the beach as on a party was here, South Mission Bay. This was a long time ago. I was 19. Long time ago. Um, we used to come here a lot. And then also you've got um, so you've got Mission Bay Park right here, right? And so here you've got like all this area right here. There's a roller coaster. This is Belmont Park. Like this is all Belmont Park. That's a roller coaster. There's like arcade shit in there. Fucking they they shot a season of um real life or I think you know real world. They shot in San Diego. They shot actually right here on the boardwalk and wow. everything. So it's kind of fun. So my yeah, so nice this, this is gonna sound like dumb as shit, but like my first date with my girlfriend, we parked here. We walked up the um the, there's a there's a um boardwalk here right. And we walked all the way up and uh, let's see, where is it at? It's up here a ways. Cause we went up to uh, Pacific beach and trying to find like, there's like, there's a fucking crab shack over here somewhere, but we went over there, got a crab shack and then kind of walked up, you know, hung out a little bit over here, got drunk a little bit. Uh, and then just walked all the way back down and, um, you know, chilled out from there just to kind of fucking sober up. But then there is, where is it at? It's been so long since I've been there. I know none of you give a fuck. I'm kind of just reminiscing right now. Um, 
I just was having his uh, reminiscing moment. I just I just miss fucking SD man. You know, like it was just fucking great. Uh, where was it at? We did. Oh goddamn! It's been forever. There's like um, there's a a little like park. It's and it had the, it was like the best place to um, it was Dana Landing. Where the fuck is Dana Landing at? But either way, we would go over there and party it up, and you know, I took my girlfriend over there because uh, it's like the best place to go and get to do like a, a bonfire pit in San Diego. Um, and then we went back to her place and we watched a couple of movies and that was that, you know, kind of, that's kind of where it started. So I just miss San Diego. Anyway, <laughs> I know it's all whatever. No, no, I, I get it. It's important to you. If I, it, it's, I well, have my it, own little anecdotes about where I live. Yeah, I it, yeah. It's like, you know, um, but over here, like Mount fucking Soledad, right. Area in, um, in La Jolla, that's where we did that. We did that fucking video about the um, uh, Alan Strongbum Dingo Stalker trying to find the lost midget village. Yeah, I remember we talking about that. Yeah, we were right up here, Mount Soledad. Just kind of we're driving through like the La Jolla region over here and shit. Um, <laughs> it's just fucking stupid shit. You know, there's um, yeah, there's I mean, there's really not much else out. I mean, well, there's a lot in San Diego, but. Um, like here's Santee. It's where I worked at. Not the much else you give a shit about, basically. No, nah, well, I give a shit about a lot of it, to be honest with you. Like I do. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. What the? How fuck much of it, it do you actually know? How much of what? Of a Santee? Do I know? Yeah. Oh, dude, fucking all of it. Because I, I lived. Um, I I lived here. I lived. You got to experience the whole like. Uh, well, I lived right here on on Winter Gardens. Right. So here's winter or I live off of winter gardens. So, um, right here's gay Rio drive. Uh, looks like discount liquor. God, I bought so many cigarettes there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I go up, you know, guard Gardena road over here, cut up here to Walnut. Right. Where's that at? Um, it's been a while since I've fucking... Damn, the humble roots of Matt Jarbo. Huh? Well, the humble roots of like, of of that yeah let me see where's oh where's, i lost where i'm at there um no wait we're over here god fucking damn it now i can't even think about where the fuck am i because where's fucking creekwood there's creekford creekford so creekford emerald grove there we go there we go there we go there we go so this is my old house right here now this is my old house as of 2024 so it does not look, look like this anymore. Like what they put, they put a fucking trampoline in the back pool. So it looks pretty good. Oh, it's clean now. Holy shit. Oh, finally get some fucking solar paneling on there. I kept telling my stepdad for years, we got to get solar paneling. And he's all like, we don't just fucking, it's a rip off. We don't need it. Turns out it wasn't. Turns out it wasn't. Oh, they paved that. Okay. Well, my neighbors, my neighbors right here in this house, like they broke up and the lady, like the lady stayed behind and the people that rented it, uh, fucking got, uh, pit bulls. They were raising pit bulls. And so one night, one of the pit, one of the pit bulls, uh, fucking came over, fell in my pool. My room is like right here, like on the ground floor. So I heard the splash and I get up and I go out there and there's this fucking, you know, like pit bull, like drowning in the pool. So I pulled her out. And, uh, and I thought she was going to fucking, you know, like kill me or shit, but, uh, that did not happen, thankfully. Damn, so yeah, saved a dog's life, Jarvis. I did. I saved a pit bull's life. What's funny is this house was purchased by the people who lived right here in this house. Uh, their kids who, when we first moved in were like one years old and in diapers ended up growing up and then buying this house for like 560,000, I think. Damn, like that, dude. the amount of money my stepdad sold this house for is the amount of money my house is worth now. That's money, man. No, that's the, it could have, it should have been worth like eight hundred, nine hundred thousand bucks. Easy. Dude, this is four bedroom, four bath. All right. Only if you think, look, it's like the only house on the street with a fucking pool in the backyard. You wow. See, yeah. Damn, Jarba. There's a little one over here. Yeah, but that's bougie as shit. 
Eh, yeah, paradise. Yeah, right there, right. But like, you got a couple here and there, a couple, the little ones, right? But ours was fucking big. It big and it, you yeah, know. nice big. Yeah, it's a pretty nice well, house. When when we moved in, the pool didn't look like this. They actually spent like thirteen thousand to get the whole thing renovated. Wow. It, and it looked really nice. Like there's like actual like turtle like it's there's actual like designs at the bottom of it um but anyway it's like yeah you can see like not a lot of other people have a couple little pools here and there right like little things everyone's yeah. like fucking hot tub bullshit yeah. but yeah it was like could have done for a lot more yeah. did i like living with my mom more or my dad i lived with my mom growing up i never lived with my dad i'd visit him only on the week like only during the summer like once or twice and like what you have to understand about that just so you know just give you guys an idea so when I'd come to visit my dad, so I'd be here. So zoom out, right? All the way, I'd be here. And have to come all the way back up, up here, right? Basically, like where this is, you know. Um, See, my dad lived in uh, Grand Mound, Centralia. So like... This is like the area my dad lived in, so I'd have to come up and visit here. You basically had to traverse a good chunk of the fucking West Coast. Yeah. Yeah, I live near the ocean and the beach. I don't live near the ocean. I mean, like, you figure... You figure, like, look, this is the this is Ocean Shores. This is, like, the place to go, right? This is the place to go to for summer. And I'm, like, I'm out... I'm over here in Olympia, you know? Like, so, yeah, I can drive out, you know, through fucking, uh, what is this one here? The eight or whatever. And which would no, uh, and then cut across and then head out to like, you know, Aberdeen and whatever. But the, all, all up and all up and down here, right. All up and down here, rich people, rich people, rich people, rich people, like, all these fucking houses up here are just rich, insane. Rich people, rich people, rich people. Rich fucking people, man. Uh, let me see here if I could find. Because I had to do, um, what did I have to do? I had to do uh, an enumeration over one of these fucking houses. Where is that? If I could find a place. It was one of these, you know, areas that people are right on the fucking beach too shit right on anyway the well it doesn't even really necessarily matter i don't even know why i'm looking at it but like where the people lived that i had to enumerate were kind of like uh houses like this right here you know what i mean that were like really close to the beach but they were like the ones i was looking at was like more or less like on the fucking water you know uh, let me see if I bring this up. Is this? That's not it. I love I love how you can do that now. You can just like fucking. Yeah, it's crazy shit, isn't it? Just zoom right the fuck in. And then take a look at different places. Just get an idea of where you're at. It makes yeah, like. I love all the detail. It's really oh, great. Wait, I think this is. I think this might be it right here. Because there's a private. And I think this is it. Let it really see. does something for my view of the world. I don't know how to explain it and what it changes about it, but being able to look at the world like this through these types of like maps and stuff like that, it's really like altered my view of like how the world is. It, uh, being able to actually see so much of it with my own eyes that I never would have otherwise. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I like to. I like to just kind of like walk around. That's not it. Um, I like to just kind of walk around sometimes with street view of like different places and then just like enjoy it. You know, like um, I was doing one, uh, it was, oh, where was it? It was fucking, um, oh man, uh, Vic oh, Vancouver, uh, no, uh, Victoria, British Columbia on Vancouver Island. Oh, this is it. This is it. Oh, the fucking gate's not here. So this is where, okay. So I just want to show you guys this, right? This is the one I talk about all the time. So this is Copalis Crossing. Why couldn't I live with my dad? Because my dad lived in another state and I was with my mom. And like my dad didn't have the place for me and shit. That's why. Um, but anyway, so this is the one I, when I, when I did the enumeration shit, they sent me out here to this place. 
I couldn't get in because obviously there's like, you know, the gate there and whatever, right? So I parked my car right here and then I have to like fucking, uh, I don't know, walk all the way up, right? So I walked, I walked from here all the way up, all around up here. I don't think I can get in there. I think it's because it's blocked off. Yeah, I can't get in there. Um, and then I had to find, so all the way here. So this is like fucking long, right? It was a long walk, right? Jesus. J so just to give you an idea, like start here, walk all the way up, come down basically, I think it was, um, I had to find houses. I, I, had, to, I had to find the houses that um, I could enumerate, you know? And let me see. I want the 2D one. Where's the one I had to do? It was, they were right basically on the fucking water. Um, it might have been one of these. They're overgrown now, but this also like, this is at the end of summer. Uh, but either way, I come walking up all the way over here and I find the house I need. And it turns out that the house I need is a goddamn summer home. So I drive, so I, I walk all, do all this shit, walk all the way around it. And then I'm like, well, I'm done. So I think, I think it was like this one right here. Cause it's basically in between like where this, this fucking sediment is right here. Then I'm like, okay. So I had to walk back up to Maryland all the way back down to my car. And then mark it as being, well, nothing here. The, the gate buzzer, um, I couldn't, I, because it was enumerating a house, I had to go to the house, but I didn't know how to contact them. So, but because I was working for the census bureau, my job was very much to just kind of, um, get in there and get, I could, I could, I could bypass property. It didn't matter to me. I never expected to hear the word enumerate so fucking often. Yeah, I know. Right. It's weird. Is this, I think this is, there was like a staircase to get down. God damn fucking stupid ass. Bunch of overgrown bullshit. Bunch of trees. You fucking trees. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, no, I hold on. I have a, I have a picture, um, that I had taken when I was there. Let me find it real quick. Cause it's on my Google. Uh -huh. I'm falling asleep at the wheel, man. Yeah, I know. Up. Hold on. I'm just gonna show you this and then, All right. yeah, and true. then I'm gonna, and then I'll fucking go. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's almost 2 a.m. I gotta get to sleep. Plus I've been streaming for four and a half hours. Damn. 420. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> the weed number. Oh, yeah, it is. You've been streaming for a whole weed number. Damn. Yeah, man. Yeah. Let me see yeah. if I can find it. Cool. Yeah. 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 Fucking yeah. Okay, so here's like some of the pictures I took as I was walking. Like, this turned out really good. This is my fucking cell phone. Damn, dude. That's fucking, that's crazy quality. It looks yeah. great. That's I took that with my cell phone. Um, I was just fucking around. I like depth of field shit. I found this little fucking squirrel, just like chilling. Damn, it's like this is like both chill and kind of haunting at the same time. Yeah, there we go. That's this this cool. this was the this was the the place I was looking at, right? So oh, like okay. the house. Um, that's so that went. so that doesn't exist, right? No, no. This this exists. I think I was just got it wrong. So this is must be, what like this house right here on the on the right or on the left. This one is a lady's house. I spoke to her. The, the the people over here on the on the right that you can't see, uh, those are the people that uh, that was the summer home I was trying to find. Oh, okay. So that's that's what it was. So, uh, yeah, these are just the pictures I took that day. Enumerating. Yeah, but it's fucking. It was dude. But look how pretty that is. Imagine living there. Yeah, I know. Like you're you're that close to the fucking water, like legit. And then so. some fucking enumerator comes in and is like, hey, yeah. I'm a numerator. Yeah, some some fucking guy, right? Some yeah. like what's going on, everybody? How you fucking? Oh doing? man, I enumerated all over the place. Hmm. Oh no, I just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh yeah. man, I just lost control. I can't. Oh man, no. Oh, oh I man, just I enumerated, enumerated everywhere. <laughs> oh, it's fucking <laughs> so sticky. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm quite satisfied with that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, hold on, wait, what? How can I can I find you where? 
can I find, wait, can you find where I live in Whittier? No, Mo, I'm not going to go look for your house on in front of like 170 people. Jeez. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Like, find out where I live. Why? Is it like your fucking cum fetish? Well, oh, no, right. oh, no, oh, yeah, no, no. Here's, here's what I want to show you. Hey, real quick, real quick. Just give me like, give me like, um, uh, all right, Jeremy. real quick. Okay. So, you know how I was talking about like the, the, uh, uh, the open AI shit from earlier, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, it's okay. So let me find this one here. All right. So this is something that they put together from Sora. And just listen to this. Like, this is like fucking cool. And like, it has some cosmic ass horror to it, right? All right. Work, you bastard. Oh, of course, now I want it to work. It's like, oh, fucking Twitter's going to oh, load. Man, nice job, AI. Wow, this is the best that AI can accomplish. Holy crap, I can't believe it. All right, yeah. I know. Come on, work, you piece of shit. You might want to just try refreshing the page. Yeah, man. I'm going to refresh the page. Twitter's been so terrible recently. Yeah. Is there... Oh, did they cut out the sound? Oh, fucking... God oh, damn it. Fucking God Hold damn. on. I'll find the I'll find the uh I got the the thing right here. Cause there's sound with it. You gotta you gotta listen to the sound. Okay. They're sounding with it. Yeah. But just look at the quality of this, like everything. Welcome to Beyond Our Reality, a journey through parallel worlds where we delve into the extraordinary. Episode 1 unveils the Giraffe Flamingo, a stunning hybrid that roams the savannah with grace and vibrant hues. In Episode 2, we ascend with the Flying Pigs, charming creatures that redefine the skies with their harmonious flight. Episode 3 plunges us into the depths to discover the Whale Puss, an elegant blend of whale and octopus ruling the oceans. That's legitimately frightening. Episode 4 introduces us to the eel cat, an aquatic enigma that combines the sleekness of an eel with the curiosity of a cat. Episode 5 presents the bunny armadillo, a delightful mix of bunny charm and armadillo protection, captivating our hearts. Episode 6 features the horsefly, a small yet noble creature that buzzes with a blend of horse-like dignity and fly-like agility. Episode 7 explores the reptilian aru, creature that leaps across the desert with the vigor of a kangaroo and the resilience of a reptile. Our adventure culminates in episode 8 with the fox crow, a fusion of fox cunning and crow freedom soaring through the forest enigma. Join us on this mesmerizing journey through Beyond Our Reality, a journey through parallel worlds where the marvels of the unknown Welcome to like, isn't that crazy? Audio. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. Like, I mean, like that's, that's fucking nuts, man. Like, they're yeah, yeah, pretty well, that, uh, pretty well put together. Yeah, I mean, it's to me, it's wild. It's absolutely wild that they um they gave it out like that. I mean, there's people obviously that have been like you know not happy with it and whatever, but and it's just, new too. So I wonder what, where it'll be in like a few months from now. You know, when people get used to it more. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, this is kind of weird. Um. I can't seem to find uh, on Twitter anymore. I can't seem to find the uh, the live stream link, but people are still watching it. So that's interesting. Cool. What the hell? I don't know, man. I don't know. Four and a half hours. Fucking uh, good way to bring in the uh, the the birthday. Uh, so I do appreciate I it. The tweet. Yeah, I mean the tweets there, but usually there's like a a little a little thing that tells you on the side. Hmm. Interesting. interesting. Yeah. I wonder if it just, they're like, it's too long, you piece of shit. Taking up too much data. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, motherfucker. Um, you but broke the, Twitter. I did. That's fine. Twitter sucks. Agreed. It does. It's, 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 it's pretty shitty. But all right, everybody, I appreciate all of you watching, all 167 of you guys right now. If you haven't already, please like the stream. If anything, just like it because it's my birthday and you've, you know, you want to throw me a solid. Uh, and if you want me to like do more reactions to things, let me know. Um, I'm kind of tempted to clip out like the Melanie Mac and the Trump thing. Uh, and we can go from there, maybe do some more uh, reactions over time. But all right, everybody, thank you all so much. Have yourself a great evening. I'll be on probably later on tonight because you know, I ain't doing shit else. Um, and peace the fuck out. <laughs>